Original. I, Superman's younger brother, got the Thanos template. Author, The Board Rider 69. Copyright Web Novel. Chapter 1. My mother is Martha. 13. The air is as fresh and clean as it was on the first day of creation. The breeze is like the hand of God gently blowing over the golden wheat fields. On a cool autumn night, a red pickup truck is slowly driving on the road in the suburbs of Kansas. From the endless wheat fields on both sides of the road, there was the sound of insects praising life, and fireflies were dancing leisurely like stars. Overhead, the night sky was full of stars. 16. The melodious music from the car radio, the familiar scent of the fields mixed with the fresh smell of rain-soaked soil, filled the car. Jonathan Kent, a new father, stretched his hand out of the window, feeling the shape of the wind, and a happy smile appeared on his face. 2. Jonathan, this is a gift from God to us, his wife Martha said. She had just left the hospital after giving birth, her face still slightly pale. But as she looked at the lovely and quiet baby in her arms, she couldn't contain the love and tenderness in her voice. It wasn't long ago that I longed for a child, and now it feels like an angel has been born. A gift from God? My mother's name is Martha. Baby David looked at his mother in disbelief, feeling a bit helpless. He had woken up to find himself transformed into a baby. In this new life, his mother was Martha and his father was Jonathan Kent. Not only that, he was born in a hospital called Metropolitan Hospital, which clearly indicated his arrival in the notoriously dark DC world as the son of Superman's adoptive parents. 19. Of course, it's God's promise. He will grow up healthy and strong. Jonathan began to say, but he was interrupted by a sudden rumble. A meteorite from a distant universe suddenly cut through the night sky, its red fiery light illuminating half of the sky. Large and small meteorites rained down, hitting the ground and causing earth and rocks to scatter. Some even flew towards the small town behind them. 6. One meteorite in particular, at the center of the group, fell like the finger of God, cutting across the road ahead and forming a fateful trench that blocked the couple's path. The smell of burning filled the air as the car skidded and barely managed to fall into the ditch. 4. Jonathan quickly turned back. Martha, are you and the baby okay? It's okay, Jonathan. Martha hit the brakes and immediately protected the baby with her body. The baby in her arms was unharmed. 3. The son of Krypton has arrived on Earth with the meteorite as planned. 15. The Earth trembled and roared. Despite the noise, the baby in Martha's arms remained calm and peaceful, his pink and fair skin shining brightly as he blinked his innocent eyes and observed the scene. Jonathan, look at our child. He isn't afraid at all, Martha said, her eyes lighting up in surprise. This child was truly a gift from God, displaying such unusual behavior. 10. David, too, felt no fear, only anticipation in his heart. Detected the birth of the host and initiating the Thanos template, he recalled an emotionless electronic voice speaking in his ears when he was just born. After birth, David obtained the Thanos template, granting him a powerful eternal physique. However, the fusion was initially only 30%, and he needed emotional points to accelerate the integration. 59. Emotional points are accumulated and obtained by influencing the emotions of powerful or important characters in the DC world, he thought. He had already earned some emotional points by interacting with couples before, but the arrival of the son of Krypton marks the beginning. And, once the template reached 100% integration, the next template would be unlocked. 20. Through the car window, David's eyes lit up as he scanned the surroundings, searching for his gold mine. There can't be someone more popular and powerful than Superman in the DC world. 35. What's that? Jonathan heard his wife's voice and squinted his eyes, his attention drawn to a hard, dark blurred outline amidst the smoke. 1. Martha, stay in the car with the baby and don't get out, he said, his voice serious and concerned about the potential danger. He stepped out of the car alone to assess the situation. 5. The sparks from the meteorite still burned on the ground, casting flickering light into the darkness. When Jonathan saw something in the smoke, his eyes widened, and he froze in place. 1. Jonathan, what did you see? Martha called out from inside the car. She got out with the baby in her arms, worriedly approaching him. She, too, froze in surprise when she saw it. A dark spaceship, resembling a baby's cradle and made of unknown metal, lay quietly at the end of the deep ditch. Its transparent cabin door was open, revealing a cute baby with curly hair, blue eyes, and an energetic spirit. The baby sat inside, bouncing his legs and looking curiously at the couple, his innocent smile lighting up the scene. 5. Martha, let's leave this place, Jonathan finally regained his senses. He hesitated, feeling a sense of urgency, and took his wife and children away. Since ancient times, people have gazed up at the starry sky and wondered if humanity is alone in the universe. Now that question had been answered, and the aliens looked remarkably similar to humans. 2. The authorities will be here soon. This matter must be kept tightly sealed, and we don't want to get involved in this trouble, Jonathan explained. Leave. David was taken aback by this unexpected decision. After all, Superman's adoptive parents, Martha and Jonathan, adopted him because Martha had desperately wanted a child. Now that the child was here, it was him. So, is Superman going to die? David contemplated. Without this kind-hearted couple, what would become of Superman? Would he be taken away by the military and turned into a scrawny experimental Superman, deprived of sunlight for over a decade, as depicted in a comic book version? No, that's not possible. Not to mention how many times the grown-up Superman has saved the world from destruction. Where else could I find such a gold mine? David thought. No, maybe God is very kind to us, Jonathan. 3. Martha, observing her child in the spaceship, felt a strong impulse filling her mind. She instinctively hesitated to leave the child behind, unable to bear the thought of abandoning him to a cold laboratory, deprived of parental care, toys, and love, subjected to constant sampling experiments. 1. Stop talking, Martha, Jonathan said, covering his forehead with a hint of a headache. He was torn between his own kindness and the practical concerns. Yeah, just as he was wavering, David stretched out his short, chubby white arm from Martha's embrace, waving at the son of Krypton in the swaddle. He babbled and smiled, displaying his fondness for him. See, Jonathan, Martha's eyes lit up, and her tone became pleasantly surprised. She had found another compelling argument to convince her husband. Our child seems to like him very much and is asking us to adopt him. Two votes to one vote, Jonathan struggled for a moment, pretending helplessness, and then raised his hand. Well, what else can I say? What? Three. He tenderly kissed his wife, looked at his lovely and lively son, and then at the lonely baby in the space capsule. With a sigh, he said, two children, the farm will be busy in the coming years. Four. Creator's thoughts. 
The Board Rider 69. New translation? Like it? Add to library. Chapter 2, A Trace of the Original Taste of Thanos 19. Come down for breakfast, David. Mother Martha's urgent call came from downstairs. You and Clark are going to be late for school. Yes, Mother. 18. Early morning, the golden sunlight poured into the room through the window, and David, who had just finished washing, responded and changed his pajamas. He has short black hair, deep and three-dimensional facial features, and a slender and tall body. He takes off his clothes to reveal a body of refined muscles, giving people a clean and calm feeling, reminiscent of a quietly standing ancient Greek sculpture. 28. Unfortunately, when David came to the mirror, he shook his hands, and the bones and muscles of high-density alloy tensed and exerted force, and the terrifying force comparable to a volcanic eruption surged in his body. 3. The skin on the body quickly turned purple, and the rigid lines on the chin appeared like a ravine in the earth, adding a touch of majesty invisibly, like a silent king staring quietly in the mirror. 24. The progress of Thanos fusion template has been increasing, but once the force is too much, the condition of the skin color changing is still not improved. Template fusion progress, 81%. I looked at the progress, and when I stopped using the force, the skin color gradually faded, and I put on my clothes. 7. With a trace of helplessness on his face, he walked downstairs along the stairs. What's this? Keep a trace of the original taste, so you know it's the template of Thanos. However, at least he didn't grow 2.67 meters like Thanos, with a pair of bean eyes, and his head was bald like a purple potato. 14. David stroked the hair on his head, feeling emotional. 1. He just couldn't bear that kind of hairstyle for a strong man. 18. Ding. The crisp sound of the bread machine. 7. In the living room on the first floor, the smell of toasted wheat penetrated into his nose. Da da da. 1. David had just gone downstairs when there was a sound of brisk footsteps behind him. Good morning, David. Overtaking his younger brother, Clark, who is tall and has a pair of blue eyes, came to the living room. A little thirsty, he opened the refrigerator and looked back, would you like two sips of milk to refresh yourself? He said taking out a large glass bottle of milk and taking two sips from the bottle. 5. David raised his eyebrows and walked to the dining table, ignoring this stupid brother. 2. Don't drink like this, Clark. 1. Mother Martha walked over quickly, grabbed the cold milk, and held it in her hand. The milk just taken out of the refrigerator tastes better. The future Superman, who is only a young man in his 17s, raised his hand and said with a smile. 11. What about your manners? Clark. 4. Martha said with a headache after finishing her breakfast. More than 10 years have passed, and a few wrinkles crept into the corners of this mother's eyes. 2. Sit down and have breakfast with David otherwise you won't be able to catch the school bus in a while. Good afternoon, you two sleepy ones. 1. Jonathan, a rough man who had just fed the cows on the farm, entered the room and took off his coat stained with grass, and draped it on the sofa. 1. He took the milk from his wife, took two mouthful sips very naturally, and commented on their two sons. 4. The action was carved out of the same mold as Clark just now. Well, I know where your manners went. Seeing the scene, Martha covered her forehead. I remember that after getting a new sofa, mother told you to clean up yourself outside after feeding the cows in the morning before entering the house, father. 3. Taking the bottle from his father and pouring a glass of milk, David took a bite of the hot bread. The sofa in the living room was stained with some grass from the coat. Next time, I will definitely remember next time. Jonathan, who was accustomed to rough hands and work, looked back at his wife with a little embarrassment. At the dining table, he pulled out his chair and sat down, coughed twice, and said solemnly, Actually, I think it was a mistake when we chose this fabric sofa that was not easy to clean. You know, we live on a farm. In this Kent family, there is finally someone like me. The gentle Martha didn't get angry because of the sofa being dirty. She pressed the shoulder of the younger son who was speaking for her and raised her eyebrows at the two of them in relief. 5. Clark touched his forehead and covered his face. He couldn't deny that he was born and raised on a farm. Like his father, he usually didn't pay much attention to hygiene at home, while his younger brother David was more careful. 6. The helplessness from Clark, Superman, plus 3, 2. David swiped through the information stream before his eyes and took another bite of the bread without lifting his eyelids. It can be said that it is precisely because he grew up with Clark, who is a walking gold mine, that his Thanos template merged so quickly, and he possesses unimaginable power now. In terms of time, for the Kents, David was the one who came first. But before Clark arrived on Earth, the son of Krypton traveled in the universe for a period of time, and he obviously looked older than David, who was only a few days old. So son of Krypton became the older brother and David the younger son. 6. What are you looking at, Clark? Martha sat down and took a sip of milk. Seeing her eldest son distractedly looking at a note while eating, the corner of her mouth curled up into a smile as if caught in a beautiful imagination. Approval note. Clark frantically tried to put the note away. What kind of permission note? His father Jonathan cast a glance after he picked up the jam knife in his hand. The school football team will be selected in the afternoon. David, who was in the same class as Clark, added casually. If he doesn't tell, his honest Kryptonian brother won't tell the truth to his adoptive parents who love him. Clark. Hearing that it was the selection of the rugby team, the atmosphere at the dinner table changed a little, and suddenly fell silent, only David was still eating casually. 10. The couple looked at each other, and Martha hesitated to speak. What's the matter? Father, you also played rugby on the school team said Clark, who wanted to join the rugby team, felt bad and looked at his father. 28. But you are different, Clark. We all know this. 2. Jonathan became a little serious, facing his adolescent son, trying to soften his tone. 3. Carrying the spaceship with a pickup truck and taking Clark home. The couple once wondered if the little baby they picked up was really an alien? The appearance is exactly the same as that of the Earthlings, with no horns on the head, no tail on the back, and no strange skin color. 1. When you were a child, you could lift a pickup truck with one hand. Until one day when Clark was seven years old, he was repairing a car on the farm, and the jack was tilted on its side, and the car weighing more than a ton was about to fall down. On the side, the immature and innocent Clark showed unimaginable strength to lift the car, like lifting a plastic dinosaur toy, and moved it aside. But Jonathan, who was so shocked that he widened his eyes at the time, didn't see that his own young son on the other side of the car reached out his hand even faster. 5. Clark didn't notice either, because something weighing a ton was too light for him. On the court, I will try my best to hold back my strength. 
5. Looking into the eyes of his parents, Clark earnestly promised to control his strength so as not to hurt others and wanted to impress his father. The charm of sports lies in the hearty confrontation with others and surpassing oneself. At the dinner table, David suddenly pretended to be puzzled. I don't quite understand, my dear brother. 6. Joining the rugby school team, what can you experience from it? 1. Especially in rugby, that is, American football, the physical confrontation is fierce, and players need to hold the ball and rush around on the field. 10. Compared with the young son of Krypton, the body of the earthling is almost glass that can be broken at the touch of a touch. On the field, he may have to focus on carefully controlling his strength. 6. Father, I promise I will be careful. 2. Hearing his younger brother's mouthful of a dear brother, but one sentence made his parents' eyes suspicious, Clark felt very depressed. It must be because other families love the youngest son, but their family is abnormally more concerned about the eldest son. His younger brother always targets him from time to time and says it is for his own good. 6. I know you will, but what if, I mean, what if there is an accident? Jonathan knew that the football field was running and colliding all the time because he had played football. How can an elephant run wild without hurting the kitten every time it bumps into each other? I, as always, feeling the seriousness and resoluteness contained in his father's soothing words, Clark was defeated. It was always what if and if every time, making it impossible for him to refute. Father, I've had enough. Clark became more and more aggrieved as he thought about it, his voice a little bit louder with frustration. Enough of avoiding all activities, just sitting in the corner of the campus quietly reading a book, can't do anything. Obviously, I can be more popular like everyone else. Chapter 3, School Bus Conversations Clark suddenly confided his long-suppressed inner voice, leaving the couple unsure of what to say to comfort him. Son, this topic had been lingering within their family for quite some time. They hoped their son could conceal his true nature, fearing that the government might unexpectedly intervene and take him away one day. However, as teenagers attending school, they yearned to be noticed on campus, a feeling the couple understood well, having gone through that stage themselves. I'm done eating. Let's go ahead, Clark declared. The dinner table atmosphere grew somber. David, not particularly interested in the old-fashioned topic at home, gazed out of the window, barely listening. He got up, picked up his school bag, and left as though nothing had happened. Clark is frustrated plus nine, depressed plus seven. Another wave of strong emotions surged from his dear brother. Chuckling to himself, David leisurely strolled outside the farm. Not too long after, the school bus conveniently pulled up in front of him. Hi, David, greeted the students aboard the bus, their youthful faces exuding energy and vitality. Laughter and conversations filled the air as male and female voices mingled. David nodded in response and found a seat at the back. Leisurely turning his head, he looked out of the window. The sky appeared washed in blue, with fluffy white clouds lazily drifting like cotton balls. Lush green grass extended as far as the eye could see, reaching towards the dense forest in the distance, evoking a sense of tranquility. The rural town of Smallville in Kansas had one advantage, its natural beauty remained mostly intact, owing to its remoteness and lack of urban development. The fresh air was a pleasant consequence of its seclusion. The school bus made a brief stop before continuing its journey. Where's Clark, David? Inquired a clear, lively voice from a neighboring seat, tinged with a hint of confusion. Although the two brothers were typically inseparable, it was unusual for either of them to be absent when heading to school in the morning. He's behind, David casually replied without turning to see who it was. Chloe, with short blonde hair and a fair complexion, always squinted her eyes unconsciously when she smiled, revealing her canine teeth. Her eccentricity added a touch of charm to her character. As the school newspaper's reporter and editor-in-chief, she often sought out strange and interesting stories. From her seat, she gazed towards the Kent farm, wondering what was happening. It's nothing unusual for teenage high school students to quarrel with their parents. You wouldn't find it interesting, David responded in a monotone. Oh, come on, don't always make yourself seem so mature, David, Chloe retorted playfully, while the slightly short black-haired Pete sitting beside her winked and grinned. It sets you apart and doesn't appeal to girls. On campus, the Kent brothers were known for their aversion to various activities. Clark, although tall and physically imposing, was shy and lacked words, resembling an honest introvert. In others' eyes, David appeared reserved and aloof, not one to socialize easily. His personality had a touch of introversion, with a hint of mystery. Looks like Clark won't be catching the school bus today, Chloe teased, turning her gaze away. If you weren't born on a farm, the rumor going around the school would be that you're a vampire from the Renaissance era, dwelling alone in a castle, Chloe quipped, laughter evident in her voice. David and Chloe knew each other well, primarily through their association with Clark as his close friends. They had gotten to know each other over time. Looking out of the window, David remained non-committal. Despite the new life he had embraced and the hormonal changes coursing through his body, he retained a certain level-headedness during adolescence, different from the impulsive tendencies of his peers. Unlike his Kryptonian brother, Clark. Kryptonians also go through puberty, David sighed inwardly, observing a couple seated at the front of the school bus engrossed in conversation, laughter, and affectionate gestures. Lana Lang, with sleek black hair and a slightly upturned nose, possessed both beauty and charm. She held the captaincy of the school's cheerleading team. Though not an outgoing type, she garnered admiration and secret admiration from many male students. And there was her handsome blonde boyfriend. It's no surprise that the captain of the rugby team and the cheerleading team, who shine like stars in our school, are in a relationship, David complained inwardly. Seriously, if Clark, who struggles to talk to girls, manages to win Lana from Whitney, it would make headlines in the next issue of the Torch News. Noticing David's gaze, Chloe chuckled. But we all know it's impossible. It was generally impossible to conceal a crush. Clark's feelings for Lana were apparent to anyone who had observed their interactions, including Lana's boyfriend. After all, when a boy is constantly caught daydreaming about a particular girl and becomes incredibly nervous and lost for words when conversing with her, it's quite obvious what's going on. As a family who had grown up together for over a decade, if Clark truly loved football, David would support him. It's a shame young Superman is tangled up in hormones, David thought to himself. Clark's desire to join the football team, to display his prowess on the field and capture his crush's attention, stemmed from his youthfulness. I want to follow suit, excel on the rugby field, and earn the admiration of my crush, David mused. How young the thoughts are. David silently shook his head. It seems like Clark's plan to join the football team might not work out after all, Pete remarked, shifting to a more serious tone after chuckling at Clark's crush. 
Pete glanced around before leaning closer to David and speaking in a hushed voice. David, what about you? I've already told you I don't intend to join the football team, David replied. He had no interest in exerting controlled strength among a group of often boorish and arrogant football players. But it's the only way, Pete chimed in, his eyes displaying concern. What do you mean? Chloe wondered. Peter, why are you suddenly whispering like that? It's as if you're afraid of something. Avoiding something out of fear, he spoke like a thief. What are you two discussing? Chloe, you wouldn't understand, Pete replied, glancing nervously at the rowdy football players sitting in front, as though concerned they might overhear. He swallowed hard. We're trying to avoid becoming hapless scarecrows. Scarecrows. Chloe questioned. It's a tradition on the school football team to pin someone from Smallville to a man's chest before a big game, hanging them up like a scarecrow, David explained, a smile playing on his lips. It was akin to a morale-boosting ceremony before a military deployment a display of camaraderie among a group of spirited and audacious young men. I guess I underestimated the savagery of football players, Chloe frowned, her expression a mix of concern and distaste. That's why Clark and I want to join the team. Even if we fetch their water bottles or guard their gear, we won't face their wrath, Pete, a slightly shorter African-American, stated. He glanced at David, hoping to remind and persuade him. And you're still laughing, David. If Clark doesn't make the cut, it might be one of your brothers next time, Pete warned. This wasn't just empty talk. It was the reality on American campuses. Athletes were the center of attention, while so-called nerds remained nerds regardless of their academic achievements and were often the first targets of bullying. Born and raised on a farm, the nerdy Kent brothers enjoyed a good reputation on campus for their excellent grades. You know what'll happen if Whitney decides to take action against you, Clark's younger brother. Stupid Clark, David muttered under his breath, rolling his eyes at the mention of this matter. Clark believed his secret crush on Lana was well hidden, but anyone with even a little insight could see it, including Lana's boyfriend. Despite appearing dull, shy, and inarticulate to outsiders, the young Superman possessed an imposing figure and rugged handsomeness, making him a formidable presence. Especially Lana, even though she has a boyfriend, her attitude toward Clark is different from others, David noted. There was a risk of getting a green hat. Whitney, accustomed to being the star of the campus, couldn't help but feel jealous. Just then, Whitney engrossed in conversation with his girlfriend, caught a glimpse of something, perhaps coincidentally, or heard his name and turned to glance in David's direction. His eyes conveyed undisguised coldness before he looked away. Is he coming for me? David raised an eyebrow, freezing for a moment. Would he start to intimidate now? At 17 years old, with the physique of Thanos, should I be afraid of my classmates' violence? David thought, brushing off any apprehension. Creator's thoughts. The board rider 69. Creation is hard. Cheer me up. Chapter 4. I'm too embarrassed to expose you, Clark. Not getting his parents' permission to try out for the sports team, Clark got out of the house with his school bag, downcast, he glanced around. On the dirt road in front of the farm, the tire tracks were clearly run over, and the school bus was probably going towards the school at this time. You can't show abnormalities in front of people, but as long as no one sees it. Clark raised his school bag, and his body disappeared in a flash and rushed into the continuous cornfield farm. If seen from the sky, the green waves parted as quickly as Moses' stick pointed. 4. Except for the time the school bus driver stopped on the way to school, and chatted with a person whose car broke down halfway and asked if he needed help, which caused a delay for some time. The school bus drove smoothly all the way and stopped on time in front of the town's high school. The students got off the school bus one after another and walked towards the campus in two or more friend groups. After getting out of the car, David glanced at a signboard with a meteorite pattern in the distance, weathered by the wind and rain, old and faded. 2. Welcome to Smallville the meteorite capital of the world. 1. More than 10 years ago, a wave of meteorite rain landed on this town, bringing both disasters and opportunities. The people in the small town tried in vain to seize the selling point of Meteorite City to become a tourist destination and make the town develop. However, looking at the road that can be crossed in a few steps as the main road of the town, and the low buildings that can be seen everywhere, it is not difficult to know the result. David withdrew his gaze and casually walked towards the campus where the cherry blossoms were blooming in spring. 10. The capital of meteorites, looks like Clark's will suffer in the future. The so-called meteorites are the kryptonite that came to the Earth with the space capsule of the son of Krypton. 1. As we all know, kryptonite is the Achilles heel of Superman. Once touched, it will cause pain and weakness in a short time, and it will be fatal if it's in contact for a longer time. 1. A small green stone can make a god on Earth who is strong enough to move the continental plate powerless and kneel on the ground. When he grew up, he noticed a little bit that there was a lot of kryptonite in this small town. To exaggerate, he might have kicked out two pieces of kryptonite while walking on the road. I believe that all kinds of villains who will fight against Superman in the future will never have to worry about where to find kryptonite. 8. Chloe and Pete got off the bus, the two caught up with him, and the three walked towards the campus together. Hi, good morning, Chloe, Pete. Clad in jeans and a classic padded blue plaid shirt, Clark appeared out of nowhere, with a few books in his arms, trying to pretend that he had arrived early, and greeted his friends. Didn't David say you were behind? Chloe's strange radar activated, with a puzzled look on her face. How could Clark, who missed the school bus, arrive at school before them? I took a shortcut and set off early. David didn't see it. Clark remembered that David's words in the morning had ruined his plan. Although even if there was no reminder from David, it was unlikely to get the consent of his parents, he still put his arm over David's shoulders unhappily and scolded his brother who had become expressionless with a smile. You know, David has never cared much about me, really. The two of them looked at David with no less suspicion. 1. They remembered that David clearly said that Clark had asked his parents for permission to participate in the rugby team selection in the morning, and had encountered some difficulties, so he was determined to fight for it. Whatever. Slapping Clark's hand away, David took the lead toward the campus. He began to think about the kryptonite he had collected before, whether he should pick out a small piece and carry it with him. 13. In order to prevent a certain son of Krypton from lying about him next time, Clark, who had just made a fool of himself, was slightly relieved. As a family member who gets a long day and night, David knows what makes him different from ordinary people. Others don't know how he did it, but David certainly does. Fortunately, David didn't reveal it as expected. After all, his younger brother has always been very mature. 4. Looking at his younger brother's back, Clark smiled. Even if he found that his elder brother was extremely powerful and faster than the sound, as a younger brother, he was ordinary, and he never felt unbalanced in his heart. 
However, this exception does not do much good. Thinking of this, his eyebrows drooped again. Hiss. Suddenly, Clark felt weak and uncomfortable as if his strength had been emptied in an instant. He couldn't stand upright and fell to the ground, with books scattered all over the floor. Whitney passed by with his girlfriend Lana in his arms, casting contemptuous glances. Seeing him fall, Lana took the initiative to stop and help him pick up the book, glanced at the book in her hand, and said with a smile. Thus spoke Zarathustra, Nietzsche. 5. Clark, do you think you are an ordinary person or a superman? 5. Hearing the voice, David glanced back. His eyes swept over Lana's chest, where a green sparkling necklace hung. I don't know. Clark turned his head and didn't want to experience the kryptonite necklace, his expression was a little uncomfortable, and he stumbled. The Superman in Lana's mouth does not refer to Clark's future hero code. Philosopher Nietzsche once put forward a philosophy on the definition of a powerful human being, who is not bound by secular rules and morals, surpasses himself, surpasses ordinary people, has strong creativity, and a strong will is called a Superman. 6. Again, kryptonite. Touching his chin sympathetically, David temporarily dismissed the idea of carrying kryptonite with him in the future. The future Superman is miserable enough. Facing his crush, because of the kryptonite necklace, he cannot even talk freely with the other person. Every time the person he has a crush on appears, it is often when he is embarrassed. 4. Let's go. Seeing his girlfriend and Clark take the initiative to talk, Whitney was overwhelmed with jealousy, but because he didn't do anything in front of his girlfriend, he kissed Lana, hugged her waist, and left, leaving an embarrassed figure to pick up the book on the ground. David. There were footsteps, and Clark looked up to see that it was David walking over. His eyes lit up, thinking that his younger brother was going to pick up books for him. It's so miserable, Clark. Throwing down a sentence, David shook his head and left. 2. Facing the ridicule of his younger brother's deliberate return, Clark was furious. 3. After picking up the books, the four of them walked into the building. Next to the lockers in the corridor, teenagers with restless hormones were chatting eagerly. They dressed up behaved nicely and tried their best to show off their charm, talk with the opposite sex in front of them, and agree to their invitation. Spring is here. Feeling the atmosphere in the school, David sighed. You mean the upcoming spring dance? David. Chloe blinked and asked, do you have a dance partner? David has never been interested in this kind of thing. Peter shrugged and invited, how about Chloe, how about you being my dance partner, as a pure friend? 2. With a partner, the two of them won't have to be too awkward at the dance. How about you, Clark? 2. The four chatted and entered the classroom. After studying all morning, school is over at noon. David, you should go home alone today. Clark asked David to go home first as if it was serious. I'm going to the playground to accompany Pete to participate in the selection and encourage him. Accompany Pete. David sneered after glancing at him up and down. I'm too embarrassed to expose you, Clark. After saying this, ignoring Clark who was blushing and wanting to argue, he turned around and left gracefully. 2. Getting on the school bus. David looked out of the window at the scenery. What is the excuse for Pete going to participate in this election? Clark is just full of hormones and uses this as an excuse to watch Lana and her team members practice cheerleading on the playground. In this regard, he can only comment, asking for discomfort. There were not only cheerleaders but also a football team on the playground, full of dog food and vinegar, waiting for Clark. On the school bus, Chloe sat beside him, leaning over her school bag and quietly writing a manuscript. The draft was in her usual style, sharp and sharp. It was an article about the football team, football, sport or savageness, which was going to be published in the school newspaper. 2. There were few vehicles on the bridge, and the school bus driver drove fast and smoothly. The driver didn't notice the place where the car broke down in the morning on the road ahead, and there was a broken steel part lying there. Chi, the school bus, which was running smoothly, suddenly had its tires punctured and flattened. 1. Boom, the car skidded uncontrollably, and it was too late to slam the steering wheel. The school bus crashed into the bridge guardrail under the driver's terrified expression and rushed off the bridge. 1. The school bus flew midair. Ah, uh, suddenly weightless, the body jumped up, and everyone in the car screamed. David's expression changed. Before the group of high school students finished screaming, the school bus plunged into the water, causing huge splashes. The heavy school bus weighing more than 10 tons quickly sank to the bottom of the water. The turbulent and icy river water rushed in through the gaps in the car body, almost submerging the knees in the blink of an eye. Help, help. The people on the school bus didn't care about falling and getting dizzy, they stood up panicking, yelled in panic, and hit the window. Chloe turned pale with fright and shouted, to be even more frightened, she couldn't swim. I don't want to die, who can save me? 9. The atmosphere of despair and terror spread rapidly in the car, and fear swept everyone. Unlucky. The water was up to his waist, and his clothes were wet. David did not seem to be in a life and death crisis at all and frowned as he looked around. 10. Creator's Thoughts. The Board Rider 69. Like it? Add to Library. Chapter 5. Clark, you saved Luthor? Swish. Time seemed to slow down. All of a sudden, the rippling water in the school bus, the fluttering hair of a girl standing unsteadily, the saliva from a boy's mouth when he yelled in fear, and the broken floating glass in water, everything seemed to slow down a hundred times. David observed the situation and broke the window next to him leisurely. With a swish of his arms, he came to the school bus as fast as an unleashed torpedo. The front of the school bus was very high, and everyone on the bus was panicking, and no one noticed him. 1. In the water, David didn't hold his breath and looked relaxed. The eternal physique of Thanos has no problem surviving without eating, drinking, or even breathing, and it can survive in the vacuum of the universe at more than minus 200 degrees. Not to mention the bottom of the water. 5. With his hands pressed against the front of the bus, David pushed with one hand like he was pushing away the people in front of him. In the turbulent river, a school bus weighing more than a dozen tons, which is comparable to a medium-sized bus, flew out backward like a shell fired by an explosive force, broke through the water's surface, and flew towards the shore with a splash of water. Boom. 4. On the river surface, across an arc of more than 10 meters, the school bus landed heavily on the grass-covered river bank. The heavy rubber tires splashed mud everywhere, and the shock force of the landing shook the whole car. 2. Glass windows were shattered and debris flew everywhere. Ah. Uh, everyone on the school bus fell back and forth unexpectedly, covering their heads in fear. What happened? After a while, the shards of glass fell to the ground, and everyone was stunned. 
They stood up in disbelief and looked outside. I was still at the bottom of the dark and turbulent river just now. My life was in danger, but I came to the sunny shore in the blink of an eye, and I heard the chirping of birds in the forest, so vivid and beautiful. 3. Ahem, are we dreaming? They were dumbfounded and looked at each other. God. The school bus driver who believed in God grabbed his hat off his head, looked shocked, and looked into the river as if trying to find some angels. It's okay, Chloe. A voice came from beside him, and Chloe, who survived the catastrophe, turned pale and turned to look. David was as soaked as she was, but his expression was calm, and there was no trace of fear on his deep-featured face. 6. Do all the Kents have big hearts? 9. No, it's nothing. After brushing against the Grim Reaper, Chloe said in a daze, still unable to recover from the miraculous scene. I thought that the next time I came into contact with light and air, it would be heartbroken people who found a crane to salvage the school bus full of our dead bodies from the bottom of the river. What happened? Which was the common question in the minds of everyone on the school bus, who saved them? Did God hear their call? Let's get off the bus and get out of here. The school bus driver, who had recovered slightly, called out loudly. The shore was slippery, and it would be a deadly joke if the school bus slipped into the river again. Crash. With wet clothes on his body, David twisted the clothes on his body, and calmly left the school bus that almost turned into their coffins with the other people who were still in shock. It seems that something knocked us out of the river. Surprised at the deflated front of the car, which seemed to be hit by a big elephant, the burly school bus driver opened his mouth and couldn't close it for a long time. 2. Is there a water monster in the river? The group of students was terrified, surprised, and discussed what happened. Our school bus hit it on the head, and it threw us out. Looking into the raging river, it felt like a huge monster was lurking. Glancing at the marks he left behind, David looked back casually. Thanos, a mutant of the Eternal Family, possesses unimaginable power and endurance, as well as recovery and agility far beyond ordinary people, and his skin is almost indestructible, especially against cold, heat, electricity, radiation, poison, aging, and sickness. 6. The strength of the body is stronger than that of the gods, and the terrifying strength it possesses is enough to kill the gods. Although only more than 80% of the template has been integrated now. 1. But he didn't know where the upper limit of his strength was. Pickup trucks, boulders, everything is light. 1. According to David's estimates, it would be easy to catch an aircraft falling from the sky like an adult Superman, pull a steel warship of thousands of tons, and lift a dozen-story residential building. 8. It's just that there is no tactile telekinesis, and most of those things will collapse and disintegrate. 8. The school bus driver said that something knocked the school bus out of the river, and it was purely a joke. At the bottom of the river, David didn't even dare to push too hard, fearing that these people would avoid suffocation and pain and go to God in advance. 2. Everyone stayed away from the river bank and sat aside, waiting for the rescuers and parents to come over. The school bus rushed down the river once and was thrown ashore once, and there was a violent shock. Many people fell straight into the river, so their bodies and their bones were broken. The school bus fell into the river and was inexplicably hit ashore by unknown creatures. This is undoubtedly an extremely bizarre event. It's enough to make some biologists and scientists scratch their heads and wonder. 3. But in this small town, it can't be said to be commonplace, and it's far from breaking people's worldview. 1. Since the meteorite rain more than 10 years ago, strange things have happened frequently in this small town. A vegetative person who has not woken up for many years suddenly wakes up and disappears. In the dark forest at night, a giant wolf bigger than a tiger appears. A little girl with a stuffed bear in a cemetery in the dead of night disappears when she turns her head. 4. Strange and powerful monsters roared and chiseled the mountain in the middle of the night. There are countless. Hearing that something happened to the children, they were almost buried at the bottom of the river. After a while, all the parents worriedly hurried over. Seeing that it was his mother, Martha, who was driving and parked on the side of the road, David greeted her with some doubts. David, are you okay? Martha was anxious, her face was full of worry, and she ran over, looking over and over at David's body, trying to see if he was injured anywhere. Does your leg hurt? What about your chest? Are you breathing fine? I'm fine, mother. After patiently showing that there was nothing wrong with his body several times, he managed to comfort his mother. David grabbed his mother's colder hand and smiled he said, Where are you alone? Where is father? 1. In fact, he had long thought about showing his ability to his parents. But unlike Clark, when he used his power, his skin color turned purple, and his chin grew streaks. It looked like a genetic mutation. He looked more like an alien than a Kryptonian, and he was afraid that Jonathan and Martha would worry. 5. The police called just now. Your brother had a car accident and fell into the river on another bridge. Your father went to see him. Martha had a worried and strange expression on her face. Strange to say, her two sons both had accidents at noon on the same day. One school bus skidded and rushed into the river, and the other was hit by a car. A car accident? He crashed someone else's car. David wondered. Is the driver, okay? We won't have to lose money, right? 2. The school bus fell into the river. This scene seems familiar. Why did Clark fall into the river after evading it? Is this the power of fate? David, Clark is your brother. Hearing what her youngest son said, Martha, who was originally worried, said helplessly, I know, but his body can't be hurt by a car, can it? David spread his hands. Even if it is smashed, as long as it is not dead, it will be fine if it is put in the sun to dry. 4. See you later, Chloe. After chatting with his mother for a few words, he said goodbye to Chloe. The mother and son turned and walked to the car and got into the old pickup truck that had served the Kent family for more than 10 years and drove away. After David left, Chloe, who was covered with a blanket by the rescuers, was shivering from the cold. Suddenly, I saw a footprint not far away, and under the footprint was a piece of fresh green water grass that was trampled to pieces. 6. Huh. Chloe looked around with doubt in her eyes. Whose footprints are these? The school bus got ashore before everyone could escape through the broken window. Why are there aquatic plants? 1. Except for a few injured students, and a few students who thought it was a good opportunity and pretended to be physically injured, so they asked for leave to play at home. 1. In the afternoon and the next day, the class was still the same, and nothing was delayed. David had to marvel at the rough nerves and adaptability of the town's residents. It's different after being baptized by meteorite rain. The next day, evening, David and Clark came home from school. In the farm, at the gate of the small courtyard, a brand new red pickup truck parked there quietly. The shiny car paint reflected the afterglow of the setting sun, and it was wrapped with a firework, like a gift. Whose car is this? 
Clark asked with a smile when he saw his mother who had just come out of the barn. Mom, is our family going to change the car at last? This is your car, Clark. Mine. You saved Lex, and he gave you the car. Martha frowned and took out a thank you letter and handed it to Clark. David heard yesterday that Clark was knocked off the bridge by an out-of-control silver coupe, and nothing happened to him, but the owner of the car almost died in the river. Clark pulled him out of the river, saving the life of the man, who marveled at his body. Dear Clark, drive carefully, don't be like me. 5. Hearing this sentence, Clark couldn't wait to open the letter, and read softly and excitedly, I am grateful for yesterday, Lex Luthor. He has already figured out how to drive this beautiful pickup to school, thinking that Lana would definitely notice him. 2. David, who didn't pay much attention to this matter at first, heard the name, looked at the thank you letter, raised his eyebrows, and his expression became weird. Wait a minute, Clark, you saved Lex Luthor. 4. Yeah, what's wrong? The young Superman looked up, wondering why his brother had such an expression. Creator's thoughts. The Board Rider 69. Creation is hard, cheer me up. Comment. Chapter 6, Son, It's Time 1. Lex Luthor, one of Superman's lifelong enemies. After discovering Superman, he worked hard to free the world from the threat of Superman. According to his own opinion, Superman put human beings in the cradle of comfort, not giving them a chance to grow in the face of crisis and weakened the potential of the human race. 4. If Clark failed to save him yesterday, then young Lex Luthor fell into the river and probably died. But he personally saved one of his greatest enemies in the future. Clark, as long as you're happy. David spread his hands. Of course, I'm very happy. Clark said with a smile, Mom, where are the keys to this car? David, would you like to go for a drive with me? He turned back to his brother and said, the depression of these days also easing somewhat. Clark couldn't wait to drive the car. It's the first own car in his life. Given his family's financial situation, he thought he could get it only after he got a job. Clark. Martha hesitated to speak. Your father has the key. Rumbling. Besides the grass cutter, Jonathan was busy processing the hay on the farm. Dad. Clark happily pulled David to the side, wanting to ask for the key. The young Superman opened his mouth, and Jonathan stopped the lawn shredder, with a serious expression on his face, and said seriously, I know you want it very much, but you can't take it. He was still thinking about yesterday when after the crash, the car that was fished out of the river, Luther looked at the unscathed Clark in surprise, curiosity, and puzzlement as if seeing a miracle that was unreasonable and should not exist, and the expression on his face showed a faint desire to explore and crack down the miracle. It's like an ambitious business owner discovering a unique new project. He didn't know if it was an illusion, but he has a bad premonition. Why? I saved him. Clark was puzzled. This doesn't mean you can accept expensive thanks from others with peace of mind. I'll give you the new car, Dad. I can drive the old car. It has nothing to do with this. Seeing the displeasure on his son's face, Jonathan said quickly, A pickup truck, it's nothing to the Lex family. David agreed with Clark's words. The Luther Corp was one of the world's well-known business groups. Even Smallville, a remote town close to the metropolis, had the Luther family's fertilizer factory as a pillar financial industry. There are more than 2,000 people in the town working for the Lex family. Clark saved Lex Luthor, and a pickup truck is hardly an expensive cost for the life of an heir to an outrageously rich syndicate. Listen, son, we can't get what we want in life, it's normal. 3. Jonathan wanted to explain patiently. Normal? I'm tired of being normal. 1. Clark's depression accumulated in the past few days finally broke out and interrupted his father. He obviously can do a lot, obviously, he can not only just watch, he could be the best no matter what he does. But in order to be normal, he had to hide, so he could only be an inconspicuous NPC, standing by the football ground with a sour heart, watching the person he had a crush on kissing other people passionately. 1. Is this normal? Dodging his father's hand that wanted to grab his shoulder, he rushed to the mower angrily, turned on the machine, and amidst the deafening buzzing sound, thrust his arm into the constantly moving blades. 1. Kaka? Father, tell me. Like encountering an indestructible high-density alloy, the deck blade stopped rolling its blade, the gears collapsed, and the grass shredder emitted a puff of black smoke and stopped working. Clark. Jonathan screamed even knowing that his son was made of iron and steel, and hurried up to pull out his son's arm from the machine. Only the clothes were shredded, and there was not even a red mark on Clark's arm. I know you're amazing, Clark, have you ever thought that repairing the lawnmower requires money? 6. David asked indifferently as he looked at Clark, who was being led around by emotions. He let out for a while, and only the result of the lawnmower being injured was achieved. Father, did you see that? I was born abnormal. Hearing what his younger brother said, Clark was even more annoyed, his voice was agitated, and he couldn't accept his situation. Martha hurried over when she heard the movement, saw the scene, and guessed what happened, Jonathan and she looked sadly at each other. Perhaps it's time, son. Jonathan sighed, and wearily took off his work gloves. This day was always coming. What? Clark suddenly had an ominous premonition. Come with me. He turned and plodded, letting Clark follow. Then he glanced at his youngest son and hesitated for a moment. David, you should also come. As Clark's younger brother, you also have the right to know the truth. 1. Although David is his and Martha's biological son, Clark is just an alien baby picked up from a spaceship, and the race between them is different. 4. The kind-hearted Jonathan and Martha have never treated them differently, and they are both their sons in their hearts. I know that some things cannot be kept from you forever, especially after discovering that you, Clark, are born extraordinary and possess unimaginable strength. 1. In a dilapidated car repair shop, a blonde-haired, muscular worker stood beside the car and reached into the car to twist the key, listening to dynamic death rock music. The dashboard lit up, the engine started successfully, and the gumshoeing worker smiled successfully and closed the hood of the car in front. Just when he was about to take a break, the worker caught sight of a thin figure standing like a ghost in the shadow of the store door. Damn it, you scared me to death. Cursing in a low voice, the worker suddenly felt that the person in the shadow looked familiar. Do I know you? He squinted and recognized the person coming, and walked up. I kind of remember, you were that year's scarecrow. What's your name? It seemed to be called, UMM Jeremy. 1. Jeremy, a black-haired, thin figure, with sunken cheeks like a skeleton, looked at him indifferently, without saying a word. I heard that you injured your head in that meteorite shower, and you were unconscious. As he spoke, the worker who used to be a football player at Smallville High School tried to wipe his oily hands with his clothes. 
finally willing to leave the hospital bed, looking at your weak body. Before he finished speaking, a strong electric current shot out from Jeremy's shoulder when he touched it. A burn smell spread in the air. The worker flew upside down three or four meters away, knocked over a tool rack, and fell heavily to the ground. Monster. He raised his hand, which was scorched black and felt painful, and stepped back with his face changed drastically. Listen, that happened more than ten years ago. The worker immediately realized why the other party appeared over there and wanted to dispel the idea of revenge from him. Cried out in pain. That's just a game. A game. Chapter 7, I'll bring Clark back. Game. Jeremy raised his palm as if hearing some joke. On the palm, there was a terrifying scar left by a steel nail piercing through. 1. After being crucified on the cross, Jesus bore all the sins of the world and ascended to heaven. Crackling sounds. While speaking, his palms emitted intense and dazzling electric currents, which made the worker's eyes widen and their hair stand on end. 17 years later, I returned to the world. God gave me this ability to wash away your sins. 4. Since you like games so much. Now, let's play another game. Jeremy walked up to him, step by step like an approaching god of death. Ah, the window was illuminated by lightning, accompanied by piercing screams. Ten minutes passed when a thin figure put on a hood and left coldly. In the car repair shop, a body that was tortured and turned into coke was lying quietly on the ground, no longer flamboyant, no longer contemptuous, curled up into a ball, as if returning to the state of a baby. Five. Crack. Jonathan opened the barn door. The smell of stale rot mixed with damp rice paves the surface. It was a classic plot. David already knew what was going to happen. Clark is about to learn his life experience. He rarely restrained his casual expression, looked at the bewildered Clark beside him, and felt a little worried in his heart, not sure whether he could accept the truth. 2. With David around, especially since he had just been born, there was no good reason for Jonathan and Martha to adopt another child. The couple secretly adopted Clark, claiming that they were brothers. What are you talking about, father? Clark's heart was gripped by inexplicable panic, and he began to regret that he should not have lost his temper with his parents just now. His father and mother are also good to him and want to protect him. He knew everything, why couldn't he control himself just now? This is something your parents left you, Clark. Jonathan took out something from an unremarkable old box, with a heavy expression and a hint of sadness, and turned to Clark in a dull voice. Something like a long stone seal, dark in color, with an S embossed on its head. Parents. Clark couldn't believe what he heard, his face turned pale, he looked at the long black thing, and didn't dare to reach out to touch it, like facing a fragile bubble, afraid that if he stretched out his hand, he would break it, some things are irretrievable. Father, this joke is not funny. Why, why didn't his heartbeat speed up even though his father was lying? The key to the fortress of solitude. David frowned and looked away from the key, watching Clark's reaction, worried that he would be overwhelmed by the sudden news. For ordinary people, it is unbearable to suddenly learn in one day that the parents who love them are not their biological parents and have no blood relationship. If you find out that you are an alien again, David suddenly remembered a sentence from a pale and crazy person. To drive a man crazy, all he needs to do is give him a bad day, the Joker. Two, probably not. His eyelids trembled. It's really a deadly joke to develop a Joker Superman. Three, squeak. Opening the cellar again, Jonathan led the two sons down and lifted the things covered by a canvas. After the dust flew up, a small spaceship appeared in the sight of the three, with a streamlined shape and the size of a cradle, it seemed that it could only accommodate a baby. No. Looking at the spaceship that shouldn't have appeared on the farm at all, Clark stepped back two steps as if struck by lightning. Father, don't do this to me. His expression was stiff, almost pleading, looking at Jonathan like a child about to be abandoned. Clark, in fact, you are the adopted son of me and Martha. Looking at his son's reaction, he felt very uncomfortable in his heart, but the words had reached this point, and Jonathan couldn't stop anymore. The short-term pain is better than the long-term pain, and he gritted his teeth and said the truth. You are from an alien planet. We picked you up in the meteorite shower more than ten years ago. Six. Clark felt as if he was stepping on a cloud, his head was dizzy, and he felt that everything in front of him was about to leave him. What about David? Suddenly he saw David as if grabbing a life-saving straw, he asked hastily. Don't tell him. David, is my and Martha's biological son. Seeing that there was almost no expression of astonishment on David's face, Jonathan was puzzled, thinking that he was still thinking that all this was fake, but at this time, he didn't care about David, hesitated for a while, and told the cruel and hurtful truth. No, no, all of this is false, and I will never accept it. Gritting his teeth and growling, Clark, with red eyes, turned and ran away almost madly, like a wounded beast. 1. He wanted to escape from this lie, from this heart-wrenching reality. Swish. At a speed far exceeding the speed of sound, Clark left the cellar as if fleeing for his life, and disappeared. Son. Jonathan wanted to catch up anxiously, but as a mortal father, how could he catch up with the son of Krypton? He had no choice but to stop by the cellar door, looking at the empty barn, feeling sad in his heart. Clark will figure it out. Father. Seeing his father's distraught appearance, David couldn't help being a little touched. He had never seen such an expression on the stubborn and courageous Jonathan. He stepped forward to support his father and comforted him. I don't believe he would abandon our family. David, why aren't you surprised at all? Jonathan looked back wearily. We only have a few houses in our family, and Clark is so abnormal. 3. In fact, David didn't know why Clark hadn't discovered the spaceship in the cellar for more than 10 years, especially when he was a child who was most curious about exploring and climbing up and down. He'd sneaked in here to check it out when he was a few years old. It's a real spaceship after all. I see. Jonathan looked as if he was a few years older, doubting whether the action just now was correct. He was helped to sit down on the steps and unexpectedly patted his son on the shoulder. 1. David, my son, you are doing very well. 2. His voice was hoarse, and he looked at his son who was very sensible since he was a child and did not show any strange eyes because of this. Where Clark is from, it doesn't matter whether he is an alien or not. The important thing is that he is our family and a brother who grew up with you. Don't blame him for reacting so violently, he just couldn't accept it for a while. I'll go get him back. Seeing his father talking in a trance like this, David frowned and got up to leave. If, I mean if. Jonathan paused, and said in his mouth, if Clark doesn't want to come back for a while, don't force it. He received two bad news in one day, and his past life as the biological son of Kent's was denied. He could imagine the impact on his elder son. I will. 
David nodded to his father, but he didn't think so in his heart, secretly said. If you can't convince Clark, in the current situation, I have to give Clark a face-shattering punch to calm down. 3. Chapter 8, I learned it on TV. The bar is full of feasting and dancing lights. 1. After escaping from the house, Clark walked in. Unable to accept the reality, he just now wanted to get drunk and forget everything. I heard people say that you can think about nothing when you are drunk. You are only 18 years old, and the state government's law stipulates that we cannot sell you hard alcohol. The bartender glanced at Clark's ID card and raised his eyes, do you want a beer? 3. As long as it is alcohol. Withdrawing the ID card, Clark, who was devastated, urged the bartender to bring it up quickly. On the dance floor, men and women danced with enthusiasm, and someone in the booth was excitedly playing drinking games. All the hustle and bustle has nothing to do with him. Clark only feels lost and lonely, like a lone wolf lost with a pack of wolves. An unspeakable pain filled my heart. Is everything fake? Recalling the scenes of my past life with my parents and younger brother. 1. He never belonged to that family, and he didn't even belong to this planet where he grew up. 3. When he was a child, Clark wondered why other people couldn't lift the truck and would be injured if they fell from several small buildings. His parents and younger brother were also different from him. Now he has the answer. Because he has no blood relationship with his father and younger brother. I'm just an alien monster picked up by my parents. Beside the dimly lit bar, Clark's eyes were red, and he looked absently at the name of Clark Kent on his ID card. His surname is not Kent at all, and his name shouldn't even be in this form. It should have been a name that was weird to people on Earth. There are billions of people on the Earth, none of them are his kindred, and no one here is from his hometown. Why? Clark clenched his fists angrily, emotionally, and extremely unstable. Is God fooling him? Why was he not from Earth? Why couldn't he have been someone who is connected by blood with his parents and younger brother? How much he wished that everything his father told him today was false, that he could still taste the apple pie carefully made by his mother when he wakes up tomorrow morning, still go to school with his younger brother bickering on the school bus, and come back to help his father with some farm work on the farm, the days are dull and full. Why should my life be broken suddenly? Suddenly being told the bad news, he wonders how he would go back to that home again, and enjoy his parents' love for him with peace of mind. The confused and angry Clark suddenly had the urge to throw a punch at the wall to vent. At this time, Clark, a hand clapped his shoulder. It's really you. Clark turned his head and looked. Whitney and several team members held a beer in their hands, with unfriendly smiles on their faces, as if they saw the hounds of a weak rabbit, and surrounded him faintly. Clark, why are you drinking alone here? Whitney held the beer in one hand, and wrapped his arms around Clark's neck with the other, as if very intimate, but secretly exerted force with his arms. Whitney, don't bother me now. What surprised him was that Clark, whose neck was supposed to be pinched sorely, remained motionless as if his body was made of steel, and he put away Whitney's hand. Although someone came up to provoke him just as he wanted to vent something, the future Superman, who has been well taught by the Kent couple for more than ten years and has a kind heart in his heart, resisted fighting back. I have good news for you, Clark. Whitney was staggered, and the beer in his hand dangled and spilled on the ground. He was very angry because he felt ashamed in front of everyone. I decided that this year's scarecrow is you. His eyes signaled several football players to put down their beers together, and they were about to take Clark away by force. I said, don't mess with me. The loud rock music in the bar pierced his ears, and Clark stood up suddenly and grabbed Whitney's collar, with anger in his eyes, and he almost couldn't help wanting to make a move. But suddenly, Whitney's collar was ripped open, revealing a familiar green crystal necklace. 2. Radiation of kryptonite enveloped him. Ah. Uh, Clark lost his divine power rapidly, and his expression was painful. The hand close to the kryptonite and even the blood vessel which could be seen turned green as if poisoned. In the flickering light, Whitney didn't notice this, knocked the weak Clark to the ground with a punch and tidied up his clothes contemptuously. So what if I mess with you, Clark? He knelt down and grabbed Clark instead, his voice was low with jealousy and ferocity. I've noticed the way you look at my girlfriend. I know what you're thinking. Whose girlfriend do you think she is? The high school football game was about to come, and Lana had handed over the meteorite crystal necklace that she had worn since she was a child to her boyfriend. She wants to put her heart into this and bless him to overcome all obstacles in the competition, win the championship, and be discovered by scouts. As a result, Clark once again tasted the power of kryptonite. You want her necklace very much. Noticing that the uncomfortable Clark had been staring at the necklace on his neck, thinking that he was jealous and sour, Whitney sneered and hung the necklace around his neck, humiliating him severely. Then I'll give it to you. This is the only way you can get close to Lana. Take him away. He stood up and greeted several football players, and picked up Clark, who was in more pain and suffering, and took him away through the back door. There are too many people here, and Whitney is going to take Clark to a remote cornfield and teach him a lesson. I'll let you guys know to put away your wishful thinking. Suddenly, a voice seemed to have no emotion. Where are you taking Clark? Whitney. David. Seeing a figure walking slowly with his hands in the pockets of his brown jacket, Whitney was a little surprised and then sneered. Since you took the initiative to send it to your door, I will take you with me. Let Clark watch how he implicated his younger brother because of thoughts he shouldn't have. 6. David's face was unmoved as if he didn't hear what he was going to do. David, go. Clark, who was so weak that he didn't even have the strength to stand still, saw his younger brother enduring the pain and quickly shouted, You can't beat them. Whitney and his party consisted of five people, all of whom were strong-bodied football players, and he didn't want to see his brother being bullied. Frustration plus 18 from Clark, regret plus 13. 3. I thought you might not be able to bear what happened today, and you fell down and took another path, causing some trouble for the family. 5. Ignoring Whitney and the others, David looked at him, raised his eyebrows, and said slowly, Now it seems that I was thinking too much, Clark. Even facing a few high school students holding kryptonite, he was actually deflated. Come on. Whitney couldn't help being annoyed seeing him ignoring them. Let him see how good you are. Two tall, muscular football players with ferocious expressions rushed forward like wolves and tigers, punching him. The movement at the bar finally attracted the attention of some people. Many people looked over and clapped and booed. Watching the excitement is no big deal. Okay, let's fight. In places like bars, fights have always occurred frequently. David stood on the spot, swaying his body to avoid the fist of the first person to hit him first, and the backhand hit was as fast as lightning. 1. 
Boom, the football player's eyes were bulging, his face was as red as a boiled lobster, and he knelt down while clutching his stomach in pain, spitting out a mouthful of saliva. The other rushed forward with his fists raised, and David turned his elbows neatly. He seemed to have been hit in the head by a baseball bat, and he fell to the ground uncontrollably and passed out. Two, oh, in less than two seconds, the two opponents were eliminated in an instant. Some people in the bar jumped in surprise and applauded. Beautiful. This young man is so powerful. Is he a professional fighter? Shock from Clark plus eight, stunned plus nine. David ignored the emotional reminders that he often omitted, and Whitney froze in place, looking at the two players who were beaten to the ground in disbelief. You. Clark was even more surprised. He never knew that his brother had this side. Let's go together. Whitney and the two players who threw Clark to the ground rushed toward David. Bang bang bang. David's steps fluttered lightly like a butterfly, and the three of them didn't touch a piece of his clothes. His fists were as powerful as a bee sting, and he knocked them down easily and neatly with three punches while walking in the courtyard. 6. The three fell to the ground with bruised noses and swollen faces. Impossible. 2. Whitney held his painful chest, his ribs seemed to be broken, and he gritted his teeth and struggled to get up and rush to David. He's just a guy who doesn't dare to participate in any activities on campus. Lie down, Whitney. As soon as he got up, David kicked him like an adult bullying a child, casually passed him who couldn't get up again, and walked towards Clark. As long as I use too much force, the purple skin color will show. But to deal with these people, I don't need more than ordinary people's strength. 3. The spectators at the bar saw him coming, and they all backed away not wanting to cause trouble, and gave him way. Where did you learn to fight? Die. David. A Kryptonian who had been exposed to kryptonite for a long time could even be life-threatening. Clark's next blue blood vessel swelled out abnormally, his face was pale, and he asked in surprise, enduring the pain. He never knew that his younger brother had such powerful fighting skills. On TV, David replied lightly, tearing off the necklace around his neck. On. TV. 1. Clark didn't expect such an answer. Seeing that his brother was fine, he finally stopped holding on, rolled his eyes, and passed out. Putting the necklace into his trouser pocket, David lifted the tall Clark with ease, turned, and left the bar, and everyone gave way. Even if a fight affected the business, the owner of the bar did not dare to ask David to stay. After some distance, under the cold moonlight, they arrived on a deserted road. Clark on David's shoulders woke up dazedly, realizing that this was the way home, and struggled. Put me down, David, I don't want to go back. Chapter 9, I am your son. After Clark and David are gone. After being knocked down, Whitney and several football players struggled to get up after a while. Several people were beaten by one person without even being able to touch his clothes. The crowd laughed, and they helped each other get up, leaving an embarrassment. Not long after the few of them left, a thin figure walked out of the bar and stared at the leaving people in baseball uniforms, with cold eyes. No hurry, there is plenty of time. He murmured, returned to the bar, and continued to drink slowly. His eyes occasionally glanced at a muscled black man who was chatting up girls in the corner of the bar, with no expression on his face, as if looking at a dead man. The original plan cannot be disrupted. As for those football team high school bullies that just went by, he remembered that tomorrow night was the spring dance at Smallville High School. I've never caught anyone's attention at a ball before, but this time is different. Jeremy sneered. He will be the brightest one at the dance. Put me down, David. Clark woke up weakly, struggling to get off David's shoulders. I don't want to go back. He hasn't figured out how to go back and face his parents. Why, the 18-year-old Clark wants to run away from home. David felt that there was a very simple solution to this matter, and there was no need to go back and forth hypocritically. He raised a hand knife. Snapped. Being slapped on the back of the neck, Clark looked back at his younger brother in doubt, not understanding what his younger brother was going to do. He's recovered his strength. Seeing this, David smacked his lips. Freed from the kryptonite radiation, Clark gradually began to recover despite the absence of sunlight. Boom. He made another hit. The terrifying force was enough to smash the tank with a knife in one hand. The airwaves spread for more than 10 meters, like a strong wind, and the weeds on both sides of the road shook violently. Clark rolled his eyes and passed out. It's done. The complexion of the night recovered on the dark road, and David carried the unconscious Clark back to the farm. The couple in the house are still waiting for the two children to come back, the door of the house reveals warmth and light. Before going in, he took out a green glowing kryptonite necklace and swung it around Clark's face, giving him a makeup. After being exposed to kryptonite radiation, Clark, who had almost recovered, went into a coma and his expression became painful again. His face was weak and pale as if he was seriously ill. After feeling that it was almost done, David put away the kryptonite with satisfaction. Kryptonians have to be exposed to kryptonite for at least a month or even a year before their life is in danger. It's okay for a short time, especially since Clark is not an ordinary Kryptonian. Of course, I'm doing it for your own good, Clark. He definitely didn't do it for any information to prompt the pain from Clark plus three plus two or the like. David smiled and walked in with Clark on his shoulders. God, David, what's wrong with your brother? Seeing this scene, Martha covered her mouth in fright. Clark, why did you faint? Jonathan's expression was unbelievable. Clark was stronger than a cow when he was a child, and he had never been sick or injured. It was the first time the couple saw him like this. His face was pale and unconscious. I don't know either. It seems that there is something wrong with Clark's super physique. David said without blushing. Let him lie down quickly. Jonathan took Clark carefully from his younger son's shoulders and laid him flat on the sofa. Martha hurriedly poured a glass of water, came to the sofa, and anxiously called her son's name. Clark. The couple were a little flustered. Strictly speaking, even though the two are middle-aged and raised their children for so long, they have never encountered a situation where their son was sick. Hmm. Feeling himself shaking, Clark woke up in a daze. His parents surrounded him anxiously, with concern in their eyes that couldn't be resolved, and they were careful not to shake him hard. Father, mother. Returning to the warm and familiar home, he was a little dazed looking at his parents surrounded by him. I almost forgot when white hair grew in my father's hair, his face became vicissitudes, and his body was no longer so strong. The corners of my mother's eyes were engraved with wrinkles and loose skin. Everything was pierced in his eyes like a knife. I just remember that when I was young, I liked to ride on my father's neck and let him run around. I was not interested in playing catch, which other fathers and sons liked to play, which made my father very helpless and could only play with David. By the way, there was still a period of time when he liked to eat corn dogs, and he always pestered his mother to make them. Scenes from the past came before his eyes. 
Clark's nose felt sore uncontrollably as if he had been hit by a punch. He had spent his parents' youth. My parents picked me up from the meteorite rain and raised me as hard as their own son. They even cared more about my psychology and emotions than they did for David. They never asked for anything from me, and never thought about getting anything from me. It's easy to take advantage of his abilities and package him as an up-and-coming football or soccer teenage star and make a lot of money without having to work on the farm all day, but the parents never did that. Even let me hide my ability all the time, just to protect me, but I was still fed up with it. Clark, what's wrong with you? The son remained in a daze for a long time, and Martha was even more anxious, fearing that something might happen to his body. Mother. Clark's eyes were red, and he suddenly stood up full of guilt and stretched out his arms to hug the couple who loved him the most in the world. I was wrong, father. No matter what my status is or what I am, it can't change the fact that I am your son. How stupid I was before, obviously my parents didn't care about his status, and they treated him like their own son for more than 10 years, giving him the warmest love in the world. But he struggled with this after learning the truth. As long as you come back, Clark. Jonathan's heart sank, and a smile appeared on his face, he and Martha looked at each other in relief, and hugged his son. It seems that someone gave up running away from home. David, who was leaning on the doorframe, clapped his hands with a playful expression. Clark recalled the shameful incident before and said to his brother, Happiness from Clark plus 14, gratitude plus 7, shame plus 5. You always see things better than I do, David. Jonathan and Martha also admitted this. The younger son is smart and mature, and he never needs them to worry about him. Clark, are you feeling well? The warm family atmosphere returned to normal, and Martha recalled her son's pale face just now. Why do you look sick? I'm fine, except for the back of my head, hiss. Clark touched touching the back of his head, he felt as if he had been hit on the head by a rocket falling from the sky. He gasped in pain and looked up at David suspiciously. David, you. Was he made too weak by Lana's necklace? How could he be beaten so painfully by his brother? It shouldn't be. It seems that this blow is a bit heavy. A thought flashed in his heart, and David changed the subject calmly. Perhaps Clark was injured by Whitney and the others. Injured? Clark, you were beaten. Clark, who was about to ask David what happened, was immediately questioned by Jonathan and Martha with confusion and concern. For a while, there was no chance to ask David again. Under the sky full of stars, the farm has a huge warehouse for storing machinery and tools. On the second floor, through the open-air window, Clark explained the ins and outs of the matter to his parents and managed to reassure them that he was not harmed in any way, at least not from Whitney and the others. The breeze blows, and the wheat fields on the farm rustle, which makes people feel comfortable and peaceful, and everything is as it used to be. Clark sat in front of the window, staring through the astronomical telescope unobstructed at a house one kilometer away, with a smile unconsciously on the corner of his mouth. In front of a house in the binoculars, a beautiful black-haired figure was sitting on the stair corridor, blowing the evening breeze, and writing an English report. The most important thing is that the green necklace is no longer around that figure's neck, which made him think about it. Suddenly, a figure sneaked up to Lana's house in his sight, and secretly took a few pictures of Lana behind the grass after taking the photo, put away the camera, deliberately shook the grass, put down a gift box in a panic, and shyly, turned and ran away. Lana went over suspiciously and opened the gift box. A few butterflies with colorful wings and green shimmering dust flew out, just like a scene in a fairy tale. She covered her mouth in surprise and looked towards the street, trying to find the person who gave her the gift. A suitor. Clark felt a little sour in his heart, Lana's charm is really extraordinary. He was going to see who the person who gave the gift was and if he recognized him. I remember someone asked mother for $300, saying that he was very interested in astronomy. Suddenly, a voice came, and Clark was startled and turned to look. David walked up the stairs slowly, with a strange and surprised expression. To be honest, I saw you looking out with this thing at first, I thought that you were lonely and sentimentally looking for your hometown among the stars after learning of your life. Looking at the astronomical telescope pointing at a certain house, he raised his eyebrows. Chapter 10, look, the lover of your dreams is dancing with other men 10. Although I am a bit confused and curious about where I come from, this is undoubtedly my home. Hearing David's words, Clark was silent for a while, and his tone was unprecedentedly serious as if saying it to him seemed to be right. He said to himself, I'm sure of this, David, you, father, and mother are my family. I should do everything I can to cherish and protect those things, such as family affection, such as family members. Thank you for today's matter, brother. What are you doing with this thing? Clark, who had always been a bit introverted, expressed his feelings so bluntly, David was not used to it for a while and looked into the distance, trying to change the topic. 1. This astronomical telescope was created to help humans observe the space and vast stars of the universe. It is not for people to peek at their crushes in order to have some material for their dreams. David, I have never had that idea. Clark wanted to explain in a panic, he didn't have that idea. I understand, I understand. But David, who was so flustered by one sentence, didn't give him this chance at all, said a sentence that was obviously perfunctory, turned, and left. Anxiousness from Clark plus 7, embarrassment plus 4, 5. Today was different from the past. Many things happened one after another. The Kent couple and Clark had intense emotional ups and downs. David gained a lot of emotional points because of this, and the degree of integration has improved a little. Template fusion degree 81% rightward arrow 83%. 4. The further back the template is, the more difficult it is to improve the fusion degree. At the same time, a little fusion can bring stronger power than the previous one. 2. The morning wind blows through Smallville High School. Pairs of sneakers walked here and there in the corridor, the girls whispered and laughed shyly from time to time, and the boys raised their chins and boasted to their friends. The campus atmosphere is different from the past, and the faces of the students are full of excitement and anticipation. Tonight is the spring dance. You didn't come on the school bus with David again today, Clark. Pete asked Clark what happened. There are some things. I saved someone. He gave me a gift, but I couldn't accept it. Clark explained, I went to return that gift this morning. This morning, he didn't complain at all, and he listened obediently to his father. He went to Lex Manor, had a polite chat with Lex Luthor, and returned the pickup truck. 3. What gift? Pete was about to ask with interest. That necklace is very important to me. The faint voice came, and Lana, who was not far away, looked sad and ugly. 1. Whitney next to her was covered with a band-aid on his bruised nose and his forehead was red and swollen. 
He kept comforting his girlfriend and explained the incident in his own words. What happened to Whitney's face? Pete wondered. Maybe he was drunk and fell down. Clark explained awkwardly after glancing at David, who had a nonchalant expression. That necklace was carved from a meteorite left by my parents when they died in the meteorite rain when I was a child. My aunt left it to me to remind me of my parents, but you lost it. 3. In the bar, someone was drunk and deliberately looking for trouble. We fought with them, and after the fight, we found that the necklace disappeared. Lana, I promise to get it back. Clark's extraordinary hearing allowed him to hear the conversation between the two and listen to Whitney's act of lying to Lana. Hearing the origin of Lana's necklace again, he hesitated for a moment, gritted his teeth and looked at David, with pleading eyes, and opened his mouth to say something. You are so kind, Clark. 7. David felt a little helpless. He had already guessed what he wanted to say and turned to leave. Although Thanos' physical super hearing is far inferior to that of Kryptonians, this distance is not a problem for him. 9. Needless to say, Clark was reluctant to give up the opportunity to speak freely with his crush that appeared in his dreams. But he decided to return the necklace to Lana. If the necklace is returned back, the emotional rift between Lana and Whitney will be eliminated, Whitney will get back with Lana, and Clark will lose his chance. It's too kind to the point of being too much, and it's worthy of being the future Superman. 7. David can only comment on this. Before the evening dance. Clark kept pestering David for the necklace. David was perfunctory. Why should the kryptonite be sent back? In addition, Clark has been asking him again and again and has been depositing some emotional points in the account. Arriving at the ball, Chloe, who did not have a dance partner, had to come with Pete to avoid embarrassment. 2. As for David and Clark, neither of them cared about it. Melodious music, and a bright dance floor in the middle. Pairs of young men and women in formal dresses met each other with smiles on their faces, dancing together slowly like birds. By the long dining table, David took a piece of the snack casually and tasted it. Look at that, the lover of your dreams is dancing with other men. He pointed at the most eye-catching couple in the center with his fork and chuckled to Clark, who was begging continuously next to him. Even so, you still want to return the necklace. Clark looked at the middle of the dance floor feeling as if his heart was sour after eating a lemon. Even though she was a little angry, Lana, who didn't know the truth, did not temporarily refuse Whitney's prom invitation under the premise of Whitney's lies and took all of his responsibilities to appease her. 1. Under the envious eyes of everyone, the two looked into each other's eyes affectionately, dancing slowly, they were the most dazzling couple on the dance floor. The person he liked dresses up for the ball, but not for him. He's just an inconspicuous transparent person standing on the edge of the ball. That's Lana's necklace, David. Clark couldn't hide his disappointment, but he still said. David was a little convinced by Clark, and he didn't want to make things worse for him who was poor at this time. Okay, I'll bring it to you tomorrow. Anyway, it's okay if you don't have a chance, Lana is not suitable for you. Clark's face brightened, and he wanted to ask why he said that. 2. Suddenly, the fire alarm was triggered on the ceiling above the school auditorium, and the water in the pipes poured down like torrential rain. Fuck. Where did the water come from? The fire alarm was triggered, where is the fire? With a scream, everyone in the auditorium was caught off guard and turned into drowned chickens, their delicate makeup was watered, and their hair which was waxed led to it falling down, and everyone was embarrassed and flustered. The dessert in his hand was soaked, and David looked at the wet clothes on his body, and his face became ugly. Is it an accident? Clark searched quickly, but he didn't see any fire, not even smoke. Is the fire alarm broken? Or was the master control outside tripped? Boom? At this moment, the door of the auditorium was kicked open suddenly. There was a clear sound of footsteps. Crackling sound. God said that everyone is born with original sin. In the silence of the audience, looking at this side, a thin figure with a hood came in. He raised his head and showed a cold face. The snake's dazzling electric current sent a burnt smell into the air. Although my target this time is not all of you, but... Under the horrified and puzzled eyes of everyone, he paused, and his hand loaded with a strong current capable of melting steel suddenly pressed down on a piece of wet ground. I don't mind helping you wash away your sins in advance. Comment. 7 Comments. Chapter 10. Look, the lover of your dreams is dancing with other men 10. Although I am a bit confused and curious about where I come from, this is undoubtedly my home. Hearing David's words, Clark was silent for a while, and his tone was unprecedentedly serious as if saying it to him seemed to be right. He said to himself, I'm sure of this, David, you, father, and mother are my family. I should do everything I can to cherish and protect those things, such as family affection, such as family members. Thank you for today's matter, brother. What are you doing with this thing? Clark, who had always been a bit introverted, expressed his feelings so bluntly, David was not used to it for a while and looked into the distance, trying to change the topic. 1. This astronomical telescope was created to help humans observe the space and vast stars of the universe. It is not for people to peek at their crushes in order to have some material for their dreams. David, I have never had that idea. Clark wanted to explain in a panic, he didn't have that idea. I understand, I understand. But David, who was so flustered by one sentence, didn't give him this chance at all, said a sentence that was obviously perfunctory, turned, and left. Anxiousness from Clark plus 7, embarrassment plus 4, 5. Today was different from the past. Many things happened one after another. The Kent couple and Clark had intense emotional ups and downs. David gained a lot of emotional points because of this, and the degree of integration has improved a little. Template fusion degree 81% rightward arrow 83%. 4. The further back the template is, the more difficult it is to improve the fusion degree. At the same time, a little fusion can bring stronger power than the previous one. 2. The morning wind blows through Smallville High School. Pairs of sneakers walked here and there in the corridor, the girls whispered and laughed shyly from time to time, and the boys raised their chins and boasted to their friends. The campus atmosphere is different from the past, and the faces of the students are full of excitement and anticipation. Tonight is the spring dance. You didn't come on the school bus with David again today, Clark. Pete asked Clark what happened. There are some things. I saved someone. He gave me a gift, but I couldn't accept it. Clark explained, I went to return that gift this morning. This morning, he didn't complain at all, and he listened obediently to his father. He went to Lex Manor, had a polite chat with Lex Luthor, and returned the pickup truck. 3. What gift? Pete was about to ask with interest. That necklace is very important to me. The faint voice came, and Lana, who was not far away, looked sad and ugly. 1. 
Whitney next to her was covered with a band-aid on his bruised nose and his forehead was red and swollen. He kept comforting his girlfriend and explained the incident in his own words. What happened to Whitney's face? Pete wondered. Maybe he was drunk and fell down. Clark explained awkwardly after glancing at David, who had a nonchalant expression. That necklace was carved from a meteorite left by my parents when they died in the meteorite rain when I was a child. My aunt left it to me to remind me of my parents, but you lost it. 3. In the bar, someone was drunk and deliberately looking for trouble. We fought with them, and after the fight, we found that the necklace disappeared. Lana, I promise to get it back. Clark's extraordinary hearing allowed him to hear the conversation between the two and listen to Whitney's act of lying to Lana. Hearing the origin of Lana's necklace again, he hesitated for a moment, gritted his teeth and looked at David, with pleading eyes, and opened his mouth to say something. You are so kind, Clark. 7. David felt a little helpless. He had already guessed what he wanted to say and turned to leave. Although Thanos' physical super hearing is far inferior to that of Kryptonians, this distance is not a problem for him. 9. Needless to say, Clark was reluctant to give up the opportunity to speak freely with his crush that appeared in his dreams. But he decided to return the necklace to Lana. If the necklace is returned back, the emotional rift between Lana and Whitney will be eliminated, Whitney will get back with Lana, and Clark will lose his chance. It's too kind to the point of being too much, and it's worthy of being the future Superman. 7. David can only comment on this. Before the evening dance. Clark kept pestering David for the necklace. David was perfunctory. Why should the kryptonite be sent back? In addition, Clark has been asking him again and again and has been depositing some emotional points in the account. Arriving at the ball, Chloe, who did not have a dance partner, had to come with Pete to avoid embarrassment. 2. As for David and Clark, neither of them cared about it. Melodious music, and a bright dance floor in the middle. Pairs of young men and women in formal dresses met each other with smiles on their faces, dancing together slowly like birds. By the long dining table, David took a piece of a snack casually and tasted it. Look at that, the lover of your dreams is dancing with other men. He pointed at the most eye-catching couple in the center with his fork and chuckled to Clark, who was begging continuously next to him. Even so, you still want to return the necklace. Clark looked at the middle of the dance floor feeling as if his heart was sour after eating a lemon. Even though she was a little angry, Lana, who didn't know the truth, did not temporarily refuse Whitney's prom invitation under the premise of Whitney's lies and took all of his responsibilities to appease her. 1. Under the envious eyes of everyone, the two looked into each other's eyes affectionately, dancing slowly, they were the most dazzling couple on the dance floor. The person he liked dresses up for the ball, but not for him. He's just an inconspicuous transparent person standing on the edge of the ball. That's Lana's necklace, David. Clark couldn't hide his disappointment, but he still said. David was a little convinced by Clark, and he didn't want to make things worse for him who was poor at this time. Okay, I'll bring it to you tomorrow. Anyway, it's okay if you don't have a chance, Lana is not suitable for you. Clark's face brightened, and he wanted to ask why he said that. 2. Suddenly, the fire alarm was triggered on the ceiling above the school auditorium, and the water in the pipes poured down like torrential rain. Fuck. Where did the water come from? The fire alarm was triggered, where is the fire? With a scream, everyone in the auditorium was caught off guard and turned into drowned chickens, their delicate makeup was watered, and their hair which was waxed led to it falling down, and everyone was embarrassed and flustered. The dessert in his hand was soaked, and David looked at the wet clothes on his body, and his face became ugly. Is it an accident? Clark searched quickly, but he didn't see any fire, not even smoke. Is the fire alarm broken? Or was the master control outside tripped? Boom. At this moment, the door of the auditorium was kicked open suddenly. There was a clear sound of footsteps. Crackling sound. God said that everyone is born with original sin. In the silence of the audience, looking at this side, a thin figure with a hood came in. He raised his head and showed a cold face. The snake's dazzling electric current sent a burnt smell into the air. Although my target this time is not all of you, but... Under the horrified and puzzled eyes of everyone, he paused, and his hand loaded with a strong current capable of melting steel suddenly pressed down on a piece of wet ground. I don't mind helping you wash away your sins in advance. Comment. 7 Comments. Chapter 11, Kill Him, Clark 5. First with the fire alarm going off and everyone getting drenched. Now a person with superpowers who can discharge electricity suddenly appears, it is not difficult to see that this is a premeditated attack. Looking at the man at the door, David raised his eyebrows. I have long suspected that the strange rumors circulating in this small town are not groundless. It is very likely that the radiation of kryptonite has caused some people to undergo genetic mutations. After all, the rich rely on technology, and the poor rely on mutations. 9. But he didn't expect a lunatic to appear out of nowhere and wanted to kill almost everyone in Smallville High School. Ah, the crowd shouted in horror. What kind of horror movie is this? Chloe and Pete trembled in fright. Anyone with a little common sense knows what the result of the terrible electric current coming into contact with the water is. 4. As long as that person touches the ground with his hands now, he can instantly kill hundreds of people here. 1. Raise your hand. Everyone seemed to see hell beckoning to them, and some boys wanted to rush forward to stop it. But only in vain. That thin, devil-like figure quickly pressed the hands of the discharge to the ground. In less than a second, with a distance of 20 or 30 meters, it is impossible for anyone to stop him in time. In an instant, David frowned and was about to move. Not to mention that there are people he knows well, saving these people is just a matter of effort. From other perspectives, if everyone here is killed and only Clark and I survive, it will be difficult not to attract the attention of those who are interested. David? No. However, someone was one step faster than him. Clark glanced at David who was in danger next to him, and his heart skipped a beat. His face changed drastically, and with a low cry of panic, he exploded at an unprecedented speed and disappeared in place. Crackling sound? In the blink of an eye, less than 10 centimeters remained, and the electric current in Jeremy's hand was about to touch the ground. But in the next moment, he was suddenly carried away by the waist. What happened? Where's that person? Some people cried out in fear and closed their eyes, imagining that the severe pain caused by the electric shock hadn't come, and touched their bodies. Opening eyes and looking at the door, the devil who wanted to murder them disappeared. Only a gust of cold wind came in from the door, making people shiver. Is it a hallucination? 
Could everything just now be a group hallucination? Some of the people who even ran towards Jeremy to stop him didn't see what happened, because Clark was going too fast, far beyond the limit of what the human eye could catch. They didn't even see a blurry afterimage. When something happened, he didn't look for Lana immediately. David slowly put down the snack in his hand, feeling a little relieved in his heart. It seems that you are still possible of being saved, and have not completely fallen, Clark. My brother didn't forget about a girl who has a boyfriend and treats other boys differently. But, how are you going to handle this, Clark? If this is not handled well, this matter may cause trouble for the family. David frowned and stepped back, his body swayed, and he disappeared in place. Everyone was terrified and looked around, wondering if this was a nasty prank. Where are David and Clark? Chloe patted her chest in fear, looking for the two who had disappeared. They were still here just now. Pete looked back and forth. Maybe when we were dancing, they felt bored and left. Chloe's eyes flashed with doubt. Not long before the incident, she saw that the two brothers were still there. Did she remember wrongly? Who are you? Why did you do that? On the way to the outskirts of the town, Clark asked angrily, throwing off the lunatic on his shoulder. Do you know that there are hundreds of lives there? Why am I here? Standing up from the ground, Jeremy shook his head, looked at his hands, and looked around. Didn't he want to kill those sinners right away? Why did he suddenly come to this suburban road? Who are you? He looked at Clark in front of him, knowing that this person brought him here. His body tensed up and he was extremely vigilant. He is indeed not the only special person in this world. It's you. I saw you at the bar. The next second, looking at Clark with an angry face, Jeremy recognized him, who almost had the same experience as him. You were almost regarded as a scarecrow by them. His face darkened, and there was a trace of the anger of being betrayed in his heart, and the electric current in his hand's sword. Under the dim street lights, it was extremely dazzling and frightening. 2. You want to protect them. Those boys in football team uniforms are no different from those who nailed him to the cross more than 10 years ago. Crackling? He growled and questioned, and the strong electric current severely knocked Clark into the air. You want to kill Whitney and the others? Absolutely not. Flying upside down 7 or 8 meters and landing on the ground, Clark got up as if nothing had happened, and extinguished the sparks on his clothes that were scalded by the electric current. After hearing these words, he knew his original goal and said anxiously, Even if Whitney is his rival in love, even if Whitney wants to tie him to a cross, he is not guilty of death. 5. God let me return to the world. I have a special mission to purify the sins. Jeremy was surprised and furious after the blow that easily turned people into charcoal did not hurt him at all. You are also favored by God, but you protect sinners. 1. A strong electric current erupted in his hands, and he looked like holding two small suns formed by the convergence of electric currents from a distance. Protecting sinners, you are not worthy of the ability God has given you. The burst of electricity hit the hard asphalt road on the ground, and the road burned red and melted, emitting an unpleasant smell, like the sulfur of hell. Scoff, go to hell. Jeremy stretched out his hands. The electric current is like a lightning tree growing rapidly in the air, splitting branches, accompanied by a thick current trunk, hitting Clark at a speed far exceeding the speed of sound. Before he could dodge in time, Clark bent his arms to form a shield in front of him to resist, and the clothes on his arms turned into fly ash in an instant. The strong electric current actually made him feel a bit of pain, and he cried out in pain. 1. Swish. The next moment, Clark dodged and came to Jeremy's side as fast as a bullet from the chamber. He felt that the time seemed to be extremely slowed down. He looked at his hands and pushed them out carefully. Boom. In the next second, time seemed to return to normal flow again. Jeremy's body seemed to be hit by a truck of more than 10 tons, and he fell heavily on the ground after drawing an arc of more than 10 meters. 2. Ah. Blood was bleeding from the corner of his mouth, his expression was painful, and he felt that he had broken at least a few ribs. I can't understand how someone would like to help someone who bullies him. Jeremy glared at Clark angrily, clutching his painful chest. Why did Clark help those people when he was bullied? It was a betrayal. Your palm. Clark saw that his hands looked like scars pierced by steel nails, his expression changed, and he gradually guessed what was going on. He remembered that when he chatted with Chloe during class during the day, Chloe talked about a strange thing in the town. People who used to be on the Smallville High School football team were electrocuted with high voltage current one after another recently. Are you the serial killer who killed them? Are you taking revenge on the football team? I'm going to kill you. Ignoring his words, Jeremy endured the severe pain and wanted to get up from the ground to attack him. Don't get up again, I don't want to kill you by mistake. Clark waved his hands in a panic. He had never fought with anyone before, and he was afraid that he would kill him by mistake. But Jeremy became even angrier when he heard it, even if it involved injuries, he staggered and tried to stand up. Since he wants to kill you, then kill him, Clark. 2. Just when Clark didn't know what to do, a cold voice came. Creator's thoughts. The board rider 69. Creation is hard, cheer me up. Don't forget to give 5 stars. Comment. 16 comments. Chapter 12, David, what's going on with your body? Clark looked at the figure he was very familiar with but logically shouldn't be here. With the sound of footsteps, David slowly walked out of the dark place under the street lamp. David, what are you talking about? Clark was puzzled and surprised by David who suddenly appeared. How did you come here? I took him out of town on purpose. In such a short period of time, even by car, it is impossible to get here from school so quickly. In addition, if I heard right my brother asked him to kill, I said kill him, Clark. Ignoring his question and glancing at Jeremy, David stood still and repeated with a serious expression. Anger from Jeremy plus 0.02, killing intent plus 0.02. Unexpectedly, this person can also provide emotional points, but it is pitifully few compared to Clark. If you don't do it, I'll do it. No, how can we kill people? Clark, who had been taught to be kind by Martha since he was a child, was taken aback. He couldn't believe what he was hearing and felt that his brother was a little strange. He killed more than one person, he's already a lunatic, a damned person, isn't he? David heard the previous words. And just by looking at the other party's appearance, one could tell that he was insane and wanted to kill hundreds of people without blinking an eye. We can't carry out lynchings. 
Clark's face was slightly ugly, his voice slowed down, and he proposed after refusing. According to the law, we can hand him over to the police station, and he will be sentenced and get the punishment he deserves. He does not deny that Jeremy should be sentenced to death, but no one should arbitrarily override the law and pretend to be superior. You let him see your face. David stopped talking nonsense and walked towards Jeremy who was barely starting to stand up from the ground. My face. Do you think ordinary prisons can hold him? When he comes out, will he take revenge on you? David is not worried about the rough and thick-skinned Clark, but revenge can also come from the people around him. Do it. If he follows you to our house. Clark's face changed when he mentioned his parents, and he suddenly remembered that he had forgotten something from the beginning to the end. He finally knew why his younger brother wanted to kill him as soon as he came up. Clark touched his face. In his anxiety, he forgot to hide his identity. Swish. Jeremy didn't have the slightest fear when facing Clark, but when David walked towards him with a cold look, he felt uneasy inexplicably, like the difference between a gentle elephant and a deadly lion. He could see from David's eyes as cold as death. David saying that he was going to kill him was by no means just talking. And the person who has seen his ability and has the confidence to come and kill him is an ordinary person? Crackling? The electric current shot out, and before Jeremy raised his hand suddenly, David disappeared in place without blinking. Thanos' ability does not have super speed, his speed is only close to the speed of sound. But that's enough. In order to avoid future troubles, your death sentence can only be brought forward. David, together with his voice, came to the startled Jeremy, pinching his neck with one hand and effortlessly lifting him up in the air like a chicken about to be slaughtered. As if being pinched around the neck by iron clamps, Jeremy couldn't breathe, his face was blue and purple, and his legs kicked in the air feebly. You, what kind of monster are you? Looking at the purple-skinned David, he widened his eyes in horror, struggled to remove the hold of David's palm with both hands, and tried his best to activate his ability under the fear of death. Let, let go of me. Crackling, the terrifying electric current hit David's hand, only turning half of his sleeve into fly ash, but it failed to shake the skin of his slender body like a body of steel. David, what do you look like? Clark was already hesitant when he thought about his parents on the one side and the murderer on the other. Seeing his brother's sudden change, he froze in shock and opened his mouth. How did you become like this? You're not the only one with secrets, Clark. Glancing at Clark, David replied. He could have snapped Jeremy's neck at any time, but hadn't done it on purpose, he had a guess. Clark quickly realized that this was not the important thing now. He left an afterimage on the spot, flew over, and grabbed his wrist. Put him down, brother. He hurried to stop David. But what surprised him was that no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't break David's hand. From the strength enough to make ordinary people let go, to the strength enough to bend the thick and thin steel rods the size of arms, the road under the feet is overwhelmed and cracked because of his exertion. David's body remained motionless like an immovable mountain. How did you do it? Are you really David? Surprised, Clark didn't dare to push harder, for fear of hurting his younger brother who suddenly made him feel extremely mysterious. Listen, David, you can't kill him. Once some lines are crossed, it's hard to get back. If father and mother were here, they wouldn't agree with you doing this. Then, his expression became serious, staring into his brother's eyes, and earnestly begged him put the guy down. Clark was very regretful at this time that he had not thought out his actions carefully, but he didn't want his younger brother to pay the price of murder to deal with the aftermath of this matter. Think about what our parents will think when they hear about this, David. One second, two seconds, the two looked at each other. Okay, I don't have to kill him. When it comes to his parents, David seems to have a loosened attitude, he put Jeremy down. However, I will take a measure just in case. Boom, after finishing speaking, he slapped Jeremy on the back of the head, and the blow didn't use too much force. The back of the head seemed to be hit hard by a baseball bat. Before he could react, Jeremy fell straight on the cold and hard road, closed his eyes, and remained motionless. You still killed him. Clark quickly checked the situation. Jeremy was still breathing, but he couldn't wake up no matter how many times he tried to wake him up. I turned him into a vegetable in order to prevent him from doing evil again. What? Hearing his brother's light words, Clark looked up in disbelief, David, you, are you trying to say that this is also a lynching, so this is not okay? David immediately raised his eyebrows and asked. I, Clark honestly thought so. It would be too cruel to beat a person into a vegetable to prevent him from retaliation. But remembering that this incident was caused by his own negligence, and his younger brother listened to his own words and did not kill the other party, would he still be able to reprimand his younger brother harshly? Clark was speechless, unable to speak. That's the end of this matter. Send him to any place where he can get treatment, and don't get involved with this matter. David glanced at the freshly baked vegetative person on the ground, turned, and left. Fear from Jeremy plus 0.04, anger plus 0.03, hatred plus 0.004. A steady stream of emotional points came into the account. Sure enough, although the vegetative person can't wake up, his brain is still conscious. This is more beneficial to him than killing Jeremy. I will put him at the entrance of the hospital in the town. Carrying Jeremy on his shoulders, Clark disappeared in place. After a second or two, David didn't go far, and he came back again, with a dull voice. Let's go back to school now, in case anyone finds us missing. David said, glancing at Clark, who could only see a vague movement track when he left just now. My strength and defense must be far superior to Clark at this time, but in terms of speed, Clark has a big advantage over me. He was a little curious in his heart. If he didn't use kryptonite, who would win if he fought with Clark right now? David, what's the matter with your body? After catching up with his younger brother, Clark had a complicated expression and wanted to ask a series of questions. David suddenly revealed too many things today, and he suddenly realized that he didn't seem to know his younger brother very well. Comment. 11 Comments. Chapter 13, I will take you to a safe place. Tall and thin like a praying mantis, with messy hair and round-rimmed glasses, Greg was usually treated as a freak by the school because he likes to collect insects. He had a cowardly personality and always hid when near people or looking at people. Not even the school bully wants to bully a guy who stays with dirty bugs all day. It was dark, and Gregor returned home sullenly in a black evening dress. He still didn't have the courage to go to the dance, just walked to school and came back. Recently, he accidentally forgot to close one of the containers where his precious insects stayed and who bit a red spot on his face while he was sleeping soundly at night. 1. He couldn't go to the ball like this and be seen by the crush in his dreams. Bright living room. Snapped. That's why you stay in the room all day, Greg. 
Seeing her son coming back, Greg's mother had a grim expression and threw a stack of photos and a few videotapes on the sofa. The photos of his classmate Lana were secretly taken from various angles, during the day, at night, and on the way home. It was like a pervert was taking photos, and the contents of the videotapes were the same as the photos. You can't break into my room without my permission. Gregor shouted angrily and hurriedly put away his treasured things in a panic. How can you do that? I'm in the same club as Lana's aunt, Neil. My son secretly takes pictures of her niece all day long. How do you want me to face her? Greco's mother said emotionally and quickly cried out. Two. I can't let you continue doing this. She was too negligent, respected her son's privacy too much, and didn't care too much about what he usually did, which caused her son to become like this. Candidly took pictures of female classmates, raised some bugs in the room all day, became more and more gloomy, and did not interact with people. I'm going to call Claremont Military Academy tomorrow morning. If this went on, she couldn't imagine what her son would become. No way, if I leave, what will happen to my bugs? Your strange habit should have changed long ago, and tomorrow I will throw away your collection full of bugs. Her shouting at him unceremoniously made him even angrier. Boom, he walked back to the room quickly and closed the door heavily. Greg looked at the butterflies, beetles, and spiders collected in those bottles and jars, the expression on his face became quiet, and he used an obsessive tone almost like treating a lover. You are so beautiful, no one's going to hurt you, I will take you to a safe place. The soil where the insects inhabit the bottle emits a beautiful light green fluorescence. This is a meteorite he discovered at night some time ago, crushed and added to each bottle, it glitters at night, making it more beautiful. 1. He also sent fluorescent butterflies as gifts to his crush. 2. I don't know what Lana's expression looked like when she received the gift, but it's a pity I didn't take a picture of it. After packing up the things, Greg once again showed that obsessed expression of insects. He packed all the bottles and cans in the house into the car and prepared to go to the abandoned tree house he went to when he was a child and put the bugs there. And he can also hide in it without being forced and sent to the military academy. Click. Greg, where are you going? The dilapidated car started, and Greg quickly drove onto the road, regardless of the yelling of his mother chasing after him, with a sneer at the corner of his mouth, he headed straight for the tree house when he was a child. But after driving not far, just out of the town, there was a bumpy mud hole on the road. Snapped, under the inertia, the bottles and jars containing many insects fell to the ground and shattered. Freed, insects carrying meteorite powder flew around in the small car, attacking Greg who was driving. No, don't bite me. Greg couldn't bear the sharp pain like a needle prick, and the steering wheel tilted and crashed into the grass beside the road. Bugs emitting green light were biting madly at him. 2. Ah. Greg's screams were heard far away in the uninhabited suburbs, and finally, his voice gradually dropped, and he fell into a coma. 1. In the school auditorium, after a fright that made everyone's legs go limp and had them trembling. Everyone was in a state of shock and drenched in water, and the dance could no longer continue. Someone called the police, and the town police quickly came to investigate. When they heard that the children were almost attacked, the parents of the students rushed to pick up the children and went home. The silent night was broken, and for a while, the school gate was almost blocked by ambulances, police cars, and parents' cars. David, Clark. Jonathan and Martha drove over after receiving the news, but they did not find any of the brothers. Chloe, did you see them? Martha asked the little girl who had impressed her by visiting her farm before. I don't know, Aunt Martha. Chloe, who was sitting on the steps of the school gate with her father and wrapped in a blanket, replied, they should be fine. Dad, Mom, we are here. Looking at his parents, Clark called out. Clark, where did you go? Chloe asked a question that had long puzzled her. I, David and I don't have a partner. Halfway through the dance, we found it boring, so we went outside to get some air. Clark and David walked over, and seeing Chloe and Pete's parents were present, Clark scratched the back of his head and said, he was not proficient in lying, and he was a little nervous, but no one gave it much thought, as a lot of people were freaked out tonight. Are you all right? Jonathan patted David on the shoulder after glancing at the newly changed clothes on his younger son and asked the two of them, I'm fine, father. David smiled at his concerned father, and Clark also replied that he was fine. Jonathan looked around, and his eyes secretly signaled his worried wife not to ask more questions. The couple knew that the attacker disappeared suddenly, and if nothing else happened, it should be their eldest son who did it. Moreover, the two sons have changed into the clothes that should have been properly folded in the closet at home, so something must have happened to them. Are you Clark Kent and David Kent? Yes, sir. Where were you when it happened? We. The town police came over as a matter of routine and made a record, and left the scene without suspicion Clark and David, who from other people's eyewitness testimony, are very different from the guy's skinny build. 3. Moreover, whether it was an attack or a prank has not yet been determined, so there is no need to make a fuss for the time being. Judging from the fact that the other party frightened the whole room to death and suddenly disappeared, it was probably the latter. Unfortunately, tonight should have been a wonderful night for the children, Jonathan. As long as the children are fine. Several parents chatted for a while, and everyone took the children home. So, it really wasn't a prank. At home, Jonathan and Martha sat on the sofa, looking at the two sons in front of them, and asked, A man who emits electricity. The couple looked at each other in surprise. Comment. Six comments. Chapter 14, I was born like this. He heard his two sons tell the story. After Clark took him away, David followed him worriedly. When he crossed the school fence, he accidentally cut his clothes. After that, he saw Clark had already incapacitated that man. You did a good job, Clark. You saved your brother and everyone. Jonathan said seriously after pondering. Although we want you to hide your abilities, it doesn't mean that you should stand by and watch when someone dies. We believe that there must be a reason for God to give you this ability. God. Clark was a little embarrassed and felt that his brother didn't need him at all. Clark, who was rescued, was even more instinctively awkward when he heard this sentence. What's wrong? Jonathan saw that Clark's expression was a bit wrong. It's nothing, it's just that the lunatic who wanted to kill everyone at the ball was also saying his ability was given by God. David laughed. The God I'm talking about doesn't refer to the one of heaven, not necessarily that one. Jonathan scratched his face. He and Martha were not faithful believers. By the way, you subdued that man in the end, what happened to him? He, he. Clark couldn't speak, how should he answer? Earlier, he asked his younger brother what was going on with his health, but his younger brother didn't answer, saying that he would talk about it when he got home, but he was asked to keep the secret first and not tell his parents for now. Clark, you will keep a secret for me, right? 
His brother's previous voice sounded in his ear. Of course, that was his answer. He was pushed down by Clark and fell to the ground and became a vegetable. In the room, David answered with a smile. What? Jonathan and Martha almost stood up from the sofa in surprise and quickly looked at Clark who had just praised him. Dad, Mom, you know, Clark has always been very strong. David continued with a smile, I don't think he can be blamed. Clark always felt that this sentence was so familiar, and he remembered that he was late for school a few days ago. What the group of two with Chloe said, you know, David has never cared much about me. Clark, is that true? Promising to keep a secret, what else could Clark say? He just gritted his teeth and affirmed. Clark, starting tomorrow, you will secretly practice controlling your power on the farm. Jonathan stood up suddenly, his expression became serious, and he pressed his son's shoulder worriedly. What if you use a little more strength next time to kill someone by mistake? Okay, okay. Facing the old father's worried and tough words, Clark couldn't speak, so he could only nod. Jonathan and Martha are kind but not pedantic, and Clark is just careless. The main thing is that a murderer who wanted to massacre the students should have been sentenced to death. So I just solemnly and repeatedly told Clark to practice controlling his strength, and prepare to supervise from tomorrow. You're so despicable, David. In the warehouse, he climbed up to the attic on the second floor, and just got rid of his parents nagging. Clark, who had been blamed, couldn't help but be full of resentment. And his younger brother is still very vengeful. It's not bad for you to practice more strength. David looked at the starry sky, through the window in the distance with folded arms and glanced at him. Look at the way you faced that guy today, like a guy who is about to help a hedgehog across the road. No strength, no technique, no power. I have always been able to control my strength at the level of ordinary people. This is true, otherwise, there would have been countless accidents around Clark over the years. But what if the opponent's strength exceeds ordinary people and you need to deal with it? How can there be so many people with superpowers that I need to deal with? Clark only felt that David was deliberately using the problem to find something for him to do. The town they lived in was so small, he never caused trouble, so it was impossible for him to be particularly unlucky, and things all related to superpowers would not come to him every time. David didn't know what to say when he heard this sentence. The meteorite rain brought by Clark gave birth to no less than seven or eight people with superpowers who gave birth to strange stories in the town. As for the rest, who knows how many there are. David, can you tell me about your body now? Clark asked in a low voice, looking around. Could you do it earlier, or just recently? Just now, David had to change his clothes and go back to school, so as not to be found out. Now that they have arrived home, David has no reason to refuse. I was born like this. David replied. Now that he has shown his ability in front of Clark, he will no longer hide anything about this physique. Birth. Clark's eyes widened. He couldn't believe it. Are you sure? Why? You can't accept that you have exposed your power casually for more than ten years, while I have hidden it very well. He glanced at Clark and asked back. To be honest, it's a bit. Clark had mixed emotions. Before he grew up, he also felt that this was a gift from God, that he was stronger than anyone else. Thinking of the time when I was happy about it when I was a child, David, who is also naturally in doubt, watched coldly from the side. He felt, extremely ashamed. Are you sure? I mean, how do you know you were born like this? Memory. David nodded his head. In fact, few people know that the mad titan Thanos who frightened the entire universe had a dream of becoming a scientist when he was a child, and he achieved it when he grew up. The titan star he lived in since he was a child has advanced technology, but there are no weapons or murders, and everything is in harmony. Until the birth of Thanos, who was a mutant in the Eternals he embarked on a scientific path to explore his own differences. The method of inquiry was dissection, from dissecting small animals to dissecting classmates and even dissecting the biological mother who gave birth to him. It can be said that Thanos also has a super brain. After he left the titan star, he became the number two character on a space pirate ship and started his journey to become a dark overlord based on his own technological knowledge. David said to Clark that he learned martial arts on TV, which was not him lying. Really just by looking at it. You have to keep this a secret for me, Clark. After you used this to make me bear the consequences of turning a person into a vegetable just now. Clark asked with some resentment. Clark, think about how I look after using my power. Do you want our parents to worry? David said. He was going to wait for Jonathan and Martha to see some more abnormal people on Earth before speaking about it when their ability to accept it would be much stronger. And Clark is enough to worry them all day long. Let them temporarily have a normal son who they don't have to worry about in comparison. When it came to his parents, Clark's mood softened. By the way, where did you learn how to knock people into vegetative states? Don't tell me it's also on TV. When he mentioned this question, his tone became very serious again, with worry in his eyes. The method of precisely controlling the force to slap a person on the back of the head can turn him into a vegetative state, which is not available on TV, and it is even more impossible to master it through empty training. It must be practiced many times. In other words, there may be more than one person who was turned into a vegetable by his brother. Gotham is not far from the metropolis. David turned and walked downstairs, leaving a sentence. I used to go there occasionally when the school was on long holidays. You know what the environment is like there. The folk customs of Gotham are simple, and there are wicked people everywhere. Nine out of ten may be shot for injustice, and half of them may have been released several times from jail. It is not difficult to find some villains who deserve to be shot a hundred times, and it is not difficult to practice this trick, and he has learned it after a few times. I've long been tired of those plots where superheroes are put in prison, and then supervillains will run out countless times. He decided to do something for the world, such as creating some vegetative people, providing him with some emotional points, by the way, letting this world be a little cleaner in the future. Gotham. The name of this place seems to have a terrifying and depraved demonic nature. Hearing that his brother had been to the city, Clark was startled for a moment, and his face changed drastically. Comment. 7 Comments. Chapter 15, Worried Clark. The sky was as blue as velvet, with bright sunshine illuminating the campus while a soothing spring breeze rustled the cherry blossom branches. Cherry blossom petals danced in the air, creating a beautiful display of colors. Students bustled around, their arms laden with books, gathering in small groups to chat. 3. David and his companions strolled through the school, with Clark by his side wearing a worried expression. He occasionally glanced at David, concerned about his younger brother. 
Just as parents are always afraid that their children will learn bad things, as an older brother, Clark felt responsible for guiding David and ensuring he didn't lose his innate kindness or succumb to darkness, especially considering David possessed extraordinary powers. Clark had pondered this question the previous night, contemplating how to steer David away from the brink of becoming arrogant and bad morally. 1. Choosing to beat people into a vegetative state without any remorse or guilt is no longer a normal moral inclination, Clark thought to himself. 8. He felt that David's thoughts and understanding of the world were teetering dangerously close to the edge of a cliff. Taking one more step would lead to moral corruption and an arbitrary sense of superiority over others which may lead him to do bad things. David, however, was at a loss for words when he realized Clark's concern and his eager attempt to act as his life mentor. Worry from Clark plus 6, plus 5, plus 7, 1. However, since yesterday, Clark has been showering him with emotional points, and it seems that he has been thinking about him since yesterday. At this speed, I may soon be able to complete the complete integration and start the next template. At this rate, I might soon achieve complete integration and move on to the next template, David thought, pleasantly surprised by the unexpected progress. 5. He wondered what the next template held in store. Would it be weaker, comparable to the Thanos template, or even stronger? 4. As they entered the school building, Pete couldn't help but whisper narcissistically, why is everyone staring at us? The students in the corridor occasionally cast curious and surprised glances at their group. Have they finally realized that being short doesn't hinder my charm? Pete chuckled. 1. Forget it, Pete, Chloe replied, raising her head from her newspaper. They're clearly looking at Clark and David, particularly David. She also wondered why so many people were paying attention to the two. Although David lacked Clark's super hearing, his heightened senses didn't make it difficult to grasp the cause of the commotion through snippets of whispered conversations. As the locals often say, in Smallville, a town that is not much bigger than a bottle cap, something will spread quickly. For instance, someone witnessed a group of high school jocks attempting to bully Clark, only to be swiftly dealt with by David. A look of helplessness flashed across Clark's face. He overheard the rumors too. The older brother was helpless and was pushed to the ground and bullied. The younger brother rescued him effortlessly teaching the bullies a lesson. Lana seems to be headed our way, Clark. Pete nudged his good friend. Better wipe that frown off your face. Pete's gesture was so obvious seeing Lana, with her beautiful and gentle appearance and black hair, approaching at the end of the corridor, Clark cleared his throat, cursed silently, and discreetly straightened his posture. Lana looked sad, likely from a fight with her boyfriend, and likely hurried over to apologize to Clark, so her voice was soft and hoarse after crying. I'm sorry, Clark. I didn't realize Whitney would be so foolish as to harass you only based on a few words from me. Upon hearing the rumors circulating on campus, Lana immediately confronted Whitney, hoping for a denial. However, her boyfriend, who was ashamed, angrily admitted to confronting Clark because of Lana's different attitude towards Clark. I'm actually fine, Lana, Clark reassured her with a smile. Don't blame Whitney. 8. I can't accept that he lied to me. It's evident that he went after you willingly and lost the necklace I gave him, Lana said, her sadness deepening. But he told me that someone at the bar provoked him while he was intoxicated. I think I need to reconsider my relationship with Whitney. 4. Looking at Lana's sad and mournful expression Clark, who had never encountered such a situation before, scratched the back of his head, flustered and didn't know how to comfort her. He just kept talking back and forth and made excuses to tell Lana not to cry. I ran into Whitney at the bar, maybe he was drunk and acted so irrationally. 5. Clark, do you want to hear what you're saying? As long as the mood of the person you have a crush on improves, you excuse your rival? David shook his head secretly, feeling that he was hopeless. Even without kryptonite, it was impossible for Clark to get together with the cheerleader according to his current personality. 1. David. Clark winked at David, reminding him to return the meteorite necklace to Lana as promised. If the necklace that was lost is recovered, maybe Lana could stop being sad. David, I'm sorry. Thinking of something, Lana wiped away her tears, turned her head, and said seriously to David. Because of me, Whitney also caused you trouble. It's all right, David calmly replied, not considering it a burden. He retrieved the necklace from his pocket and handed it to Lana. This is your necklace. Clark found it that day and asked me to keep it safe. 1. Clark had wanted to give Lana the necklace himself. However, he believed it would be best if David handed it over, as he feared another clumsy accident that would lead to embarrassment. 5. My necklace. After receiving the necklace, Lana had a surprise in her eyes and a smile on her tear-stained face. Thank you, David, and Clark. 1. Lana seemed to have misunderstood something. If Clark had found the necklace, why didn't he return it to her personally? Lana thought that David was intentionally trying to set her up with his brother, Clark. Upon handing over the necklace, David maintained a reserved attitude, unlike others on campus. He glanced at Lana and then discreetly shifted his gaze, leaving space for Clark to engage in conversation with her. For some reason, Lana found herself stealing glances at David more frequently. 33. Like Clark, he didn't actively participate in sports. She occasionally spotted him sitting alone in a corner of the campus, engrossed in a book. He was tall but didn't have any visible muscles, how had he managed to defeat Whitney and his teammates? 1. Clark, who had been closely observing Lana, then shifted his gaze towards his brother. An unsettling premonition gripped his heart. 4. Lana. Whitney, filled with anger and regret, realized his mistake, and raced after her, desperate to salvage their relationship. David, Clark, I'm going ahead, Lana said, her expression changing. She bid farewell to Chloe and Pete and hurriedly departed, not wanting to encounter Whitney at that moment. Whitney, as he rushed past, cast an unnatural glance at David, his eyes filled with shame and anger. David paid little attention to his reaction. In a secluded corner near the staircase, a figure observed everything with detached indifference. Its eyes flickered between David and Clark, akin to those of a cold-blooded creature. 10. Creator's Thoughts. The Board Rider 69. Creation is hard, cheer me up. Don't forget to give 5 stars. Comment. 15 comments. Chapter 16, I will be the only one claiming the spouse in the end. Someone seems to be watching them, as if David felt something. He looked in that direction, and several others also turned their heads to look. A man in a black jacket with blonde hair combed back had a cold face, standing there like an indifferent hunter at the top of the food chain. He didn't seem to put the four people in his eyes at all, and he turned in the direction Lana left. That cool-looking guy just now was Greg. After looking for several seconds, Pete turned his head and said with a look of astonishment. It took me a few seconds to recognize him, Chloe responded, looking quite shocked. 
She had made an appointment with Greg in the past and published some articles on the popular science of insects with his help, in the torch, as the editor. But the version of Greg, whom she had been in little contact with before, the one who didn't dare to make eye contact or speak with girls, was looking like a completely different person. Not only did he remove his glasses and changed his dressing style, but his whole personality seems to have been changed. He kind of makes me uncomfortable, said Chloe rubbing the sides of her arms. It was not embarrassment, not shyness, more like an instinct, very uncomfortable, maybe with the example of a deer encountering a hyena, the body instinctively warning to stay away. David and Clark didn't feel like Chloe at all, which may be because they had no danger. The four of them continued chatting and walked toward the classroom. Chloe read through the newspaper and mentioned another strange thing she read in it to the group. Look at this, Jeremy Creek, who was also a student in our high school more than a decade ago, and was found unconscious after the meteor shower, was said to be disappeared in the state hospital after a medical equipment accident, was found in front of the Smallville hospital yesterday. Sounds like someone stole a coma patient from the state hospital and dropped him at the door of our hospital. Pete said, thinking about what good it would do. David and Clark looked at each other, and the latter was a little nervous. I'm going to post it on my weird wall. Chloe had a wall of weird in the event editorial department assigned to her by the school, which recorded all kinds of weird things. Hey, it's nothing unusual. Clark said, speaking with a guilty conscience. What's unusual is that this vegetative person was not much noticed before. After this incident, a doctor also found that he didn't seem to have aged at all for more than 10 years. The reason is listed to be unknown. While speaking, she came to the editorial office and opened the storage room inside, taping the newspaper to the wall. The whole wall was plastered with similar newspapers and debris, full of strange events caused by meteorites. There was also a magazine cover on it. It's Lana. Clark's eyes flashed with sadness. On the cover was the picture of Lana as a child, wearing a cute pink princess dress, holding a fairy wand, dressed like she is waiting for her parents to take her to the amusement park. But as if she had just experienced a disaster, her body was dirty, and her expression was sad and crying. Magazine title, Angel of Heartbreak After Meteor Shower. The meteorite shower more than 10 years ago caused a disaster, many people lost their lives, and Lana's parents were among them. It was because of this incident that Clark noticed Lana, and after peeping on her many times, he had a crush on Lana. Insects, arthropods among invertebrates, are the most numerous animal groups on our planet, such as cockroaches, ants, bees. Students, don't look down on these small animals. Insects have great potential and can easily and can do many things that are unimaginable to us humans. But most of them are short-lived like meteors, and they can't survive a summer, t slash n. This is a pretty dark dialogue for people in Smallville lol. Therefore, once an insect becomes an adult, driven by a strong genetic instinct, it will quickly start looking for a mate and courtship, do everything possible to defeat competitors, and give birth to offspring. A day of school life passed by in the blink of an eye, ending after a boring biology class. When school was over in the afternoon, there were signs of dusk on the horizon, and David and Clark walked out of the school gate. At the school gate, Greg, who was originally cold at noon, was smiling and talking to the tired Lana. Lana, you look like you're in a bad mood. I heard about a nice coffee shop in the town, would you like to go together? I want you to help me with my literature report, said Greg, shaking the homework in his hands. Greg, I told you at noon that although I really like the butterfly you gave me, I am not ready to accept any invitations for the time being, can you let me have some peace for a while? Whitney was anxious to get his girlfriend back together and disturbed her the whole time on campus, but Lana formally proposed to separate for a while. Having just experienced a failed relationship, she was exhausted physically and mentally at this time. Okay, okay. The smile on Greg's face became a little stiff. Lana nodded to David and Clark as a greeting, then turned and left with books in her arms, looking tired. Even though Greg changed his style and appearance, he still doesn't know how to deal with girls. Chloe shook her head, playing with her taste. Dude, I think what you should do right now definitely does not to standing here, Pete said, patting Clark on the shoulder and winking. What a rare opportunity. David. Clark's eyes lit up in response, and he said embarrassedly, help me tell the parents that I will come back a bit late. David crossed his arms, with an unsurprised expression, and walked around him. On the way home with the girls, if you encounter some gangsters, I advise you to protect yourself first, Clark. Lana had put back on the kryptonite necklace. If something really happens and someone jumps out to tease Lana, in this bloody plot Clark may be the first one to fall to the ground as soon as he tries fighting. It would be a joke if the future Superman, the leader of the Justice League, wanted to be a hero in high school and was beaten to death in an alley by gangsters. I know. Already getting used to his younger brother's sneering reminders, Clark ran up to chase Lana helplessly. David and the two got on the school bus and left. If you don't want to be stuffed in the trash can, insect freak. Greg watched indifferently at the school gate as Clark chased Lana away, causing one to wonder what he was thinking. Suddenly someone patted his shoulder heavily, threatening in a low voice. Just stay away from my girlfriend. Saying a threatening sentence, Whitney wanted to catch up and wanted to warn Clark again. But suddenly a strong hand grabbed his shoulder, preventing him from moving forward. Failed competitors, it's better to have the awareness of failure. Greg's hand was like a hydraulic machine, pinching Whitney's bones and rattling them, causing a burst of pain. He was feeling painful and angry and turned around to hit the Greg's face with an elbow. Let go of me. You're already out, Whitney. The cold words, like a cold-blooded creature without emotion, moving one step ahead of him, Greg swung back. Whitney was knocked down like a thrown-down weightless stuffed toy, in the trash can at the school gate, and passed out in embarrassment and anger. Regardless of the panic of others, Greg looked expressionlessly at Clark who was chasing up Lana trying to chat with her, and then glanced at the school bus driving away. I will be the only one claiming the spouse in the end. He turned and walked away. Creator's thoughts. The board rider 69. Creation is hard. Cheer me up. Don't forget to give 5 stars. Comment. 4 comments. Chapter 17. The bed in my room needs to be repaired. David, Clark, today we are planning to go and sell fruit at the market on the outskirts of the town, and you will help us load the truck later. During the rare holiday, his mother called out from downstairs. Stepping down the wooden stairs, David responded to his mother, and David casually thought about what happened yesterday as he went downstairs. Greg, whose persona has changed drastically at school, also seems to have a genetic mutation. His heartbeat is much slower than ordinary people. However, there are quite a few genetically mutated people in Smallville, as long as you don't provoke him, he doesn't care. 
Sitting at the table, Jonathan was putting milk into the cereal and ate breakfast. David, who doesn't like cereal, ate baked bread with smearing it with blueberry jam with a knife. Clark, seeing that the eldest son hadn't come down yet, Martha yelled upstairs again. Boom, there was a dull sound upstairs, accompanied by the sound of breaking wood. Why did Clark get angry? Jonathan asked after being stunned. It sounded like something had been destroyed by Clark. Are you all right, Clark? Knowing that her husband was only joking, Martha called out upstairs. I'm fine, Ma, I'll be down right away, it's just. From upstairs, Clark's voice sounded a little flustered. After a while, he was sitting at the dining table, with an expression of seeing a ghost, like a child who got into trouble and said embarrassedly, The bed in my room needs to be repaired. Your bed is broken? What's going on? Jonathan's eyes were full of doubts. Puberty is the time when a person's body develops rapidly. Could it be that his son's strength had increased again, and he could no longer control his strength? I woke up just now and found myself floating in midair. After being frightened, I fell and broke the foot of the bed. Clark frowned, with a slightly resistant expression. How could a normal person fly, indicating he had a different ability from ordinary people, which made him feel unhappy, reminding him once again that he is an alien and he doesn't belong to this family? And will something more uncontrollable happen to him next? Floating. From super strength, and super defense, to super speed. Although Martha and Jonathan already have some experience in this, they still couldn't help but be surprised. Since ancient times, flying has always been the dream of human beings. Martha who was very attentive, sensed his emotions, grabbed her son's hand, and said softly, Clark, no matter how many unique talents you have, you are our son. Since it is your innate ability, you can master it, son. Jonathan's tone was serious, trying to give his son confidence, don't be afraid, you are not the only one who can fly in the world, countless birds are also enjoying the sky freely. The young Superman seemed to be awakening the ability to fly, David said with some surprise, I thought it was something else. What? Clark couldn't help asking, it's nothing. When I got up, I heard some voices from the next door, like someone talking in sleep and kept whispering someone's name. David swallowed the bread in his mouth, and his casual tone made Clark at the table greatly embarrassed. Because he was also flying in the dream before waking up, flying all the way to Lana's house, on her bed, floating and admiring Lana's beautiful sleeping posture. He swore that he hadn't done anything before being woken up, but the dream was unavoidably charming. It must have been the rare long chat with Lana on the way home from school yesterday, trying to comfort her, that night he dreamed of her. You were actually whispering someone's name aloud. Martha wondered, Clark, did you have a nightmare? She remembered the incident where Clark was almost beaten by Whitney. It's nothing, mother. It's getting late, let's finish our breakfast and load the truck to the market. Clark blushed, coughed twice on the milk he was drinking, and changed the subject guiltily. Otherwise, we won't be able to get a good spot. After eating, Clark and David came to the gate of the farm, and Clark and David moved boxes of fruit out of the warehouse. The fruit weighing tens of kgs was as light as a feather in Clark's hands, and he quickly moved box after box onto the pickup truck effortlessly. But when he looked back, he saw that David had only put the second box on the car when he had moved seven or eight boxes, leisurely working like on an outing. Can you hurry a bit? He couldn't help but say to him, Clark, your brother is not as strong as you, so don't rush him. Martha reprimanded lightly, he has no strength. Clark opened his mouth, remembering when he couldn't shake off David's hand with both his hands before, although there may be reasons such as he didn't dare to use his full strength. For a long time, he had almost assumed the role of a humanoid tractor, railing piling machine, and plow machine on the family farm, saving a lot of expenses for the farm. Clark didn't feel anything, he was happy to share the burden of his parents who were gradually growing old. But after discovering that David was also very powerful, he was very upset when he thought about when David was watching leisurely by the side when he was working in the past. Especially now that he saw that David was still comfortably slacking off. The most annoying thing is that he still couldn't tell his parents. Resentfulness from Clark plus four, plus three. David was unmoved by Clark's resentful gaze, and only after Clark moved seven or eight boxes did he load the last box of fruit into the car. He got into the pickup truck. It's a bit crowded in here. It's not convenient for father to drive. You can sit in the back, Clark. David waved his hand just as Clark was about to come up after finishing his work. There was only one row of seats at the front of the pickup truck, just right for three people, but it felt a bit crowded for four people. Why not you? Clark, who was stopped, widened his eyes. It's not good for the older brother to grab the younger brother's seat. David glanced at him with a puzzled tone. You. Seeing him with that annoying expression, he couldn't see anything resembling younger brother at all. Clark gritted his teeth and took a deep breath, then turned his head and walked helplessly to the back. Jonathan and Martha were a little puzzled. Occasionally in the past, Clark would go and sit in the back first, fearing that David would fall from behind and get hurt. What's the matter today? The two brothers are fighting. Twisting the key and the start of the truck. Behind the truck, the future Superman Clark sat in the back of the truck holding a basket of apples, feeling slightly depressed. Arriving at the bazaar, the Kent family found a spot close to the center, set up a tent, and placed boxes full of sweet and attractive fresh fruits. Clark pressed the nail hard into the stake with his thumb, working as the hammer this time, and hung a sign saying fresh fruit from Kent's farm. You started using your abilities secretly like this, looks like you're not afraid of being seen. Sitting in the booth, David looked up. This is a good place for an outing in the outskirts. A temporary market made up of tents was created for this reason. On the green grassland, there were stalls of flowers, hot dogs, fruits, people were coming and going, making the atmosphere very lively. I'm not as good as you in terms of hiding abilities. Clark, who had observed that no one was paying attention before using his abilities secretly, sat down next to him and looked at the booth with him, and sarcastically said, For so many years, our parents, and I didn't find out. Clark, I didn't expect to see you here. Suddenly, a clear voice with a smile called out. The two looked up, and David saw a bald head that was being reflected like a light bulb in the sun. Luther. Creator's Thoughts. The Board Rider 69. Creation is hard. Cheer me up. Don't forget to review 5 stars. Comment. 9 Comments. Chapter 18. A Seed of Opportunity. Luthor. Call me Lex. You saved my life, Clark. Lex Luthor was wearing an expensive silver gray suit. A bit of the frivolity and arrogance of being the heir to Luthor Corp remained between his brows. At this time, he was not the cold and steady billionaire and careerist of the future. 1. Even if you reject my gift, I don't want you to be too unreasonable. Clark said with a gentle smile. Why are you here, Lex? 
He had some recognition for Lex who gave him a pickup truck as a thank you gift. Why can't I be here? Do you think I would spend all day in nightclubs, buying luxury, buying sports cars, spending money, and partying all day long? Lex Luthor asked humorously. Don't be funny, Clark. I was just going out for a walk after feeling a little depressed. An heir to a billionaire will also go out for a walk in the countryside like ordinary people, and that too to the market to buy some hot dogs and fruits to eat, to let himself feel better. David raised his eyebrows and said lightly. 1. The vast green golf course in the metropolis is not enough to relieve your boredom. Walking in the countryside, meeting by chance, and talking happily again, how pleasant it is. Clark faintly felt that his younger brother didn't like Lex Luthor very much, so he was a little puzzled. But for Luthor, besides a little affection, he also felt a little guilty. The last time he went to Luthor Manor to return the pickup, he chatted with Lex Luthor for a bit of time. Talking about Lex Luthor's bald head, he said that it was because more than ten years ago, one day his father took him here to Smallville to inspect the fertilizer factory, and they had encountered the meteorite shower, and after being affected by the radiation from the meteorite shower, he lost all his hair. 9. Although because of this, I was looked down upon by my father, teased by my classmates, and thought to be a freak, it didn't matter to me. It also taught me a lot. For example, being alone is more helpful for thinking. Cattle and sheep are in groups, and beasts often walk alone. 2. Clark still remembered Luthor's words, although he said it in an arrogant and contemptuous manner. His expression was obviously not good at the time. This is, my brother, David. Clark introduced, your brother, hello, David. Luther looked at David secretly, greeted him, and sighed with gloom on his face. The golf club at Metropolis is nice, but I don't want to go back there just yet. Until I'm out of the laughing stock. What's the matter, Lex? My father thinks that the offspring of lions should be brave. He said with a self-deprecating tone. Maybe it's because I haven't made the results that he can see at my age, so I was exiled to this small town to manage the fertilizer factory in the town. Luthor Corp's assets are all over the United States, especially Metropolis. The Luthor Corp can be seen in almost every aspect of clothing, housing, and transportation. Cultivating the heirs of the group should not be this method of training. Transferring away from the core of the group with huge affairs, and letting him manage a small chemical fertilizer factory in a remote town. Many people in the upper class of the Metropolis have heard how rich the Luthor family was from childhood to adulthood. His father spent enough money to buy a few newspapers to keep his scandal from being published in the newspapers and jailed for those deeds. Now he was disappointed to realize that Lex hadn't lived up to his expectations, that shrewd and cold-blooded old bat, Lionel Luthor finally gave up on him. 2. As long as you manage the fertilizer plant well, your father may let you go back sooner or later. Luthor mentioned the exile from his father who neglected him since he was a child. Clark's expression moved slightly, and he expressed comfort. Maybe, but I think it's better to open up a new business than to run the fertilizer factory with obvious lost potential. Luthor adjusted his mood and smiled. Today's car glass originated from a failed chemical experiment, and Coca-Cola, which spread around the world, was traced to be made by a physician who wanted to make a syrup to relieve headaches. Clark, David, do you know how many huge business opportunities have started with small inconspicuous things, like a seed buried in the soil, only to be discovered and watered and nurtured by someone with a heart, and then it grows into a towering tree that countless people look up to? He talked to the two with eloquence, as if he was telling his ambitions and dreams with his target. So, you came to the suburbs to find seeds. Clark joked. Have you found that seed? Luther. David also thought of something and said slowly. Not yet, but no matter what you are looking for, what you need most is patience, isn't it? When their eyes met, Luther chuckled gracefully. He had to say, aside from those little-known scandals, Luthor received a good family education since he was a child. They had a great conversation. Oh, really? David's eyes flashed indifference. He felt that Luthor thought he had found the seed and was now in the process of digging it. That seed was the one who was hit head-on by an out-of-control sports car traveling at more than 200 kilometers per hour, smashed the concrete railing of the bridge, and rushed down the river without any damage to save him Clark. Today may be the beginning of the digging of the seed. Clark, David, you have to go back and get some more fruit. Jonathan and Martha, who had just negotiated a deal, came back with joy on their faces. A customer, who is going to have a party has taken a fancy to our fresh fruit, and the fruit we brought is not enough. David got up, and Clark introduced Luther to his parents. Mr. Kent, Mrs. Kent, nice to meet you. Lex Luthor stretched out his hand warmly. Jonathan paused, shook his hand politely, then turned around and said to his two sons, Hurry up, don't keep customers waiting. It seemed that he didn't want to talk to Lex Luthor at all. Luther still maintained a smile showing white teeth on his face, but it seemed to be a little stiff. Okay, father. David smiled, agreed with Clark, and left. Father doesn't seem to like Lex Luthor. On the way out of the market, Clark wondered. Father's dislike for the Luther family has been around for a long time. Before Luthor Corp used various means to acquire a large amount of land and establish the fertilizer factory, the area close to the fertilizer factory and the river flowing through the town were still there. It hadn't turned green yet, grass still grew by the river, and the soil wasn't gray and black and smelly. David sneered. Now, an indelible scar has appeared on the town's map. But that's not Lex's fault. Clark felt that Lex, who couldn't even have been in elementary school at the time, couldn't be involved. Hi, Clark, David. The two were chatting and were about to drive away from the market when they suddenly bumped into Chloe and Pete who were also coming for an outing. They waved happily and walked up. Who doesn't like to go out for a walk in spring, when the sun is shining and the air is so fresh? 1. Chloe took a deep breath, feeling very happy. Several people chatted for a while, and Pete seemed to suddenly think of something. By the way, did you see Greg? No, what's the matter? You may not believe it. Yesterday, Greg knocked Whitney unconscious at the school gate and sent him to the hospital. The police came to investigate and found that Greg's mother had been missing for a while. She was killed at home, her body was wrapped in something like a spider web, and Greg disappeared. He looked around, lowered his voice, and the atmosphere suddenly became weird. You mean, Greg killed his mother? Clark frowned, unable to believe it. Would someone kill their own mother? Generally speaking, it's impossible. The police are also skeptical. Chloe spread her hands, maybe his persona changed drastically because of some mental illness, so it's no longer impossible. Anyway, if you run into Greg, you must be careful. Pete reminded seriously, a guy who might have killed his own mother can do anything. I will be careful with Clark. 
David nodded thoughtfully. Is it possible that kryptonite can cause genetic mutations and also change people's temperament? 7. By the way, where is your stall? We happen to be free, so we're going to help. Chloe squinted and smiled. She and Pete used to go to the Kent farm to play, and they knew the Kent family very well. Thank you, Chloe, Pete. After pointing them to the booth, David and Clark started the pickup and drove on the road. On the deserted suburban road, Clark drove worriedly, without looking ahead. Can you take a look at the road, Clark? David frowned, if the car overturns, we won't be hurt, but our parents will have to pay for damages. If, I mean, if Greg really is crazy, Clark turned his head worried. Will Lana be in danger? Look out. David glanced ahead and suddenly reached out to grab the steering wheel. Ahead on the roadside in front of them, a cold and gloomy figure, from the top of the big tree by the roadside, at an abnormal speed, like a praying mantis pouncing on its prey, spanned several meters in an instant, and rushed towards the truck with great momentum. 1. Creator's Thoughts. The Board Rider 69. Creation is hard. Cheer me up. Don't forget to review 5 stars. Comment. 7 Comments. Chapter 19. What Bit You? 4. GCHH. On the deserted suburban road, the sound of violent tire friction could be heard far away. 1. There was a faint smell of burnt rubber, and the old red pickup suddenly drifted and turned around, trying to avoid the figure rushing from a higher altitude. In midair, the figure burst out with incredible strength from the waist, forcibly twisting its body, trying to grab the roof of the car with its five fingers, but it only brushed the side and still missed. Hearing the harsh metal friction sound above the head, the pickup slid off the road, Clark hit the brakes and they got out. The figure who made the act that is tantamount to suicide for ordinary people did not fall to the point of death, just like a flexible flea that easily flipped its body and landed firmly. Greg, in a black leather jacket, with blonde hair on the back, and a familiar side face, Clark recognized the guy before he fully face him, and exclaimed, Why did you attack us? Seeing Greg's abnormal movements, there was a bad premonition in his heart, and he asked, I heard something happened to your mother, did you have something to do with it? She hindered me, you will be next. Gregor turned around slowly, as if he had a plan in his mind, thinking himself like a spider who bound the prey by a spider web and cannot escape, not in a hurry to attack again, and let out a sneer. Are you crazy? Clark couldn't believe what he heard, how could a person be so bad, she's your mother, you and I are no longer on the same level of life. 6. Greg, who was cowardly and withdrawn before, was now covered with an aura seeming to reveal the apex predator standing at the top of the food chain and looking down on other life. Today, I am not bound by any morality and rules. He opened his arms, defying morality from the heart, and raised his voice. I'm better than you, better than anyone. 1. You want to be Superman too. David looked back from the five clear scratches on the roof of the car, and his voice was cold and mocking when he heard these words. While facing the son of Krypton, and a bloodline of the eternal race, dare to say that the level of life is ahead of anyone. Anger from Greg plus 0.18, plus 0.17. David, you are looking for death. 10. Greg was furious after being ridiculed unceremoniously. David wasn't flustered. This guy seems to provide more emotional points than Jeremy, maybe because he is stronger? Listen, Greg, you need treatment. Clark wanted to calm him down, taking account of some mental problems, maybe there was a way to cure him who is now cold and crazy, so that he can become what he was before. Call, T slash N, this is like inhale in MTL language. 8. Healing, it's you who need to be eliminated. Greg was as fast as a ghost, leaving an afterimage on the spot, and punched David, his strength roaring through the air. 1. David, don't. Clark exclaimed when he was attacked halfway and noticed that David's expression seemed to be colder than last time. Greg thought that Clark was worried about his younger brother, and looked at David, who seemed to have not reacted, with cold blood and fierceness in his eyes. I'll take care of you first. Boom. One second before he was about to hit, David stood still, as if facing a flying bug, without blinking. In the next moment, as if being hit by an ancient battering ram, the fist struck his chest like lightning. Bang bang bang. Greg flew backward at a faster speed than when he came, crossed the road in an instant, fell heavily into the grass more than 10 meters away, and rolled several times before stopping. Greg. Clark looked hurriedly, fearing that David would kill someone. Beside the road, David stood expressionless, his skin was dyed purple, and his chin had lines like ravines in the earth, his momentum was majestic and compelling. 2. What bit you? 8. Greg got up from the ground in embarrassment, looking at David with surprise in his eyes. He was bitten by an insect with meteorite powder, and his body evolved after shedding his skin. David, who has purple skin, was bitten by what animal? He didn't get hurt. David lifted his eyelids, slightly surprised, it seems that this Grego has a stronger body and uses less strength. He seemed to be looking at a fool, and said in a dull tone, I don't know what you're talking about. 2. These people whose genes have been mutated by kryptonite, have their brains destroyed and seem to be idiots. You're not strong enough to hurt me. Greg cracked the ground, the soil flew up, and his silhouette shot towards David like a cannonball, carrying the strong wind pressure and punching again. Before the fist fell completely, one could feel the air under the terrifying force being compressed, suffocating. Did you know that dung beetles can push things that are 1,200 times their own weight? His eyes flashed with murderous intent. Stop, Greg, you've lost your mind. Clark's body flashed, faster than the whizzing space shuttle, blocking the way, trying to block the attack for his younger brother. But Gregor's power is stronger than he imagined. 2. Boom, the fist hit his face hard, and Clark was sent flying like a meteor flying dozens of meters away. 1. David glanced at the son of Krypton who had been kicked out, and knew that he was defeated from holding back and releasing water again. 8. Greg did not stop, attacking fiercely, and he was feeling like holding a boulder when he raised his fist again dropping it, trying to smash David's head like a watermelon. Boom, David turned his head and raised his palm to catch his fist slowly, as if taking it easy. The violent force was like a small wave meeting a towering and immovable cliff, and it stopped abruptly in an instant. Call, the wind pressure wave kicked up the dust on the road and spread it away. The road paved with hard asphalt collapsed, forming a deep pit with a diameter of several meters, and the gravel flew out like bullets. On the edge of the road, Clark, who had just rushed back, had to stretch out his hand to cover his eyes. Dung beetle, I'm sorry, I'm not interested in insects. 1. As he spoke, he pressed his hand hard, like a hydraulic press with a force of hundreds of tons. Ah. 
Greg's palm was crushed, and he could not help but kneel down on the ground as he screamed miserably. The broken bone pierced the flesh, and a wave of warm blood flowed out of the palm. David let go of him casually, and looked at the blood-stained palm, which was slightly sticky with greenish-red. Could it be that you were bitten by bugs and mutated? Remembering what Greg said before, he frowned, feeling a little disgusted. Go to hell. Greg's phalanx was shattered and bent at an abnormal angle. The ferocity in his genetic instinct was aroused, and the other hand punched David in a sneak attack, but it missed. Swish. Not surprisingly, David flashed and came behind him. Far surpassing the reaction of ordinary people, Greg burst out at an astonishing speed, punched a strong wind, and swung his fist again, the speed was almost approaching David. Boom, the speed is quite fast. David grabbed his arm, raised his eyebrows in surprise, and waved his hand to break his other intact arm as effortlessly as breaking a cornstalk. But that's right, if the annoying bugs are less flexible, how can they survive? Two. Ah, my arms. Both arms were broken, and Greg fell to the ground in pain, his face distorted. No, impossible, how could you break my hand so easily? 2. After he woke up, he clearly tested his abilities, just like some beetles with extremely hard exoskeletons, his bones were as hard as steel, but under David's hands, they were as brittle as a stick. Insects who overreach themselves and provoke humans, you should know what will happen. Uninterested in answering his question, David said he was about to do it again. With a flash in front of his eyes, Clark quickly stepped forward, quickly stood in front of Greg, and stretched out his hand to stop him. Don't kill him. 7. Comment. 5. Comments. Chapter 20. Lex Luthor robs a bank? You're still alive. Greg, who was trembling with pain, couldn't believe it when he saw that Clark was almost intact except for some dirt on his body. What do you want to hand him over to the law? David knew what Clark wanted to say. We can't cross that line. Clark's face is serious. They couldn't do things that may let their parents down. And make him say that there's a pair of freak brothers in this town who are both super strong. David continued. I. Clark hesitated when he heard this. He didn't want to cause trouble for the family, but let David repeat his actions? Absolutely not. Clark instinctively resisted. Talk it over with Greg. Even he himself knows it's naive. What should I do? Swish. Suddenly, Greg, who should be unable to stand up in pain, got up and fled like the wind, carrying smoke and dust, and fled to the forest under the road. David squinted his eyes and locked his powerful eyesight. Looking at his running posture, his arms seemed to have recovered completely. The tenacious vitality of the bug. Clark, you still don't chase. He glanced at Clark who had blocked his sight just now. Clark reacted, don't think how to solve this matter first, if Greg was allowed to escape and take revenge on his parents, it would be a disaster. He didn't hold back anymore this time, he caught up with Greg, whose speed was close to the speed of sound, and stopped in front of him. Greg, I can't let you go and hurt other people. Why did Greg attack him? Clark more or less had a guess. He had almost no intersection with the other party before, and the only interaction recently was because of Lana. Why are you so fast? Seeing that he was about to approach the forest, Greg felt his vision blurring, and there was a figure in front of him. He slammed on the brakes and looked at Clark in surprise. At the same time, a stone was thrown from the pocket of his raised leather jacket. He turned to look again. David had already walked over, and at some point, he was more than ten meters behind him. One of the two brothers looked to have infinite strength, and the other was faster than a rocket. Greg suddenly regretted that he should have resolved these two competitors after going to his dream lover to give birth to offspring. Regret from Greg plus 0 0.13, plus 0 0.09. Hmm. Suddenly, Clark coughed, his strength seemed to be drained quickly, and he fell to his knees unbearably. He glanced at the flying piece of stone a few meters away. The green inside the gray-black stone was glowing. The same meteorite as Lana's necklace. His face was ugly, but it is more than ten times bigger than Lana's necklace piece. Eh. Greg, who thought he was going to be attacked from back in front, and had no hope of escape, was surprised to find that the meteorite that he speculated might be related to his own mutation turned out to be the weakness of Clark, who was as fast as lightning. He wanted to pick up the rock to deal with Clark, but thinking of David behind him, he hurriedly gave up and turned to run away. Fear from Greg plus 0.22. It's a pity. Picking up a stone from the ground, David narrowed his eyes and aimed at the back of the fleeing Greg and threw it vigorously. Whoosh! Accompanied by a sharp sonic boom, the stone seemed to be more powerful than a sniper bullet, and it hit Gregor's head precisely. Boom! Greg ran into the forest excitedly, his head exploded like a watermelon, and the airwaves spread and blew the leaves in the forest, splashing red and white all over the ground. Seeing a person being killed before his eyes, Clark's eyes widened as he looked at his brother. David. I had to. There were no more emotional points, and he was already dead. It seemed that Gregor's self-healing ability was not strong enough to be reborn from death, and David had no choice but to let go. If he didn't have the ability to regenerate, I wouldn't have killed him. If possible, he also hopes to create another humanoid emotional point generator. Madness 0.15 from Jeremy, Hatred 0.11. He doesn't know what it feels like to be trapped in the dark while being conscious, but it must be very uncomfortable. Because it has only been two days, Jeremy's emotions have become more and more extreme and intense, and more and more emotional points are provided to him. You killed him, David. Clark shouted slightly anxiously. You could have caught up with him, or you could have just removed the meteorite and let me catch up to him. He should have been careful, if he didn't get weakened, maybe he can stop David. Remorse plus 16 from Clark, anxiety plus 15, worry plus 13. And then, David asked unhurriedly. So what if you go after him and catch him, do you have a better way to deal with him? As he spoke, he stepped forward to pick up the meteorite, turned, and left. I'm waiting for you to come up with a better way to tell me, Clark. After the kryptonite radiation left, Clark regained his strength and looked at the headless corpse with a remorseful expression on his face and clenched his fist. When David was setting the car back on the road, Clark returned with his hands stained with mud, feeling a little lost. What did you do? I buried Greg in the depths of the forest. If you count according to the law, you are destroying the evidence that I killed Greg. You are an accomplice, and ER will be convicted together. David chuckled. That's right. Clark raised his head and said seriously, but you are my only younger brother. David shook his head. Clark, if you said this, and you didn't use the persistent eyes that a psychological counseling instructor of a juvenile prison has when facing a persistent juvenile delinquent. Perhaps, I would be a little moved for a second or two. David didn't want to care about the genetically mutated Greg. But he didn't expect the guy to take the initiative to come to attack Clark and kill himself by the way. Not surprisingly, it should be because of Lana. 
Like an insect's strong instinct, in order to compete for a mate, it will defeat all competitors. He had the ability to recover and cannot become a generator of emotional points, so he had to kill him, which is a bit regrettable. However, earlier Clark felt that maybe he would never encounter a situation like Jeremy's again. He could keep an eye on David. After that day, the frequency of worrying about David gradually decreased. But immediately after David killed Greg, Clark began to worry about him going down the wrong road again, and it became more and more intense. Worries from Clark plus 19, plus 20. Regardless of Clark who was driving a bit dull, David sat in the co-pilot and casually looked at the scenery outside. After David and the two drove away, in the forest, a giant white wolf with fur as beautiful as satin slowly walked out, staring at the direction in which the two left, with a little doubt in his eyes, as if thinking about something. After sneakily doing a touch-up to the car paint on the road, with the use of amazing lung capacity and mouth speed to dry the car paint, Clark decided not to tell his parents about it for now, not wanting them to worry about it. It didn't take David much time to solve Greg. They pulled a cart of fruit and returned to the market again, which took less than an hour. Luther was still there, talking with Jonathan and Martha under the pretext of wanting to know how the fruit and vegetable business in Smallville was doing. Martha thought that if Luthor decided to work as a fruit and vegetable buyer, it might be good news for the residents of the small town who run farms and orchards, and she would not be like her husband who rejected people thousands of miles away. Hi. David greeted Chloe and Pete who were helping. The two had nothing to do because the stall was not busy. Lex, do my fruits attract you so much? Seeing that Luther hadn't left, Clark joked with a smile. Luther observed his somewhat sullen expression, then looked at David, who had a natural expression as if he had just returned from an outing, and turned back to Clark. What happened? Clark. He asked softly, tentatively. You seem to have encountered some kind of problem. Clark's eyes flickered unnaturally. It's nothing. Clark, when I was a child, I was a little naughty. Seeing a good opportunity to get closer, Luther's eyes flashed, and he smiled. That's why I was often called to the psychological counseling room. To prevent my mind from being seen through by others, I know some psychology. Mr. Luthor, my son has some small teenage problems, which he can solve by himself. Noticing the two of them, Jonathan stepped forward and put his arms around Clark's shoulders, refusing, we shouldn't bother you to help with psychological counseling. And to be called to the counseling room, could it have been just a little naughty? David watched from the side, he knew that his father, Jonathan, probably thought that Clark was still worrying about floating in the morning, so he didn't want Luther to inquire. I just... Luther just smiled and wanted to say something else. Suddenly, a few policemen with guns squeezed in from behind the crowd, and they showed their police IDs and arrest warrants. The crowd immediately dispersed and made a circle, wanting to see what happened. Mr. Lex Luthor, we are the Smallville police. We have reason to suspect that you are related to a bank robbery. Please go back with us to assist in the investigation. Robbery. Luthor was stunned. There are many witnesses who saw you robbing the Smallville bank at gunpoint half an hour ago and taking away $100,000 from the bank. You look to be wearing a bulletproof vest under your clothes. You still fled after being shot twice by the security guards on duty, the police officer said. I took the risk of being shot and robbed at the Smallville bank, just for $100,000. Being interrupted by the police at a critical moment, Luthor wondered if he had heard it wrong, and laughed angrily. Mr. Police Officer, the factory under my name donates more than 100,000 US dollars to the town schools, police stations, and firefighting measures every year. Jonathan and Martha frowned and looked at each other. Robbing a bank? The people around were surprised and puzzled. Everyone had heard the name Lex Luthor, and it was related to him. If it was the acquisition of a bank, it would be more likely. Luther's eyes moved slightly, and he looked at Clark and David behind him. I have been here in the previous hour, and Mr. Kent's family can testify against me. Suddenly, the police and the onlookers looked over. I, Jonathan choked on what he was saying for a moment. Creator's thoughts. The board rider 69. Creation is hard. Cheer me up. Don't forget to review 5 stars. Comment. 10 comments. Chapter 21. David, how strong are you? I didn't expect Pa to testify for Lex. 1. Back home at night, Clark was still a little surprised. During the day, Luther did stay by their fruit stand all the time, never leaving their sight. But Jonathan, their father who obviously didn't like Luthor, actually stood up and testified for Luthor, helping him get rid of suspicions. David raised his eyebrows and asked back, do you really think father would like to get Luthor into trouble? Clark scratched his chin, thinking it was impossible. The words just now seemed to doubt his father's precepts and deeds for so many years. Honesty is like a bright mirror, which will reflect your character. I don't want to add stains to my mirror for Luther's son. Hearing the two sons talking from outside, Jonathan opened his hands as he took off his coat. 4. Especially in front of you, my sons. The farm's fresh fruit sold for a good sum of money today, and the hard work has yielded a harvest. He was in a good mood and raised his voice slightly. I don't know who was late for a date with me when we were young, and he said that the motorcycle broke down halfway when he simply woke up late. Coming from behind, Martha shook her head. Sometimes it's okay to lie in good faith. Jonathan hugged his wife gently in a little embarrassment and raised his eyebrows at his two sons. Otherwise, where would our warm home come from? Well, although the atmosphere at home was relaxed, Clark could hear that his father's dislike for Luther hadn't changed. It's really strange today. Luther hasn't left the market. Who was robbing the bank? He recalled what happened during the day, and his words were somewhat confused. Many people saw Luther, and he was also caught on CCTV at the bank. Maybe that robber looks a lot like Lex Luthor. In the kitchen, after washing her hands, Mother Martha started preparing dinner, speculating back. Luther came to the town not long ago. In fact, few people are very familiar with him. Maybe they misunderstood him. She wiped the water on her hands and continued to smile. Does Jonathan remember Jack King when we were in school? Except for his curly hair, how similar he is to our English teacher. Jonathan also remembered the funny things in school. Clark also agreed with this, and spread his hands, maybe someone who thinks he looks a lot like Lex thinks he can try his luck. 1. To withdraw money, the department manager excitedly received the bank's big customers. But when it came time to sign, it did not match the signature templates kept in the past. The bank manager just asked casually if he could see his driver's license and wanted to handle business for him in another way. In the end, he drew a gun. 
Fortunately, no one was injured in the end. A summary of what is being discussed. However, Clark actually had another guess. David, who had been silent since just now, looked at him. Both of them knew what the other was thinking, but they didn't say it in front of their parents. Even if the parents know about the existence of the powered people, they should try their best not to worry them. After dinner, in the warehouse attic, blowing the cool night wind, looking at the quiet wheat field in the distance under the moonlight, David turned his head and looked at Clark who had just sneaked back from outside. Where did you go? Nothing. Clark scratched his head. During the day, David and Greg had a fight and destroyed the road. Now that it was dark, he was afraid that someone would drive into the pit and cause a car accident, so he went to have a look. You are really kind. Hearing what he said, David couldn't help sighing. When I went, the engineering team of the transportation company outsourced by the town in charge of road maintenance had just finished construction. They were very confused by the damaged road surface and felt that it would be impossible for a dozen tons of steel to fall off the truck and smash it into pieces. Clark talked about what he saw, glanced at David, and pretended to ask casually, David, how strong are you? You want to strengthen the relationship between us by wrestling with me. David narrowed his eyes slightly. How old are you? No, exactly, I'm not interested in wrestling with you either. You should practice how to cover up your intentions when you speak. Clark. He put his hands into his pockets and looked out into the night. I don't think there's anything wrong with being sincere. His younger brother always talked to him in a tone that seemed more mature and intelligent than him. Although this was often the case, Clark was still a little upset. Oh, David sneered lightly, do you dare to say that you only wanted to ask me about my strength? The Kryptonian was a little embarrassed. The question just now was indeed not simple. He wanted to know the difference between his strength from David, so that the next time something like Greg happens, he will know what strength to use to stop it. David saw through Clark's purpose. Forget it, I won't tell you. After finishing speaking, he added another sentence. Because to be honest, I don't know myself. 4. David, do you think the person who pretended to be Luthor and robbed the bank would be a powered person? 3. Clark groaned in surprise when he heard the answer, and then asked. He met two powered people one after another in a short period of time, and it was really frustrating. Now when encountering strange things, it was like when being almost bitten by a snake even a rope looks like a snake, he began to think about it instinctively. Maybe. David didn't rule out the possibility, but he doesn't think every weird thing may be related to a powered person. 2. If he is really powered, he may be able to resist bullets with his body. Clark looked a little dignified. Even Greg, who had a strength of hundreds of tons, didn't look to have this kind of defense, and this one may be a more powerful ability user than Greg. David nodded. According to eyewitnesses, it was clear that the man was wearing only a light suit, not a bulletproof vest. But in the eyes of ordinary people, apart from wearing a bulletproof vest, there is no other possibility to explain that someone was shot twice in the back and escaped unscathed. Don't be afraid, bank robbers should not be interested in the farm. He patted Clark on the shoulder, turned, and went to the attic to sleep. But Clark was a little worried that there was such a gangster hiding in the town who dared to rob the bank. Hope everyone else is okay. Next morning, inside an antique shop in a small town, looking slightly old, Catherine with gray hair carried a red school bag full of money, struggled to get up to the second floor where she lived, and hurriedly knocked on her daughter's door. Tina, where did you get the money? Tina, who had just washed her hair, came out of the room leisurely and carelessly wiped her hair with a towel. 4. I told you, our lives will get better. Tell me, you didn't rob the bank yesterday. Catherine couldn't believe what she heard and said to her daughter with the last chance of luck. Of course, I didn't. Tina, who had a high nose bridge, was fairly pretty and had long red-brown hair, smiled. Before Catherine could relax, she put down the towel, and a creepy scene happened. Kaka, Tina's skin and flesh flowed like plasticine, and her appearance changed suddenly. She grew taller and her frame widened, and she turned into a bald Lex Luthor with a sneering expression. It was Lex Luthor. 1. Creator's Thoughts. The Board Rider 69. Creation is hard, cheer me up, don't forget to give 5 stars. Comment. 6 Comments. Chapter 22, Aliens Can Have Puberty. It was Lex Luthor. Tina said in a frivolous tone in a man's rough voice. After speaking, she changed back to her original form, playing with her hair with some regret. It's a pity that a flaw was found in the signature, otherwise I wouldn't have to rob it yesterday. I told you not to use this ability. Catherine said with her lips trembling with anger when hearing her daughter really rob the bank. I did it for our own good. After dad passed away, we relied on this antique shop on the side of the street that no one cared about. Gradually, even food and clothing became a problem. Tina wanted to convince her mother, her pupils became dilated with excitement, and her face turned red. Look at the money, this is just the beginning, and soon I will be able to live the same life as Lana. They both obviously have a shop, but the flower shop opened by Lana's aunt's family can make more money than this dilapidated antique shop. Tina has been deeply envious of Lana due to her difficult family since she was a child. Enough, I don't want to see you get hurt. Hurt. She seemed to hear some joke. The security guard at the bank shot me twice in the back and only damaged one of my suits. Tina, no one's life is perfect. Catherine tried to keep her tone slow. Lana's is. Tina interrupted directly, her face turned cold. She has heard these kinds of words countless times since she was a child. Lana is like a white swan, with a wealthy family, beautiful and beautiful, loved by others since she was a child, and attracts everyone's attention wherever she goes, but she is an ugly gray duck on the side of the road. The money was stolen. Not wanting to argue with her daughter on this issue, Catherine looked ugly and walked downstairs angrily. I'll give it back to them, just say I found it next to the garbage truck. Don't do this, mom, why can't we have happiness? Tina rushed forward impatiently, grabbing the school bag and trying to grab it. Boom boom boom. During the snatching, she used all her strength. Catherine who was holding her school bag, fell back down the stairs. Her old body rolled a few times and finally hit her head hard against the wall. She passed out and died. Mom. Tina stared wide-eyed, ran downstairs hurriedly, dropped her school bag, wanted to make an emergency call, but picked up the phone, suddenly thought of something, struggled, her face gradually turned cold, and put it down. Before the physical education class, everyone changed into sportswear in the locker room. Ah. Uh. Clark suddenly blurred his eyes, rubbed his eyes vigorously, and opened them again. He was startled and screamed. The room was full of skeletons wrapped in flesh and blood, and even bruised blood vessels were clearly visible in the flesh and blood, like a scene from a horror movie. Clark. 
Pete wondered why he screamed. But in Clark's eyes, it was a flesh and blood skeleton that turned its head, and he backed away in fright. My eyes, my eyes, what's wrong? Another flesh and blood skeleton with a strong figure like an ancient Greek sculpture turned its head around and frowned. Looking at Clark who suddenly screamed, David, who had just put on his shirt, asked. I. Clark retreated in panic, his eyes suddenly looked through the wall and saw the women's changing room next door. Girls in underwear were changing their clothes, among them was a figure he was familiar with Lana. Black. Future Superman's eyes gradually straightened, as if seeing a pleasing and beautiful scenery, and the corners of his mouth unconsciously showed a smile with white teeth. What's wrong with your eyes? Pete asked again, what's wrong with Clark? After being startled for a while, he stared at the wall in a daze again, still giggling. It's nothing. Clark came back to his senses, shook his head, and quickly dealt with Pete. When Pete left first, he still slowly changed his clothes and looked at the wall reluctantly. David looked at the wall of the women's changing room over there, and at Clark's eyes that were about to be nailed to the wall, and immediately guessed what was going on. You have a nosebleed, Clark. A sudden sentence came. Losing his mind, Clark touched his nose in a panic, but he didn't have anything in his hand. No, will I have a nosebleed? Looking up, David looked at him with folded arms, his playful eyes seemed to be able to penetrate people's hearts. Under this gaze, like a thief who was discovered, he was uncomfortable, and Clark looked away with guilt for no reason. Why did he say such a sentence suddenly? Did David know about his new ability? You mean you have a new ability that can see through people and things? Looking at Clark sitting on the sofa at home, Martha looked uneasy. Jonathan patted his wife's back to let her not worry too much, and listened quietly. David folded his arms, leaning against the dining table, with a chuckle on his lips, and Clark didn't dare to look up and meet him. Guilt plus 11 from Clark, shame plus 12. Sometimes I can see through things, like x-rays. Sitting on the sofa, Clark lowered his head and pretended to be depressed, with a towel in his mouth, and his voice was muffled. Is it out of control? Sensing his wife's worry, Jonathan frowned. Unlike before, Clark's new abilities have appeared too frequently recently. He floated just two days ago, although it never happened again. Successive changes seem to be breaking the peaceful life by surprise, which makes people instinctively uneasy. I don't know how to control it. Clark looked up at David. Really? David sneered. Before physical education class, you seemed to have been staring at the wall for a while, and you didn't seem to have your ability out of control. He said meaningfully, some things only depend on whether you want to or not. The future Superman awakens supervision, the first time it was used was to peep into the women's locker room. He was really a god of noble character, and people are ashamed to want to preach to him. It's a pity that he didn't bring his camera this morning. Eyes also have muscles, like blinking and gathering. You can try to control it, Clark. He wondered what the younger son was pointing at on the wall, but his father, Jonathan, didn't ask much at this time and reminded him earnestly. I'll try, Clark promised, with a flash of hesitation on his face. They both comforted Clark. Make sure that Clark will be careful. Fortunately, this ability is not dangerous. Then Martha packed her clothes and prepared to go to the street. Jonathan also left the room to feed the cows on the farm. Clatter. What else did you want to say just now, Clark? There was a sound of footsteps, and David came over. He noticed Clark's expression just now, and smiled, want to confess your behavior to your parents. He drew his voice, after all, there is nothing wrong with being sincere, right? I feel that my strength has grown faster in the past two days. Hearing the familiar words, Clark coughed and his face turned red, seeing that his parents were not there, he lowered his voice. The sudden emergence of a new ability was enough to worry the parents, so he didn't say anything else. Strength increasing faster. David raised his eyebrows, which surprised him. What is the reason for your self-feeling? Unlike the known supervision that will inevitably appear, he has not thought of this possibility for the time being. Maybe it's like the late teenage years and puberty when a person's physical development is the fastest. Clark paused for a self-analysis. 18 is a period of intense transformation from adolescence to adulthood. Aren't you an alien? David's eyes flashed suddenly, he had forgotten that there was such a simple possibility, but he still said, aliens can't have puberty, that's right, they do, David said with a playful smile, implying something, and Clark's expression became a little ashamed again, creator's thoughts, the board rider 69, creation is hard, cheer me up, don't forget to give 5 stars, comment, 8 comments, chapter 23, no one can stop my happiness, in the afternoon, the weather was a bit gloomy, and the cold wind blew low across the streets of the town, Martha went shopping, and Clark, and David followed to help carry things, there were signs that it was going to rain, and pedestrians in the town hurried. Just as he put the two buckets of laundry detergent that were on sale at the supermarket into the car, Clark's eyes blurred, and the surrounding scene changed into black and white as if he had entered the world of a movie. People walking on the street were no longer individual residents, but skeletons and muscles. A woman with a vegetable basket passed by casually, and Clark was at a loss and made an evasive gesture. David knew that his supervision was uncontrollably turned on again, control your ability with your mind, don't be afraid, and don't resist. Zid just came into contact with the sun on the earth, and he adapted to all kinds of sudden abilities in less than a minute, although it has something to do with him being a well-trained elite fighter. But as a Kryptonian, Zid doesn't have more organs and legs than Superman, and his potential is not as good as his. Think about why you can't always manipulate it before gym class. Looking at Clark with a troubled face, David suspected that this had something to do with Clark's mental state. He resists his own ability to emerge, which makes him seem like an alien, reminding him that he is an alien at times and sometimes not. I. Clark was about to speak, when suddenly a strange skeleton appeared in his sight not far away, attracting his attention. The other portraits had been exposed to X-rays, and in the black and white field of vision, the skeleton actually showed emerald green fluorescence, like meteorite. This instantly reminded Clark of the things that made him suffer many times. He didn't know why, those meteorites came to the earth with him, but they are his nemesis, and he will feel weak when they get close to him. What's the matter, Clark? It happened again. Martha came out of the supermarket, saw that the eldest son was not in good condition, and proposed to go home immediately, let's go home. No, I'm fine. Seeing the green skeleton walk into a small shop by the street, Clark shook his head, took a deep breath, and tried to control it, and after two seconds, he actually turned off his ability. David is right, as long as I don't resist it, I can do it. 
He was overjoyed, but looked at his calm brother, feeling a sense of frustration. Obviously, the ability belongs to him, but his younger brother knows the trick better than him. David was not surprised by this. As we all know, Superman is a kind of idealistic creature. Martha was a little happy that the eldest son showed signs of freely controlling the emerging abilities, so she didn't have to worry about him having problems. Mom, didn't you just say you were going to an antique shop? Clark just saw the green skeleton walk into the antique shop on the street. The desk lamp in our bedroom is broken, and Aunt Catherine will help you fix it. After walking a few steps, Martha led her two sons into the dilapidated antique shop on the street. Jingle. The door opened and the welcome bell rang. There are a variety of objects, such as porcelain and horn products in glass cabinets, oil paintings, antique wall clocks, and colorful embroidered pictures on the walls. There are also some palm-sized statues with a strong ancient African tribal style randomly placed in the corner. It is said to be an antique shop. David looked around and wondered if there were real antiques in it. An antique shop that has been reduced to repairing appliances. He was speechless. Mostly last week. Kent girl. I mean, Martha, how are you? Catherine walked out from the back of the store with quick steps, nervousness flashed across her eyes, and a ritualized smile hung on her face. How is the business? Martha didn't doubt it. After all, she was the familiar Catherine in front of her. The bridge of eyes, nose, and even a wrinkle at the corners of her eyes were the same. Not bad. I'll get the lamp. After chatting for a few more days, Martha smiled and got down to business. Lamp. Catherine wondered. Clark secretly wanted to open that special perspective again. He tried his best to control the muscles at the corners of his eyes and finally succeeded after seven or eight seconds. Behind the counter in front of him was a skeleton of flesh and blood emitting meteorite fluorescence. But, why are you so much shorter? The skeleton was different from what he had just seen. It was a young woman just now, but now she was hunchbacked. Could it be that there are two? He remembered that Aunt Catherine's daughter Tina also attended the high school the same as him, but he was not in the same class as her. The mahogany desk lamp that was broken by Jonathan. After Martha's explanation, Catherine seemed to finally remember, and turned around and went into the room to get it. What's the smell? David sniffed, and a faint stench entered his nose. Clark also sniffed but found nothing. In addition to super hearing and eyesight, the Kryptonian also has other senses that are far superior to ordinary people. He may not have awakened it yet. As an ordinary person, Martha didn't notice anything. Sorry, Martha, I'll take a look. The lamp hasn't been fixed yet. Can you come back next week? Catherine came out with an apologetic look on her face. Of course. The always talkative Martha chuckled. She turned around and was about to leave with her two sons when suddenly she saw a wad of money that was exposed under a cabinet near the stairs. Bending down to pick it up. This is. Thank you, Martha, I'm such a fool. Seeing the wad of money, Catherine hurriedly put it away, with a slightly stiff tone. A customer paid in cash. I've been looking for it all day, and it turned out to be here. You're welcome, this is not a small amount. Catherine, you have to safely keep it. Martha's eyes flashed awkwardly, and she smiled. After talking for a bit, she took her two sons and left quickly. After leaving the antique shop and walking on the street, Martha whispered. A small bill bank storage and loan belt was tied to that wad of money. As soon as the small town bank was robbed, a wad of dollars from the bank appeared in Catherine's store. Catherine said it was paid by customers, but we all know that her antique shop has not been successful for a long time. I don't think it is possible to throw $10,000 around with the conditions of Aunt Catherine's house. David had noticed the panic on Catherine's face when the wad of money appeared. The person who stole the money is most likely related to her. I saw it too. Clark said, looking back at the antique shop, and saw a surprised scene. Inside the antique shop, a hunched figure grew taller as if its skeleton had been pulled, its chest and back straightened, and it became what he had seen before. And most importantly, a female corpse was placed in a closet in the store. Old, rickety, heart no longer beating, blood has coagulated. I don't think we saw Aunt Catherine. He opened his mouth. Who could it be? Martha wondered. I don't know, but... Clark told his discovery. The person she has known for many years may have died, and the body was just near her. Martha was a little frightened and decided to go home first and discuss with her husband Jonathan how to solve this matter. Even if the eldest son has superhuman abilities, she doesn't want him to be easily involved in this matter. After closing the door, Tina's flesh flowed like plasticine, returning to her original appearance. Thinking of Martha's unnatural expression when she discovered the money just now, she put up a temporarily closed sign on the door with a blank face, and a cold voice sounded in the store. No one can stop my happiness. Creator's thoughts. The board rider 69. Creation is hard, cheer me up. Don't forget to review 5 stars. Comment. 7 comments. Chapter 24, just in case. Back home. You mean you saw Catherine, but Catherine might be dead. Hearing the narration of his wife and two sons, the green skeleton, deformation, corpse, money. Jonathan was a little confused for a moment. The person who received us in the antique shop should be the person who robbed the bank. Combining what Clark said earlier, David felt that the matter was obvious. Luther first, then Catherine, she has the ability to transform into other people. Who would that person be? Martha was extremely disturbed, rubbing her arms, thinking it was terrible, the other party could become familiar people, quietly approaching you. Just now she didn't realize that the other party was not the one she knew. Clark frowned and thought hard. First of all, he can be sure that the skeleton of the person is a woman, and secondly, it seems that there are no other clues for the time being. It's Tina. David frowned and thought for a few seconds before suddenly speaking. The three members of the family shot over with puzzled eyes. Clark asked, why is it Tina? She has that kind of ability. Isn't it good to become someone? She can become a celebrity or politician. Why does she want to become Aunt Catherine? The police can't find her. Unless if Catherine is dead, and the police will definitely find her. After analysis and speculation, he thought it was Catherine's daughter, and said with a smile. Only Catherine's daughter, Tina, no matter who killed Catherine, the police would come to ask about the situation, because she was the only relative of the deceased. Tina stole the money and killed her own mother, she did it because of a guilty conscience. Catherine. Martha grieved the loss of someone she once knew well. Don't be too sure, son. Jonathan held his wife's cold hand to comfort her, frowning. A daughter killed her mother, this. 
3. A murderer that violated human relations is too appalling? David raised his eyebrows at his father's instinctive reluctance to believe in such a tragedy but said nothing. I saw that her skeleton is different. Clark carefully recalled his memory and finally remembered another clue that he didn't know if it could be counted as a clue. It emits a strange green light, and the lines of the skeleton are a bit strange. Unlike ordinary people's ribs, which are smooth and natural, the ribs of that person vary in thickness. Catherine was quite old when Tina was born, and Tina was born with hypochondria. 5. Martha seemed to be remembering something terrible, and her face turned slightly pale. She and her husband sought medical treatment everywhere. The doctor thought she would not survive the first grade of elementary school. They spent money to find a way to give her a lot of experimental drugs in the development stage, but it was useless. Jonathan frowned and took the words in a dull voice. Later, they had no choice but bring take Tina back to Smallville, but somehow a miracle happened, and Tina gradually got better. Now he also somewhat believed his son's reasoning, that the murderer was Tina. Desperate people sometimes go to the doctor in a hurry. David touched his chin and looked at Clark. I heard that when the meteorite fell at the beginning, some priests came to the town and claimed that the meteorite was a gift from God, and soaking in water can cure all diseases. There is no need to say the rest. It is conceivable that Catherine and her husband, who had nowhere to go, would try desperately and thank God excitedly after discovering that their daughter had improved amazingly. But Catherine might not have thought that she would die because of her daughter in the future. David is right, that person may be Tina. Clark's eyes widened. After his younger brother's analysis and the information provided by his parents, all the clues were connected. No wonder that person's skeleton glowed like a meteorite because she had been drinking in the water polluted by the meteorite since she was a child? Since you have seen the corpse, call the police first. Jonathan thought for a while, not letting the murderer escape, he picked up the phone and called the police. Briefly tell the situation, the money that may have been robbed in the bank was found in the Catherine antique store, and there was a smell of corpses. The police immediately dispatched the police and rushed to the antique shop. Okay, boys, the police are out there. She would be caught on the spot, even though Tina might be someone else. David frowned. This is not safe. The couple didn't know that apart from Tina's ability to transform, her body was so strong that she could resist bullets, making it difficult for ordinary police to deal with. I'm going to ask for leave this afternoon and not go to school. David said suddenly. Kryptonite is undoubtedly what caused some people in the town to gain powers. Then if we spend more time with kryptonite, suffer more radiation from kryptonite, or even swallow kryptonite, will it make our power stronger? His eyes flickered. Is that why Tina drank water from meteorite bubbles since she was a child? I want to ask for leave to. Clark followed closely without letting go of his vigilance, his eyes were serious, and he wanted to protect his parents from any harm. David glanced at Clark. If it was anywhere else, a random ability user from a small town could make him with Thanos' physique unable to easily protect his parents from a little harm when facing each other, he would think it was absurd. But the enemies that Superman sometimes encounters, even he will feel troublesome and even dangerous. Not really afraid, but just in case, it is best for him and Clark to stay and protect their parents together. Even if it turns out to be a false alarm in the end, it's better than something that he absolutely doesn't want to see happen and make him regret for his whole life. Why? The two sons reacted a little loudly, and the couple were puzzled. Are you afraid that Tina will attack us? Boom. Just as the two were about to explain, there was a knock on the door. Looking through the glass door of the outer door, in the dim sunlight, Lex Luthor stood outside the door, with a polite smile on his face, and a friendly voice, Can I come in? 1. Jonathan and Martha were a little nervous, standing up from the sofa, David and Clark stepped forward, standing in front of their parents. David secretly gave Clark a look. Clark tried to open the perspective again to observe Lex's skeleton outside the door, but because of some nervousness, it didn't open for a long time. What's the matter? Lex Luthor opened the outer door and joked, It's me, not my evil twin, and I don't have a gun in my hand. He raised his hands and showed them to the family. Clark, David, Mr. Kent, you all know I'm innocent. Hurry up. Clark concentrated his energy and tried to control, and finally, the scene in his eyes turned into an x-ray again, and he glanced at Luther's whole body up and down, heaved a sigh of relief, hinted at his younger brother and parents, and smiled. Lex, what are you doing here? The skeleton is normal, it's the real Lex Luthor. Jonathan and Martha were also relieved. David secretly relaxed his tense body. If he faced it alone, even with ten capable people, he wouldn't be so nervous, but his parents were behind him. I'm here to thank Mr. and Mrs. Kent. Without your testimony, I can't get rid of the suspicion yet. The Kent family reacted strangely, with suspicion secretly flashing in their eyes, Luthor smiled. Come in, Mr. Luther. Martha greeted. I watched the CCTV footage, and I don't know how that person did it. He looks almost exactly like me. If it wasn't for the different signature and handwriting, I might be a pauper now. Luther expressed his sincere surprise and doubts. It's a strange feeling to see people robbing banks in a panic in broad daylight against my face. He wanted to take the opportunity of gratitude to visit and become acquainted with the Clark family. But after arriving, Luthor suddenly felt that the atmosphere of this family was a bit dull and weird. It seemed that it was not a good time to visit, and the plan went wrong again. This time he didn't show his sharpness and cleverness and offered to help if there was any trouble. If a person has a bad feeling for someone, the smarter he is, the more he will be guarded and resisted. After chatting for a few minutes, he sincerely expressed his gratitude, his eyes flickered, and he left. Hum, leaving the farm, Luther got on the silver-gray convertible sports car, glanced at the Kent family in the house, frowned, and drove away without knowing what he was thinking. Thinking that Tina might be a powerful ability user, Jonathan thought for a while and asked for leave for his two sons. The reason for the leave was the high incidence of flu in spring. He did not send David to school for fear that he would be attacked alone. David, just stay at home with us. Clark will protect us. I will ask my acquaintances to see the results of the police. Maybe the police can catch Tina. 5. Creator's Thoughts. The Board Rider 69. Creation is hard. Cheer me up. Don't forget to review 5 stars. Comment. 7 Comments. Chapter 25. Let's start with you Martha. Jonathan called the police, near dusk. The Smallville police came to the door and made up the transcript. Bob and Jonathan, the town sheriff with a few police officers, were high school classmates. Bob, have you caught the murderer? Jonathan asked. Unfortunately, we found Catherine's body in Catherine's antique shop, but the money was not found. The murderer may have transferred the money. 
Facing his old classmate and the clue provider, Bob did not refuse to disclose. We squatted there for a long time. The murderer may have escaped, and no suspicious person was found in the town. Catherine's daughter Tina disappeared inexplicably. We suspect that she may have been killed as well. Your wife Martha should not have met Catherine. Bob frowned, thinking of the bizarre bank robbery, muttering in his mouth. Those agents who can disguise themselves as real people, do they really exist? Jonathan couldn't say anything, sent Bob away, turned around, and said to his wife and sons with a sigh. It's bad news, the police rushed to nothing. This may also be a good thing. Martha said worriedly, Tina has special abilities, and pistols can't subdue her. If you really meet her, Bob and the others will probably be in danger. David and Clark weren't surprised, they didn't expect the police to catch Tina. The sun was setting, the sky was covered with stars, darkness was covering the farm, the cold wind was blowing, and the wheat fields were low. Under the eye-catching lights, David and Clark stood at the door of the house on the left and on the right. Guaranteed that if Tina came to attack, they would be the first target. Even if she went around from behind, she couldn't escape David's extraordinary hearing. She'd better not wait to come to take revenge tonight. David looked into the distance, and his voice was like the cold wind whistling in front of the door, with a sense of coldness. Tina wants to play Catherine and live a normal life in order to avoid attracting the attention of the police. She hasn't shown up in the town for some time, and she probably knows what happened. It's not difficult to think of who called the police. There are only a thousand days to catch a thief, but there is no reason for a thousand days to prevent a thief. According to the forensic inference, Aunt Catherine may have fallen down the stairs and died accidentally after hitting her head. Clark hesitated while trying to scan the surroundings with supervision. What do you want to say? David heard that he hadn't finished speaking. Looking back at his parents sitting in the living room, Clark could not bear it and lowered his voice. Tina, leave it to me to deal with it later, and I will subdue her. Tina came to attack their parents, and the coldness on his brother was heavier than the last time he faced Greg who died at his hands. He didn't want David to get blood on his hands again, so he couldn't turn back. What about after that? Although it was an old-fashioned question, Clark took the trouble to persuade him, and David crossed his arms, but he was not angry. I figured out a way. Clark raised his eyebrows with a slightly smug expression, how I can subdue the bad guys without worrying about my identity and ability being revealed by the other party. Oh, David was a little surprised. He took out a woven blue hood from his pocket, checked that there was no one around, and put it around his head several times, covering his entire face, leaving only two eyes exposed. Can you still recognize who I am? David. Clark deliberately lowered his voice and said in a low voice, A robber who is going to rob a bank. David rolled his eyelids. The son of Krypton finally moved his head and thought of the trick of wearing a hood to hide his identity, but this outfit is just like a bank robber with no gun in his hand. This is the inspiration I got from the comics. Clark, who was being ridiculed, was not discouraged, and he found a solution to the problem that had been confusing him and said it seriously. I can't make them not reveal my ability, but I can make them think that someone unknown has subdued them, so don't make a move for a while, lest our parents find out about your abilities. Clark thought that this problem was solved, and his brother would say that there is no reason to completely shut up others by turning people into vegetative states and killing people again. But the naive son of Krypton doesn't know that David has other reasons for doing that. Russell? Clark was convincing David, a slender and pretty black-haired figure came from a distance, huddled and hugged her arms, her face was red from the cold, like someone who had run away from home after a big fight with their parents and was looking for a safe haven with a pitiful appearance, she hesitated and walked over. Clark, David, why are you standing outside? Lana. Clark turned his head and saw the person he had a crush on suddenly appear at the door of the house, very surprised. Wait a minute, how did you recognize me? He touched his face, obviously wearing a hood. Your clothes, your height the most important thing is that you stand beside David. In the cold wind, Lana's eyes were red as if she had just cried, her voice was slightly hoarse, and her tone was low. Clark froze for a moment, forgetting about it. What happened, why do you look like this, Lana? When he found tears in the corners of his crush's eyes, his face changed slightly. After looking Lana up and down with a cold face, David secretly gave an elbow to the idiot who forgot about other fools when he saw Lana. Did you forget something, Clark? Clark, who was about to step forward, finally remembered that the person in front of him was not sure if it was Lana, and he quickly opened his supervision. Clark, my aunt thinks I should give Whitney another chance. I had a fight with my aunt. I have nowhere to go. Can I stay at your house? Lana said as if she was about to cry again and was about to step forward. Stop. Clark stretched out his hand, saw a green skeleton, and said angrily, Don't try to lie to me, you're not Lana. What are you talking about, Clark, who am I if I'm not Lana? Lana's words were full of doubts and grievances. David's eyes turned cold, ready to strike at any time. Tina, it's still not too late for you to turn yourself in. Seeing the tears in the eyes of his crush looking at him with grievances, Clark bit his lips as if in a dream, biting his lips and saying in a low voice. Jonathan and Martha in the house noticed that the two sons blocked Lana from the door. He picked up the shotgun vigilantly and kept his wife behind. You have ruined my life. I wanted your family to die one by one at the hands of those closest to you, full of shock, doubt, and pain. When her identity was suspected, Tina shrank her pupils and looked at the people outside the house. Brothers, and the couple in the house, her voice sounded shrill as if it came from hell. The flesh and bones changed for a while, returning to their original appearance. How did you recognize me? She wondered why the Kents might know someone who could disguise themselves, but why did Clark recognize her just by looking at her? Is Aunt Catherine's death an accident or did you do it? Clark naturally didn't answer but stepped forward to ask. Although it's less fun to be seen through, it doesn't prevent me from killing you. Let's start with you, Martha. When her mother's death was mentioned, an angry Tina looked past the two of them and stared at Martha. Cracking the grass, leaping to crash into the house, trying to kill Martha. Creator's thoughts. The board rider 69. Creation is hard. Cheer me up. Don't forget to review 5 stars. Comment. 10 comments. Chapter 26. What happened between the two brothers? Swish. As for the shotgun in Jonathan's hand, it was no different from a fire stick in Tina's eyes. The moment she jumped up, blades of grass splashed into the air, and the flow of time in the whole world seemed to slow down a hundred times. Clark jumped out with a strong force, picked up Tina by the waist, grabbed her, and ran away. Even after seeing Tina's slowness, he was confident of subduing her. But judging from Tina's step on the grass, the force must be quite strong. Even if she casually smashed the railing in front of the door, it might turn the pieces of wood into bullets. 
Clark wanted no accidents. After Clark and Tina disappeared, David aimed and chased in one direction at the speed of a normal athlete. I'm going to help Clark, father, protect mother. David, don't go. Jonathan, holding a shotgun, wanted to call his son, but his son had already run away and was nowhere to be seen. David looked back to confirm that his parents were out of sight, and his speed suddenly increased. Suburban Road, under the lights. Clark slowed down and wanted to put Tina down, but Tina reacted in a flash, clasped her hands together, and slammed Clark in his back hard. Boom, there was a dull sound. Like being hit on the back by a car, Clark was caught off guard and fell to the ground, cracking the road surface, and the small stones on the road were shaken up. You are powered too, Clark. Seeing that Clark was not dead, Tina grabbed Clark by the neck and was about to lift him up. Clark grabbed her wrist firmly, restraining her movements, with a serious expression. Tina, you can turn back before you make a bigger mistake. He caught Tina's anger just now. There may be something hidden about Aunt Catherine's death, and Tina did not do it. In that case, she hasn't killed anyone but only just robbed the bank. A mistake. Tina sneered. I just make good use of my abilities to strive for happiness, what's wrong with me? She was just about to use her strength to see who was stronger, whether her or Clark. Boom, a cold figure struck fiercely like a lightning bolt and punched Tina's face fiercely with his fist. An air wave erupted, and Tina rolled and flew backward, brushing across the lake like a pebble thrown hard, and quickly collided with the ground several times and fell tens of meters away. Even Clark, who was caught, was implicated, flew six or seven meters, and fell to the ground. Who? Tina's face was red like a scratch, she stood up and looked at the person angrily. With an indifferent face, David appeared under the light and touched his fist. Your bones are pretty hard. Just now, it felt like hitting high-density alloy on the woman's cheekbone. David. Tina vaguely recognized David and turned her eyes to Clark who got up, with a fierce expression on her face. One brother is powered, the other brother is a monster. But your family shouldn't provoke me. She was faster than a running cheetah, and she ran tens of meters in a blink of an eye, punching David through the air and roaring. Surprise from Tina plus 0.4, anger plus 0.6. Boom, the fist was as fast as a bullet and carried astonishing force. David stepped back to avoid the punch, and when she tried to hit again, he grabbed her wrist. Tina tried to break free, feeling as if caught by iron clamps. The strength is good, but it's a pity that it's a full female hair-pulling fighting style. There is no way to speak. His eyes were cold, and he exerted force on his hands, with hundreds of tons of force exerting pressure on her. Let me go. Tina screamed with a fierce face, and her other fist tore through the air and hit David's head. As if he didn't see it at all, David didn't move his body, but suddenly exerted force on his hand. The force reached thousands of tons. Under this terrifying force, the steel ingot would also be crushed into iron mud. Cluck. Halfway through the swing of her fist, bone-piercing pain came from the wrist. Tina screamed and put down her hand like an electric shock as if pulling David's palm, but she couldn't do it at all. She looked at that handsome and cold face, feeling as if she was facing a ruthless and cold-blooded terrifying creature, which made her feel terrified. Die, David. Under the crisis, the flesh on Tina's face deformed like mud and turned into a woman's face with fine lines at the corners of her eyes, and her expression deliberately became extremely painful. Tina became Martha's face, and she thought David's instinct was to let go when he saw his mother's pain face in front of him. David did exactly that, letting go of his hand like an electric shock. How dare you? But in the next moment, he reacted, furious in his heart. Before Tina could escape, she felt a hand that seemed to be made of steel grabbed her head, and her face fell down and hit the ground hard. Boom, gravel splashed, and Tina's entire head was almost roughly pushed into the ground. Cluck cluck, ahh. Tina screamed, trying to raise her head, but under the force of that big hand, her skull made an overwhelming sound, and the fear of death filled her body and mind. Help, help. She shouted for help, and a vague voice came from the ground. David was unmoved at all, his face was cold, and he raised his fist to smash it down. Click, let go, David. Clark hurried up and grabbed David's wrist. This time he didn't hold back his hand anymore, and quickly increased his strength, but when he found that even with his maximum strength, he couldn't pull David away, he stared at him in surprise. Clark was just about to use his hands. Get out of the way. David swung his clenched arm back, and Clark was thrown flying as if weightless, and he threw his fist down. Boom, Tina was like a drowning person struggling and thumping her hands powerlessly to the ground, her head buried in the soil and she didn't move anymore. Tina. Clark yelled, rushing to Tina's side and flipping the dead man over. Fortunately, there is still breathing. It's just, she couldn't wake up. You beat people into a vegetative state again. He glared at his younger brother angrily. She dared to look like mother, you should be happy if I didn't kill her. David stood up, clapped his hands, looked down at his feet, and said in a cold tone, Fear from Tina plus 0.8, doubt plus 0, 3, anxiety plus 1.0, anxiety, anxiety, fear plus 1.2, fear, fear. A complete process, when a person passes out and finds that he is still conscious, wondering why he couldn't manipulate his body, followed by anxiously trying again, then realizing something, and finally fear. He didn't kill Tina. In prisons for serious criminals, criminals who disobey and make trouble are often punished by being locked up in a small dark room. There was only a faint line of light between the prison door, and the place was too narrow to walk two steps. In the darkness, no one talked to them, and they couldn't even see their hands clearly. Generally, no matter how cruel the prisoner is, he will become honest after being locked up in the small black room for three days. And waiting for Tina will be an enhanced version of the decades-long black house. By the icy cold lake exuding cold air, cars parked by the lake and lit bonfires. At noon on the holiday, a lively outdoor barbecue party. David and Chloe sat by the fire, grilling meat. David, Clark, what's the matter with you? Chloe, who was wearing a down jacket, wondered, if I remember correctly, I haven't seen you both talking for several days, your mood's as cold as this lake. Pete rubbed his body deliberately, his voice trembling, pretending to be frozen to death, and his teeth chattering. God, help me. He deliberately made an exaggerated and funny look, trying to create a lively and relaxed atmosphere and give the two a chance to reconcile. I don't feel cold, Clark said in a dull voice, turning over the roasted beef. David took a sip of the cold fruit beer and looked at the lake in the distance as if he didn't hear it. Did you come from an icy alien planet? Chloe was curious. She had never seen anything like this between the two of them before. What happened between the two brothers? Creator's thoughts. The board rider 69. Creation is hard. Cheer me up. Don't forget to give five stars. Comment. 
12 comments. Chapter 27, Pot King Clark 4. Spring was still in full swing, and even the chilly riverside couldn't resist the eagerness of a group of high school students for the holiday barbecue party. Template Fusion, 93%. After taking a sip of fruit beer, David stared at the frozen river in the distance. A few days earlier, the pair of brothers had returned home after he had turned Tina into a vegetable. His father, Jonathan, was holding a shotgun and worriedly waited at the door. He was relieved to see that both his sons had returned safely. He scolded David on why he went to catch up with Clark. In order not to worry his parents, Clark took the initiative to say that he knocked Tina unconscious and put her in front of the Smallville police station. Later police found the stolen $100,000 in Tina's school locker. However, due to the lack of evidence, Tina, who was still unconscious for some reason, was temporarily taken into custody as a suspect and admitted to the hospital. Clark was in a rare case of being angry with David after that day and didn't speak to him for a few days. Although David was embarrassed to let Clark take the blame again, he didn't think it was a big problem. Clark, the son of Krypton, who keeps saying that he can't cross the line, will break the neck of Zid with his own hands in the future, who was his last connection to Krypton. 10. Clark was not actually so stubborn and rigid, but he is too young now, and he is still somewhat idealistic about everything in the world. Beside the campfire, David shook his palms, feeling as if the muscles of high-density alloy were twisted together, comparable to the surging power of a volcanic eruption. The Thanos template gave him a very strong strength. But it's not enough. Even a fully-fledged Superman has encountered life-threatening dangers many times in this dangerous world, and the Earth has encountered crises of almost being destroyed many times. It is not uncommon for the Earth to be completely destroyed. Looking up at the sky, David's eyes seemed to be able to see the universe beyond the blue sky. He integrated the Thanos template, but he was not born with the ambition to dominate the universe or was pretentious to take on any heavy responsibility related to the safety of the universe. He has only one goal in mind for the time being. Constantly improve your strength to ensure that you can protect yourself and your family no matter what happens. 5. This goal is simple but not simple at the same time. Therefore, he will not miss the opportunity to obtain emotional points. I hope the next template will be as powerful as Thanos. 15. Since what happened during this period is unprecedented, and Clark's strength is growing rapidly as he grows up, the emotional points he provides are also changing. Due to the many emotional points, the template is fusing very quickly, and the next template should not be far away. Expectation flashed in David's eyes, and he took another sip of wine quietly, thinking silently. 2. It's better to add some superpowers that don't affect the body. 3. That way, he doesn't have to hide from his parents and make them worry about what happened a few days ago. In the distance, there was a sudden commotion. There was a beautiful figure full of energy who looked intelligent, walking into the party, like a silvery white moonlight in the dark night. It looked like there was nothing else except her in the eyes of the crowd, and the eyes of all the boys followed closely. 2. Many boys held the grilled steaks, acting like bees and butterflies who seemed to have discovered the flowers, got up and rushed forward to invite her to sit together, and some of them almost fought. Sorry. The girl politely and politely refused one by one with confidence and without any nervousness. The eyes of the four of them were also attracted to her. Who is that? She looks a bit like Lana. Clark tilted his head and asked them doubtfully, there was such a beautiful girl, but he didn't have much impression. Is this the excuse you made for yourself before you moved on? David said lightly, looking at the girl whom they had never seen in school before. I really think so, Clark argued in a muffled voice. I don't see any resemblance, Clark. Chloe agreed with David's opinion, and said in an unnatural tone, except for her black hair, her facial features and temperament have almost nothing in common. She just transferred to our school. I remember her name is Kyla. 6. Looking at the figure, Pete stared straight at the figure, as if his soul had been hooked away. Maybe, my youth officially started today. 2. Looking at her temperament like a female jungle explorer, I think she might not like a man who is a head shorter than herself. Looking at the figure that was the focus of the crowd's eyes, Chloe, sitting on the fringes of the party with no one to talk to, is a little sullen. Chloe, I seem to smell a sour smell. 1. When the most fatal shortcoming was mentioned, Pete gritted his teeth and turned his head angrily. He was just having late development. Just after finishing speaking, the beautiful figure not far away seemed to look over here. Look, she is looking towards us. She was tall, her skin looked closer to a healthy wheat color, her black hair was braided at the back, her facial features were somewhat beautiful of mixed race, and she wears an aboriginal mask around her neck as jewelry. She looked to have a raw and vibrant beauty. 1. Pete coughed excitedly, adjusted his sitting posture, and stopped peeking at the other party, pretending to be a very storytelling and deep look while roasting the meat, trying to find another way to attract the other party's attention. But after a few seconds, he turned around and saw that Kyla had already sat down with a few girls chatting with them with a smile, and started the barbecue as if she didn't pay attention to them at all. He immediately deflated like a popped balloon. Curiosity from Kyla plus 0.04, doubt plus 0.03, kindness plus 0.02, vigilance plus 0.02. David took a drink of fruit beer and squinted at the figure. An ability user. 5. In this small town, this is not much of a surprise. But why are you kind and doubtful of yourself, and become vigilant after getting close? Isn't this too contradictory? This series of emotional changes is confusing. Clark didn't look at Kyla like the other three but looked at Lana in the distance feeling depressed. On the rocks in the distance, Whitney leaned next to Lana, and Lana roasted the meat by herself. Whitney pestered her to say a few words, and Lana would reply occasionally, with a hint of sadness rather than joy in her eyes. But looking at the couple who broke up can still sit and chat together, which could explain the problem. It was just like, Clark, who was angry a few days ago, if he was really as angry as he was at the beginning, then when Chloe and Pete teased him and David, he would not deliberately say something that was not cold at all. Clark looked back, while turning over the beef on the grill pan, and glanced at David next to him. Tina was beaten into a vegetable by his younger brother. He was undoubtedly a little angry at the beginning for what his younger brother did. But he had to admit that when Tina shifted into his mother Martha, he also felt an uncontrollable anger rising in his heart. Especially when I think of Tina trying to kill Ma afterward, I can't feel much sympathy for her. Clark was more worried about his brother, and he was also worried about himself. According to the current situation, would he not be able to bring his brother back on track? It seemed that he was gradually going to be changed by his younger brother first, and he was getting used to this cruel behavior. Clark, don't just watch. Pete scolded his friend and winked, interrupting Clark's thinking. 
Whitney is aggressively making attempts and wants to get back together with Lana. Are you sitting here like a coward? 2. I. Clark's character was indeed a bit shy. He couldn't compete with Whitney for Lana when he was around. Seeing his appearance, Pete shook his head secretly. Lana has been volunteering in the nursing home for the elderly in the town for the past two weeks. David suddenly said, Whitney will be training with the football players tomorrow weekend. Clark, you haven't completed your 30 hours of community service, have you? 14. He said, turning his head to look at Clark. The school stipulates that students must do 30 hours of community service each semester to cultivate students' awareness of giving back to society. Clark's eyes lit up, and he immediately realized that this was a good opportunity for him. Thanks, thanks, David. He said, a little embarrassed. His younger brother was always smarter than him and has good tricks. You're welcome. David took a sip of fruit beer. Thinking about it, you have helped me twice by taking a pot, and you are my older brother. How can I not give back? T slash N, pot king x danzo x Clark. Clark, what pot? Chloe asked curiously. 1. Creator's thoughts. The board rider 69. Creation is hard, cheer me up, don't forget to give 5 stars. Comment. 6 comments. Chapter 28, The Old Lady That Can Predict the Future. To Chloe's question, Clark just answered vaguely to deal with it. It just so happens that we can go together. Pete suggested that several people go together, and then spread his hands. It's a pity that it's not summer, otherwise I can go to the swimming pool and be a lifeguard. That way, I don't have to deal with the old people wearing diapers, but now that the weather hasn't completely warmed up, it's better to volunteer indoors than to pick up the garbage and clean the streets outside. Chloe's community service hours had been already filled so she declined the offer. She's not only paying attention to me, but also towards Clark. David observed. Although that Kyla was chatting and having a barbecue with a few girls, her eyes secretly glanced here from time to time. He was watching her secretly, and the other party was also watching him and Clark secretly. What does this guy want? Chloe, you look cold, do you want me to warm you up? A school team member with thick blonde short hair and wearing a football uniform came over. He looked handsome and smiled and motioned to Chloe. I can't believe you said such a thing so easily. Warm you up, the words were so fierce and straightforward. Chloe was surprised and shy. Don't get me wrong, I have a blanket, would you like to sit with me? Sean raised his eyebrows and motioned over there. 1. Sean, you're not her type. Pete stood up, even though he was a head shorter, he was not afraid to meet Sean's eyes. David had heard of this Sean, he was smooth-tongued, tricked girls into liking him, and broke up not long after, he was a complete scumbag. Biology class, you were assigned by the teacher to do experiments with Jenna from the next class. 1. As a reporter for the school newspaper, Chloe had naturally heard of Sean's reputation, so she laughed. I heard you dumped her last week. To be precise, we dumped each other. Sean didn't panic, seeing Chloe smile, he felt certain and more confident. Want to sit with me together, I promise I won't do anything, no matter how beautiful you are in my eyes. Finally, his tone was gentle, and he looked at it with his best eyes, his affection seemed to melt people. A blush appeared on Chloe's face. Few people have praised her so much, who said that no one likes her. She glanced at Pete who said she was jealous of Kira earlier, and opened her mouth to say something. I, Chloe, you haven't even taken a sip of wine, only just warmed up by the fire, are you still so impulsive? David said suddenly, young people in adolescence often like to do things on a whim without considering the consequences. Stay away. He looked at Sean and said only two words. Sean's eyes dodged. He had heard that David singled out Whitney and the others and raised his hand to express his surrender. Okay, okay. There was no hope of picking up the girl, so he had to turn around and leave frustrated and went to play rugby by the lake with some friends who greeted him. Actually, I just want to give him a phone number and send him away. After Sean left, Chloe calmed down and turned red to some friends who were looking at her, wanting to hold her respect. I'm not stupid. David shrugged and said, just pretend you're telling the truth. Chloe was ashamed for a while, but in the end, she thanked David and Pete and understood their kindness. 2. Clark watched silently, thinking about one thing. When family members are threatened, he will be angry and make enemies feel like thunder. When friends are in trouble, he will remind each other to help and make friends feel warm like a spring breeze. Is my brother really gradually putting himself above others in his heart, or is it just my delusion? 2. Treating the enemies with ruthlessness, in the end, is it wrong? 5. He shook his head violently at this question. I can't think about it anymore, and I feel that my thoughts will be changed by my brother first. David looked at Clark with a puzzled face, watching him stare blankly for a while, shaking his head for a while, wondering what kind of thoughts he was having. By the lake. Here comes the pizza you bought. Sean, catch it. Hearing that the pizza arrived, a player threw the football Sean jumped trying to catch it but still passed by. The football belonging to Sean flew 70 or 80 meters away toward the ice. Seeing that everyone else went to eat pizza, he angrily went to pick up the ball. On the cold, hard, and slippery ice, Sean had just picked up the ball when he heard a crisp sound. Kachuk. What sound? Sean seemed to be soaked in cold water, afraid, and looked down trembling all over his body. Cracks appeared on the ice under his feet, and he didn't dare to act rashly, just about to shout for help. Save. The ice shattered and he fell into the icy lake. Struggling and leaving the original position, Sean was unable to break through the ice, drowned and suffocated, and soon became silent, his hands and feet stopped moving, and sank to the bottom of the lake. In the mud at the bottom of the lake, there was a dim green light. 9. A large mass of pieces of meteorites looked to be accumulated together. After falling on the meteorite, in the cold lake water, the blood vessels on Sean's body bulged and turned green, and some amazing changes were secretly happening. The few football players focused on eating the delicious steaming pizza, and no one noticed the missing Sean. 7. The dealer gets 12.5, the feed cost is 5% for 6 months, plus 8.2 for the mortgage, plus the cost of repairing the lawnmower. Waking up early in the morning, Martha and Jonathan frowned, using the calculators to calculate their income and expenses for the past 6 months. 1. $54,501. Clark listened for a few seconds and got the answer one step ahead of the calculator. He scratched his face in embarrassment at the cost of a lawnmower repair. If I hadn't put my hand into the lawnmower that day, we would have saved a lot of dollars in repairs. Now it's counted as income. Jonathan didn't reprimand his eldest son and took the bill lightly. David glanced at the remaining ledgers before Jonathan started pressing the calculator. The income is $67,357. It sounds like our farm earned more than $10,000 in the past six months. 1. 
He raised his eyebrows. The couple put down the bills and calculators, and let out a sigh of relief. Martha smiled as she faced her two sons who had been smart since childhood. At least there is no loan, right? Besides, the most precious wealth in our family is the two of you. These are not your things to worry about. Didn't you make an appointment with Pete to do volunteer work in the community? Go. Jonathan waved his hand, driving away his two sons who had not yet entered college and worrying about money. The burden of life should not be on the two children. Coming to the nursing home in the town. Room 206 needs an attendant. Please report to room 206. A voice came from the radio. Every student has to do 30 hours of community service, and David is no exception. The three of them came to the nursing home together and received their tasks. A pretty black-haired girl in a magenta single-piece dress came out of a room pushing a cart full of books. Hi, Lana, what a coincidence, you're here too. Clark waved his hand and greeted, pretending to meet by chance, but his lingering voice was a little nervous. Are you a volunteer here too? It's been a while. Lana greeted the three of them and smiled lightly. What tasks have you been assigned? I need to accompany Cassandra to read a book. David and Pete did not speak and gave Clark the opportunity to communicate with Lana. David's task was to accompany an old lady to play chess. Cassandra? She's very interesting. Lana smiled with a smile on her face. The nurses all say that she can predict the future, as short as a few minutes, and as long as predicting the whole life of others. Have you tried it, Lana? Hearing Clark's question, Lana didn't speak and shrugged, obviously not believing this, and then pushed the cart and left to deliver books to the next old person. Predict the future. Pete didn't respond, David raised his eyebrows, while Clark paid more attention to Lana's leaving back. Russell, in the room, an old lady wearing blind glasses, with gray hair and a kind face, was reading a book in braille with her hands. Don't stand there, it's the first time for three people to study with me, please come in, she said suddenly. The three of them at the door looked at each other. Joy from Cassandra plus one, plus 1.2. David's eyes flickered, secretly looking at the old lady. She is really a powered person, and her ability is not weak, but he didn't know if she could predict the future. However, does this old lady really need someone to accompany her? How to accompany her in reading braille? How do you know there are three of us? Pete was puzzled when he entered the room. Although my eyes are blind, my ears are not deaf. Cassandra's short answers did not completely clear Pete's doubts. Is blind people's hearing so good? 6. Cassandra took off her blind glasses and accidentally dropped the book on her lap. Pete, who was standing in front of the two, stepped forward to help pick it up, and accidentally touched the old lady's hand. What's your name, sir? The old lady put the book away slowly and asked. Pete Ross. Mr. Ross, you will have a long way home today, take a look in your pocket. Cassandra smiled mysteriously. Pete felt in his pocket and found that his car keys were missing, and he didn't know where he left them. I'll take a step back first. It seems that I can't do my volunteer work today. You two brothers, take care of yourself. He looked at the old lady in surprise, a look of strangeness and thankfulness flashed across his face, and said to the two, after Pete left, are you two brothers? Cassandra looked at the two of them, got up from the chair, looked completely blind, and pointed her face at the two with a kind smile. What's your name, gentlemen? Two, creator's thoughts, the board rider 69. Like it? Add to library. Don't forget to review five stars. Comment. 10 comments. Chapter 29, no trace of ever existing on the world. By the quiet lake near the forest, all that was left after last night's party was a mess. Boom, a hand suddenly broke through the thick ice, like a zombie hand that broke through the ground in the horror stories and stretched out from the lake. The skin was icy blue like a corpse frozen to death by ice and cold. A figure crawled out of the lake and staggered to the river bank. His body was wet and shivering nonstop, like a person who fell into an icy lake and climbed out. It was very normal, except that he had been lying in the lake all night. Sean's eyebrows were covered with icicles, and he sat on the ground shivering, lighting a small fire with an abandoned lighter. He stretched out his frozen hands to warm himself by the fire. But the flames containing large amounts of heat were absorbed into space, and the freshly lit firewood turned into an ice pile. The thick ice cold on his body was dispelled, and the icy blue color of his skin faded. Looking like he was starting to look like a living person again, Sean couldn't believe it. Looking at his hands, his mind was slightly frozen, and his thoughts turned. It seemed that something incredible happened to him. He clenched his fist, feeling that he had never been in such good condition, feeling horribly strong. After recovering his health, he was ready to go home, but just as he walked out of the woods, the extremely cold came again. Icicles formed on his eyebrows, Sean tremblingly waved to the passing cars for help. Son, what's the matter with you? A car stopped, and the uncle who just got off and just supported him with concern, had his body frozen. In the next moment, his body heat was sucked away like a tide, and his whole body turned into an ice sculpture, which smashed straight onto the hard road and shattered into bloody ice slag. Sean's cold condition improved, and at the same time, his whole body became stronger, and he stretched out his hand to lift the car as easily as a plastic toy. He realized something in an instant, and looked towards a certain direction of the town, like a greedy gold miner who just found a mountain of gold, with unprecedented excitement and a fiery look in his eyes, he couldn't help swallowing. There was, a thermal power station. The heavy curtains made of fine wool were drawn to block the sunlight outside. A fire burned quietly in the fireplace. Luther took a sip of whiskey, his throat felt like it was on fire, but there was no movement on his face. He browsed the old news on the computer and the posts on the forum by the townspeople as usual. On a nearby table were stacks of dollars. The door of the room was opened by a servant. A middle-aged man in a windbreaker walked in, with shrewd eyes flashing from time to time. His hair was slightly bald, giving off a shrewd and cunning look. With a craft file bag in his hand, he patted his thigh leisurely. Mr. Luther, are you ready with the money I want? Roger Nixon, if I remember correctly. Luther stood up slowly and poured some transparent brown wine into the glass and handed it to him, smiling. A reporter from the Metropolitan Inquisitor? You said you have something you want to show me. This photo has recently skyrocketed our sales. Nixon took out a newspaper from his bag. The eye-catching printed photos in the center of the newspaper photographed the scene of Lex Luthor holding a pistol at the door of the bank, just grabbing the money and rushing out of the door. It's already in the past. Luther chuckled, I think Mr. Nixon, as a reporter, you will not be ignorant of the latest developments in the bank robbery case. The news is like this, it can easily become outdated. It is very difficult for your articles to occupy the headlines all the time. 
Nixon shook his head. Mr. Luther, have you ever dug potatoes? Before Luther could answer, he stared into Luther's eyes, as if he had firmly controlled the situation, and smiled triumphantly. I imagine that someone like you who was born with a golden spoon in his mouth probably doesn't know that when digging potatoes, one can easily bring out a bunch of them. Nixon raised the document bag in his hand and sighed as he looked it over, handing it to him. It's so thick, it's almost as thick as a wad of banknotes. It's really surprising that you had a criminal record while you were a minor. It seems that you didn't lie to me on the phone, and really know something about my wild teenage days. After taking over the file, and flipping through it, Luther's voice was low, and a smile appeared on his face. Thank you very much, Mr. Nixon. Thank you. Nixon was puzzled, thanking him for what? To blackmail? This is full of electronic records that have been destroyed and files that have been sealed. How did you find it? He walked back to his desk, sat down slowly, and asked. It seems that your father must have spent a lot of money to cover up these files. I'm not as rich as your father, but fortunately, it doesn't cost much to buy a guard in the filing room that's full of files collecting dust on the shelves. Nixon sneered. Thanks to a guard who was bored and liked to browse through the files, he gave himself a story. Think about the effect of these things if they are published. I just found out that the exiled heir of the Luthor Corp actually had a lot of bad deeds when he was young, and robbing a bank is nothing at all. Based on my experience as a reporter, people just like to reverse and mislead the plot. He put down his glass, shrugged, secretly glanced at the brand new $100,000 on the table, and talked eloquently. This must have some impact on Luthor Corp's stock price. Mr. Nixon, the money is yours. Luthor took out a black cloth bag from under the table with a slow smile. Mr. Luthor, are you still providing a bag for the money? Nixon was a little surprised and put the wads of money on the table into the bag. You must be feeling good now. Luthor was not in a hurry as he watched him pack up the money he extorted from himself. It feels good to have won against the famous Luther and his son. After packing the money, he smiled and threw down a sentence that made him sound like an adult teaching a child, turned to leave, and just as his hand was about to touch the doorknob, the one I gave you is the only copy. Live an honest life in the future, Lex Luthor. If you walk out of this door now, I guarantee that you will disappear from this world immediately. Luthor put down his wine glass, saying threatening words casually with a smile. What are you going to do, kill me for this little money? Nixon turned around and asked disdainfully, Do you think I came to blackmail a billionaire heir unprepared? If he doesn't return on time, the mail containing evidence will automatically be forwarded to the major newspapers, and is $100,000 worth being murdered by Luthor? He was not greedy and only asked for a small amount for a billionaire. No, you will live well. But there will be no evidence of your existence in the world. He shook his head. What are you saying? The driver's license, passport, bank account, and even tax payment records will be all gone. Continuing to browse the news on the computer, Luthor spoke casually, as if talking about an insignificant matter. One phone call and there will be no evidence that you have lived. Mr. Luthor, are you trying to scare me? Call the bank to see if your account is still there. Luthor looked up at the guy who still doubted the common sense of the world. If your mobile phone number is still there. He took out his mobile phone and wanted to make a call, but Nixon couldn't make a call after several attempts. Cold sweat oozes from his forehead, his face becomes flustered, and his voice was tense and shrill. How did you do it? Creator's thoughts. The board rider 69. Creation is hard. Cheer me up. Give your power stones. Don't forget to review 5 stars. Comment. 4 comments. Chapter 30, Light is always better than darkness 4. Don't worry, Mr. Jack. In the office, Luthor slightly leaned forward, crossing his hands, like a dangerous crocodile finally showing his bloody mouth, and sneered, a wonderful new life is waiting for you. My, my name is Nixon. That's in the past, I will give you a new identity, named Jack. What about your surname? Baker? Benson? Why don't we call Choose Johnson? 1. His tone seemed to be like deciding what to have for lunch today, instead of reshaping his life, Nixon felt as if he was falling into an abyss, and his spine felt chills. What profession would you like to have? Killer, drug dealer, gangster, or terrorist? All of them are identities that will inevitably be wanted for murder. Listen, I can give you the money back. He swallowed and quickly put the bag on the table. Family, work, friends. He couldn't accept everything he built in his life being taken from him. Was my money kept like this at the beginning? Luther raised his eyebrows in surprise. Nixon hurriedly took out the money from the bag with trembling hands and feet, put the wads of cash back to their original positions, wiping some cold sweat from his brow, seemed to be looking at a devil who could decide his life and death with a single word, and looked at Lex, nervously showing an ugly smile. Mr. Luther, do you think you can blackmail me? Do you think I'm a pampered child who needs to be protected by someone? Luther got up from the chair slowly and with an expression like a ghost who wanted to devour someone, his voice suddenly became louder and angry, making Nixon tremble with fear, almost making him kneel down in fright. You are not the first person to think so, and the person I made disappear has never appeared again. Do you think you are someone who makes me afraid? Lou, Mr. Luthor, what do you want of me? As if facing the shocking wave that would slap him down at any time and turn him into a pulp, Nixon was terrified and begged for mercy in a trembling voice. Go secretly investigate something for me. Yes, please tell me. There is a family named Kent in this small town who runs a farm. Luther turned and opened the curtains, and the sunlight came in, but Nixon couldn't see through his dark eyes. I want their information, every little detail. I will. Nixon hurriedly nodded and agreed, I will definitely investigate it for you. And, what else, Mr. Luthor? Seeing Luthor sweeping his head back, he quickly lowered his head like a loyal servant. This is a mysterious town. The corner of Luther's mouth curled up, and he looked out at the manor again and said softly, Although I have only been here for a few days, I have seen a corner of her mysterious veil, and I can't help but dream about it. First, Clark, who was hit by a sports car at 200 kilometers per hour and fell off the bridge, but still survived and saved his life. Then there was a female high school student who turned into him to rob a bank. All kinds of strange things circulating in the small town that he saw on the internet. I want to know everything about this mystery. You will, Mr. Luthor. After dismissing the reporter who had just been accepted as a dog by him, Luther watched him drive away, took a sip of wine slowly, and murmured with a low smile. Thank you, Nixon. It's a good thing it was a stupid and cowardly person like you who discovered one of my loopholes ahead of time, and not someone else who was more troublesome. And just when I was short of manpower, you came to my door. 3. What are your names, gentlemen? In the nursing home, Cassandra, with white eyes and gray hair, smiled kindly. My name is Clark. David Kent. 1. 
Clark reported his name first, followed by David. Kent brothers, come sit down. The old woman with a gentle temperament pointed to the bed not far in front of her. Ma'am, I heard that you can predict the future. When the two sat down, Clark glanced at his younger brother, believing that he had the same idea as himself after encountering several powered people in a row. He turned his head and hesitated, but couldn't help asking, is it true? Who wouldn't be curious about the future? Especially knowing that this foretelling of the future might not be fake. The first time it happened, I thought it was a curse, a hallucination. As long as there is physical contact with people, fragments of uncontrollable events will appear before the eyes. Cassandra laughed. It turned out that it was a gift from God to make up for my eyes. Clark was surprised. The old lady in front of him didn't seem to care about hiding her ability at all and casually talked about it to the people she met for the first time. He began to have some doubts. Does the other party really have abilities? Only liars can't wait to show off themselves. But what happened to Pete just now proved something miraculous. Clark, stop thinking about doubts. Unlike Clark, David mostly confirmed that the other party can really predict the future and said slowly, I think when you reach Ms. Cassandra's age, you will treat some things indifferently. Looking carefully again, the old lady really gave off a feeling of indifference after aging. Clark suddenly realized and apologized. Sorry, Ms. Cassandra. It's okay. The old woman smiled, not caring about the doubts. When was the first time you foresaw the events? Clark always had doubts that all the strange things in the town started to happen after the meteorite rain. He has a very strong hunch that those ability users are related to the meteorite, but there is no evidence to be sure. One morning, I woke up as usual, and then the meteorite fell and hit the wheat field in front of my house. The doctor judged that the flash burned my optic nerve and changed my life in a short moment. Sorry. Looking at the old woman who calmly recounted the past, Clark looked a bit sad and his voice was dull. The meteorite rain came with him, and it was he who brought the disaster and changed the lives of many people. It's not your fault, kid. Cassandra laughed, thinking he was sorry for letting her talk about her blindness. Kindness is a good thing. Seeing Clark with guilt in his eyes, David pointed out, but there are some things in the world that are beyond your control, my brother. He was sent to earth by force, not by choice, he shouldn't have to always take the burden on himself. Being comforted by his younger brother, Clark felt a little better. At the same time, he was a little puzzled. How could his younger brother comfort himself for such a small emotional matter for the first time? Since then, I can no longer see the present in front of me, but I can see the future of others. As she spoke, she stretched out her hand in a gentle voice. Son, do you want to try it? Looking at the old lady in front of him, Clark hesitated, wondering if activating that ability would consume energy or something. He came here as a volunteer to accompany the elderly to study, not to let the elderly help him answer questions about the future. At the same time, outside the room, a tall and beautiful black-haired figure walked up to the door silently, like a hunter who had experience living in the jungle, with her back against the wall, listening to the conversation inside. 4. Occasionally glimpses of the world with eyes can only be in the future of others. David pondered. That's why you often help people predict the future and point out their troubles, right Ms. Cassandra? He could see that this old lady was inexplicably active in helping people predict the future. Son, you're smart. Cassandra nodded approvingly in his direction. The world is so beautiful, full of colors, clouds as white as cotton, beautiful green grass, and a clear blue sky. Light is always better than darkness, especially for a person who once had sight. She said with nostalgia. Hearing this, Clark no longer hesitated and stretched out his hand to the kind and blind old woman in front of him. I'm sorry for hesitating, ma'am. Creator's thoughts. The board rider 69. Creation is hard. Cheer me up. Like it? Add to library. Don't forget to give 5 stars. Comment. 9 comments. Chapter 31. The future that Clark saw. Clark reached out and touched the wrinkled hand of the old woman. After a few seconds, his vision blurred. It was as if the world had changed. A scene of catastrophe like the beginning of a doomsday. The bloody dusk shrouded the sky, and pierced high-rise buildings, and collapsed houses. The fire was burning, and black smoke pierced into the sky like a column. The crowd fled in all directions, and the voices of thousands of desperate cries pierced into his ears like the sound of hell. There was a thick ravine shaped like it was drawn by a giant finger. Clark's whole body was in severe pain as if he had been hit by a meteorite. He was lying at the end of the ravine, looking up with difficulty. A black-haired man wearing a black battle suit full of dark golden mysterious patterns, with a strong and slender body, slowly descended from the sky. Half a meter away from the ground, the gravel on the ground spontaneously flew up to protect him like a celestial body. The extremely strong momentum was like a majestic god descending on the world, overwhelming all people. David. Seeing such a terrible scene, and seeing his strange yet familiar brother, Clark was extremely shocked. He seems to be in a dream, only capable of watching, not being able to use his body, and not even being capable of using speech, only having a limited perspective. Clark, look around. David shook his head slightly with a lava-like red glow in his eyes. I didn't want to do this at first. You're so bad that you forced me to do this. What do you mean? Clark was shocked and puzzled. Did David do these things? Thoughts flashed randomly. He refused to give in to David, David, and he fought till the destruction of a city. Wait a minute, this looks like Metropolis. Clark recognized it. In the distance, on the top of the Daily Planet building, the iconic golden statue of the Earth, looked as if it had been used as a weapon by someone, looked to be smashed through several buildings, and fell to the ground. Could it be that what I was worried about happened? David lost his power and went on the path of evil. I stood on the opposite side to stop him. He wondered in his heart. As if wanting to verify Clark's thoughts, he felt endless anger bursting out of his heart in the future, and the anger in his eyes was about to erupt like a volcano. Brother, you need to be corrected. The future self roared with an imposing and cold, and jumped up, punching his younger brother, like a god launching a charge against another hostile god. Swish, a lightning-like golden rope flew over in an instant, wrapping around his waist. Almost at the same time, several green chains that seemed to be made of green crystal wrapped around his body like snakes, and several huge nails nailed the chains to the ground, preventing him from moving forward. His forward movement was suddenly stopped and he was severely grabbed. The body that flew like a cannonball stopped, and only set off a wave of air to spread away. Only tens of centimeters away, the two were about to collide face to face, and David was suspended in the air without blinking. You need to be fixed, my brother. Who helped David? Clark wondered. The future Clark turned his head angrily and saw a heroic and beautiful figure like a war goddess, wearing a crown and armored battle skirt, smashing the ground, and tightly grasping the golden rope. 
On the other side, a brown-haired man in green luminous tights, with a serious face written on his usual casual smiling face, flew in midair, with an emerald-like ring emitting light on his hand, trying to maintain his chains and nails focusing on them not torn to pieces. The two clenched their teeth, unable to speak a word with great difficulty, and went all out to catch the future Clark who was like a mad bull. David's helper. Clark was startled. Are these David's evil allies, or his minions? Boom, before he could think about it, David came to him at lightning speed, punching him like a meteorite and knocking him back to the ground. In the future, Clark's body slammed into a deep pit more than 10 meters wide, and the turbulent force like a raging sea was transmitted to dozens of streets. Like an earthquake, several surrounding buildings kept shaking, and the glass was shattered one after another. Snapped, what should I do? Came a deep and deep voice. A hook was nailed to the wall of the building, and a bat-like figure swung over. He opened his black bat-wing-like cloak and landed steadily on the ground, with a cold expression that no strangers should enter, and the dark temperament on his body was like the dark clouds over Gotham in the legend that would never dissipate, making people unconsciously feel oppressed and fear. Clark originally doubted the reality of these futures, whether his younger brother had really embarked on the dark road, but suddenly the balance in his heart was shaken. He looked carefully and thought that this bat monster really didn't look like a good person, as if he was born to be separated from the light. Will the people who hang out with this type of guy be good people? Clark, if our parents see this scene, they will be very sad. David frowned and raised his hand as if preparing to do something. Click, the vision suddenly shattered. Clark's consciousness returned to reality, and the shocked Ms. Cassandra turned her head to look. Cassandra opened her eyes as if predicting the end of the future, but she looked at David in surprise for the first time, and David showed some doubts. Why did she look at himself this way, instead of looking at the future related to Clark? Could it be that in Clark's future, she saw him as an alien? David, you, Clark, who had just returned to reality, suddenly stood up. A tall and sturdy chimney with a diameter of tens of meters stood on the ground. Sean withdrew his palm from above the figure intoxicated, and at his feet, a dozen factory workers turned into ice sculptures with frightened faces. Frost covered and froze a whole huge chimney. Cold and returning to normal, constantly alternating, his strength rose to a higher level every time he absorbed enough heat. Sean stopped his hands only when he felt a feeling of fullness. Now he feels extremely powerful. Excitedly, he glanced at the dozen or so deflated brass bullets on the ground. The bullets hit his body earlier, and they couldn't even tickle him. He couldn't imagine how powerful he was now, picking up a crowbar on the ground that was used as a weapon by a worker on patrol at the power plant. Crunch, tooth-piercing sound. The crowbar was twisted into twists by terrible force. It's not the limit yet. Sean pressed the twisted crowbar with both hands, exerting force, and the steel overflowed like mud between his fingers. Seeing this scene, he was ecstatic and laughed uncontrollably. The civilization of the modern world is almost built on steel, and almost nothing in the world is harder than steel, T slash N, this is from Sean's POV. Now he is powerful enough to shake the whole world, and the police can't control him. The town will be his playground from now, and he can do whatever he wants. What to start with? Go find a pretty girl and ask if she wants to experience his strong steel arms? No, a figure appeared in Sean's mind. David. The guy yesterday just cast a look and said a word, scaring him away. He said a name full of resentment, do you think you are good at fighting? Thinking of how he walked away in fear in front of several people yesterday, Sean, who didn't want to think about this embarrassing thing at all, couldn't control himself at this moment. Angry and humiliated, he gritted his teeth, I'm not who I was anymore. What about beating a few football players, now he's alone against an armed army? Leaving behind a lifeless ice sculpture, Sean clenched his fists and left the power plant, walking towards the Kent farm with a stern face. I promise, you'll regret treating me like that, David. Creator's thoughts. The board rider 69. Like it? Add to library. Don't forget to give power stones. Comment. 8 comments. Chapter 32. Can't see the future. What's wrong with me? David looked at the surprised two people in the room and asked Clark in puzzlement. What did you see? Cassandra's case he might understand, as she had never seen his ability. But what happened to Clark's look of shock and fear? You. Clark hesitated to speak, struggling. Shall he tell his brother? If David knew what the future would be like, and he was vigilant in his heart that he must not become what the future looked like, so he simply indulged himself and slid all the way into the darkness. Did you see that too, kid? Hearing Clark's voice, the blind Cassandra turned her head to the surprised Clark, her voice startled. I, shouldn't I see it? Clark hesitated. No one has ever seen it before. Cassandra shook her head. She activates the ability to predict the future of others, and only she can see the future. It's like Mr. Ross who lost his car keys before. I must point it out to know what I predicted. But this time is different. Why, why? We all know that you are different from others. I, Clark, who was shocked by the previous incident and almost went blank, forgot about Cassandra and finally remembered in a panic. His ability was exposed, and his brother was also found to be different from others. Don't be afraid, Clark. Cassandra smiled softly after seeing Clark's face from a bystander in the future prediction screen. I just discovered that I have actually seen you a long time ago. Ma'am, have you seen me before? Clark wondered. When the old woman went blind, Clark, who was still a baby, arrived on Earth with a meteor shower. David's expression changed slightly, and he vaguely guessed where the other party was referring to seeing him. Cassandra suddenly paused, smiled mysteriously, and turned. Son, go and close the door. Confused, Clark walked towards the door. Close to the wall of the door, a black-haired figure heard the voice in the room and left quickly. Turning around and shutting the door that was open since when Pete left, Clark returned to the bed but did not sit back beside his brother. Why are you looking at me like that, Clark? Looking at Clark's extremely complicated eyes, David wondered what he saw in the future, pretending not to care and chuckling. Worry from Clark plus 32, panic plus 30, fear plus 25. He was not particularly interested in the future. He didn't need anyone to tell him what his fate would be. But after seeing Clark's reaction, he couldn't help being curious. Clark's mood now is, just like a super enhanced version of worrying about me going down the path of degeneration. 2. David's eyes moved, and he keenly guessed what Clark might see, but still puzzled, how could his future be like what Clark worried about? The black-haired girl appeared from the corner, looked at the house with the closed door, frowned slightly, and was about to go back quietly. Kyla. 1. Suddenly a crisp voice sounded from behind. What a coincidence, I didn't expect to meet you here. 
Lana pushed the car passing by with a surprised expression. She didn't expect to see the friend she just met at the party yesterday. Are you here as a volunteer? Kyla turned around with an unnatural smile on her face. Yes, yes. Doing my hours of community service. Lana chatted with Kira. But then she was a little puzzled. She didn't know why, but Kira was not as talkative yesterday. The two chatted very happily yesterday. Kira asked her a lot about the high school and asked her to introduce the famous people in the school to get a general impression. And now Kira seems to be a little absent-minded now, her eyes drifting to the side from time to time. You will be a great person in the future. In the room, Cassandra smiled. In other people's future, some people will encounter pain and despair, but when you appear, hope will come, and all disasters will disappear. Hearing Cassandra's words, David's eyes flashed with surprise. It sounds like the old lady had a glimpse of the future Clark, Superman, in someone else's future. He seemed to have underestimated the old lady in this small nursing home in a rural town. If she can see Superman in the future, maybe she doesn't know as much about the future of the world as he does. But she may also be able to grasp some overall context of the future world. Me? Amazing. Clark pointed to himself in great doubt. Although he knew that he was very talented, he never thought that he would be able to bear this kind of evaluation. You seem to be born for this, child. Help everyone out of fear and darkness. Facing Clark who was flustered by doubts about the future, Cassandra said softly, pointing out something. Helping people predict the future so many times, I have summed up a rule. Do you know what it is? Ma'am, what is it? Clark said with a respectful expression. Seeing such a scene, she can return to normal after a short shock, as if nothing in the world can make her lose her composure. The future can be changed. There was a mysterious smile on the corner of her mouth. Even, the future has changed from before the prediction. 1. Just like Pete, David said slowly. After people know their future, they will definitely not allow themselves or things to develop in the future that they don't like. Yes, child. Facing David, the old woman's tone was still kind, even though she saw him being hostile to Clark in the future prediction. She has seen many future lives. People are complex creatures, and you can't easily define a person from a person's future. Maybe a humble kid who grew up on a farm will become the brightest and most beloved person on the planet in the future, and maybe a respected lawyer with a bright future will turn into a scary gangster after one bad day. 5. Maybe the cold-blooded and cruel mercenaries who usually put money first in their lives will do their best to save the world regardless of pay. 1. Now, it's your turn, kid. Cassandra gently opened her hand to David. David hesitated for a moment, then immediately extended his hand. One second, two seconds, three seconds. A long time passed and nothing happened. Just when David thought that he was not as special as Clark and did not see his future together. You are special Kent brothers. Cassandra, who closed her eyes, opened her white eyes and sighed. Son, I can't see your future. Two, this is also something that hasn't happened before. It seems that I can't give you any guidance in life. One, she shook her head. Your future depends on you to grasp and create. Two brothers, one can see the future she sees, and she can't see the other's future. Can't see it. David was puzzled when he heard the answer. Thanos' physique is extremely resistant to mental abilities. Does predicting the future also belong to mental abilities? That's why she can't see it? Clark, who was originally nervous, wanted to see if things had turned around from his younger brother's future prediction, and he was a little surprised. He gritted his teeth, firmly determined in his heart that no matter what happened, he would never let his brother go on an evil path. 1. Clark opened his eyes, his voice slightly disturbed. Ma'am, can you help me see my future again? Cassandra was blind but not blind, guessing what he wanted to do, she shook her head helplessly. My child, I'm not a radio, I can answer it at any time, and I can tune the channel at will reading any future of yours if I want. Creator's Thoughts The Board Rider 69 Creation is hard, cheer me up, like it, add to library, don't forget to give your power stones, comment. 13 Comments Chapter 33, Your Ignorance Will Be Your Death Cassandra's prediction of the future is out of control. Sometimes she can see things a few minutes later, sometimes she sees the end of other people's lives, and she can't frequently predict the changing future for the same person in a short time after predicting before. Clark wanted to predict his own future again and wanted to know whether his determination to prevent his younger brother from going astray had any effect and whether there was any possibility of changing the future could be realized. I'm tired, children. Listening to the sound of the clock turning, Cassandra smiled with satisfaction. Clark was a little puzzled. He hadn't started reading with the respectable old lady in front of him. You don't really think Miss Cassandra needs someone to study with her. David patted him on the shoulder, got up, and left. This old woman can read braille, and all she needs is someone to let her see the world in vivid colors through someone else's future. Ma'am, I'm sorry. Clark reacted, looked at the clock on the wall, and left after feeling a bit troubled. I'll come see you in the afternoon. My child, I can only help you see some fragments of the future. Sometimes you don't know the whole picture, so don't judge casually. 4. Finally, Cassandra was kind to Clark who was about to close the door and leave. She was sitting down on a rocking chair and reminded. Facing family members, you need to be more patient and trustful. I understand, thank you, ma'am. Clark was stunned for a moment, then looked thoughtful, nodded, and closed the door. He would have liked to accompany David to a room downstairs, play chess with another old man, and spend community service time. But after playing two games, the old man didn't want to play anymore, because he saw that David was giving the game to him, coaxing him to be happy, and after he seriously made him have a fair game, he quickly lost. It is very boring to play chess with someone whose chess strength is too high, especially the weaker side. You guys go, I will tell the hospital that you played chess with me. Feeling a sense of frustration, the old man stroked his forehead and waved his hand. The two had no choice but to leave to check the time. It was almost time for lunch. Compared with eating in the cafeteria of the nursing home, the two wanted to go home and taste their mother Martha's best seafood chowder. They went downstairs and saw Pete's car parked downstairs. But they didn't see Pete, not knowing where he went. Maybe he was still looking for the key. Are you going home like this, Clark? What will father and mother think when they see it? Leaving the nursing home, with a lingering sadness on Clark's brows, David rolled his eyelids and said with a smile. What did you see me do in the future that made you so worried? Locked you in a coffin made of the meteorite? Or snatched Lana you have a crush on? No it's nothing. You can't even fool a child with this sentence. Facing Clark who was very bad at lying, David's tone was a little speechless. Let me think about it before I decide whether to tell you, David. 
Unsure whether telling his brother what he saw would be good or bad, Clark decided to take a while to think about it. He looked back at the nursing home. The purpose of coming here today was to have time to get close to Lana, such as chatting in the cafeteria, but what happened now, he was not in the mood. Anyway, it's your future. David spread his hands and didn't force him to ask. Curiosity is curiosity, he will not worry about the future predicted by an ability user all day long. The future is at his feet and in his hands, and he is the master of his life. Where the boat of life sails is up to you to decide. There are not a few people in this world who have the ability to predict and divine. If a person says something casually, and he starts to worry about his gains and losses, he will have no other time to do other things in the future. Compared with that, I am more concerned about another point now. Walking on the road, regardless of Clark who was distracted, David shook his hands, feeling something. Ever since the fusion of the template passed 90%, he felt powerful energy flowing in his body, filling every cell in his body. The higher the degree of fusion, the greater the energy. 4. But it can't be released no matter what. This made him think of Thanos in the comics. Comic Thanos can emit powerful cosmic energy from his hands or eyes, but he couldn't do it at first. Not long after Thanos left his planet Titan and embarked on the road of the Dark Overlord, killing the leader of the Space Pirates and replacing him. He then continued to lead the Space Pirates under his command to plunder the science and technology of the universe and study his own body. In order to fully tap the potential of his body, he made a suit of armor for himself, and performed biological transformation surgery on himself, so that he could release the powerful energy contained in his body. In the comics, Thanos's golden armor looks simple, like it was hammered, but it actually contains various top technologies in the universe. One of its functions is to assist him in concentrating and releasing energy. David knew that what he was integrating should be the Thanos from the movie. 9. But maybe Thanos is Thanos, and some things will not change. He guessed in his heart. In the movie universe, it is likely that Thanos was obsessed with finding the Infinity Stones and being the director of his own universe family planning office, having no time to tap his own potential. 1. Even if Thanos has no energy rays, his strong body is enough to traverse the universe. David shook his head, not knowing what to do with the energy in his body. Right now, he doesn't have the conditions to manufacture a suit of cosmic high-tech armor and to modify his own biology. The extra ability seems useless for the time being. David raised his eyebrows on the way home from the suburbs. What a coincidence, David. A voice full of resentment and complacency suddenly sounded. A figure slowly walked out of the fork in the road, and suddenly blocked the way of the two of them. The skin on his body was covered with ice and snow, his lips were frosted, and his face looked a bit hideous. I was going across the town and wanted to go to your family's farm, but I didn't expect to meet you here. Sean. Clark raised his head, looking at Sean whose skin had an abnormal color and seemed to be trembling, with a surprised expression, and couldn't help but ask are you okay? Are you okay? Hearing this question, Sean opened his arms and laughed wildly, I can't be better. Now, he looked at David sharply, with a stern expression, the grass on both sides of the palm was frozen to pieces, with the blowing of the wind, and the ice and snow flew all over the sky. Kneel on the ground and beg me, I can consider to spare your life, David. 5. Walking here across town, his ability to absorb heat emerged again. Have you considered going to the circus to apply for a job? 2. David heard that and his face turned cold. 1. From Sean's appearance, it was not difficult to see that he was mutated by kryptonite radiation. There must be a full house for the freak you are now, your ignorance will lead you to your grave. Being ridiculed, Sean was furious, jumped up, and punched him, you don't even know what kind of power I have now. Sean, stop. Clark pounced on him, trying to stop Sean from approaching David. To protect his younger brother, and to protect Sean. But as soon as his hands touched Sean's body, his body heat was taken away uncontrollably. A burst of sunlight light was born at the place where the two touched and were sucked into Sean's body. How can the heat in your body be larger than the Smallville Thermal Power Station? The huge heat poured into his body, and Sean's physique was rapidly strengthening. He widened his eyes and exclaimed in disbelief. I'm getting stronger. Creator's thoughts. The Board Rider 69. Creation is hard. Cheer me up. Like it? Add to library. Don't forget to review 5 stars. Comment. 6 comments. Chapter 34, Don't Get Close to Those Brothers. Ah. Uh, with a low cry of pain, Clark felt his whole body's strength was being quickly taken away. He collapsed to the ground, his body was covered with ice that could shatter steel, his consciousness was blurred, and he was shivering. 1. You're looking for death. 6. David cracked the ground, and his body shot out in front of Sean like a cannonball. A terrifying force like a volcanic eruption punched his chest. Boom, there was a deafening explosion, and the white violent air wave visible to the naked eye exploded, like a gust of wind passing through, sweeping tens of meters. Whoosh, as if being hit by a high-speed train running at 400 kilometers per hour, Sean's chest was in severe pain, and he flew upside down, drawing a long ravine on the ground, deeply embedded in the ground dozens of meters away. Clark, how is your health? 1. David asked quickly, frowning. Being under the sun and not dying, Clark's physique shouldn't be a problem. I, I'm fine. Under the sun, Clark's face, which was purple from the cold, quickly improved, but his body was still weak, and he seemed to need some time to recover. Looking at his younger brother who cared about him, a warm current surged in his heart. Clark suddenly remembered something. In the future scene, his brother could fly, his skin color was normal, and his eyes glowed red. Was that really his brother? 9. Could it be that Miss Cassandra made a mistake in her ability to activate her ability, causing him to have nightmarish hallucinations? Brother, don't kill him, and don't. Clark said with his teeth chattering from the cold. I'm going to avenge you right now. 7. Before he could finish speaking. Stepping on the ground hard, the strong force caused the hard road to crack, and David's body flew out. 3. After passing through a whole tens of meters long, his body exuded a chilling power, and he fell in front of Sean, splashing mud under his feet. Ignorance does lead people to the grave, but it won't be me. You also got the ability. The low voice which sounded like a ruthless judgment slowly came to his ears, Sean got up in pain and saw David. His appearance changed, and he got up in a panic and swung his fist to hit him, but David easily dodged it with his head turned sideways. 1. Having just seen what happened to Clark, he naturally knew what would happen if he touched his body. Can it absorb heat and become stronger? 
With a hard kick, Sean was kicked flying, and this time David used more force. With a crackling sound, David kicked his ribs with great force, and Sean flew back into the pit, like a stone smashing into the lake, causing waves of soil, and a deep pit several meters in size appeared. David looked down at him. That's a pretty good ability, it's wasted on you. Many powerful ability users don't have more than normal body heat. Fortunately, Clark's abilities come from the sun. If it were someone else, they might be killed instantly if he touched it. For some people, even if you give them powerful abilities, they can't hide their timid nature. Shut up. Faced with naked ridicule, Sean was extremely annoyed and jumped out of the pit with the standard rushing posture of a football player. He came out, setting off a strong airflow, bumping into David, and hugging him by the waist. Kneel down in front of me and beg me for mercy. 1. He slammed his feet vigorously while roaring, activating his ability to absorb the heat from David's body. He thought David would collapse at the touch like the press of a button. But David didn't react like a normal person, drawing two deep grooves with the back of his legs, and he simply punched Sean to the ground. The terrifying force accompanied Sean's body to the ground, and the white airwaves were visible to the naked eye. The surrounding gravel and blades of grass shook. 1. Crunch. There was a sound of bones breaking. I, my back. 6. In the deep pit with a diameter of several meters, Sean screamed in horror and pain. His face was distorted in pain, his hands trembled and he touched his back, he couldn't feel his lower body anymore. Don't worry, you will be freed from this pain immediately. David, who felt a little loss of cosmic energy in his body, punched down expressionlessly, with the force of a hill falling down. Boom, Sean rolled his eyes and passed out. With his brain damaged, he will fall into eternal nothingness and darkness. Weakly, Clark staggered over, just in time to see this scene. By the way, Clark, what did you want to say just now? David withdrew his fist, and in the huge pit, David tilted his head. I, seeing Sean who had turned into a vegetative state, Clark was so angry that he almost fainted. T slash N, Clark vomited blood lol. 9. Squeak. Ma'am, excuse me. The door was opened, and the black-haired Kyla walked into the room nervously, clasping her hands together. People in this nursing home say that you can predict the future, can you help me? Cassandra sat on a stool and ate, facing the window and listening to the crisp bird song on the branches outside, chewing every bite with her eyes closed it was very slow, with an indescribably calm and serene expression, as if enjoying the most delicious things in the world, and also as if reminiscing about the aftertaste of life. Child, I'm not an old gypsy witch. She opened her eyes, put down the spoon in her mouth, and said unhurriedly, if you want to predict the future, I suggest you go to the divination tent in the circus. Shaking her head slightly, eavesdropping on people is not a good habit. Please give me a chance, Miss Cassandra. Hearing this sentence, Kyla's eyes lit up slightly as if she had confirmed something. She couldn't help taking a step forward, her voice faintly with excitement. Even if she didn't transform, she was so agile that an ordinary blind old woman should not be able to hear her. It seems that I said something wrong. Cassandra shook her head with regret, and said in an old voice, as people get older, their brains are not so flexible. Time is running out, let me live the last bit of time, do you want to leave quietly? Time is running out, everyone is mortal. Cassandra listened to the clock on the wall pointing to the hour, with a faint smile on her mouth, I looked at the future of other nurses. It's time to die. Some futures can be changed, and some are destined to be difficult to change, such as the natural end of life. Nearly 90 years old, she originally planned to use someone else to take a last look at the world this morning, and then leave quietly. But, death should be peaceful and peaceful. The old woman in front of her was the last time of her life, and she shouldn't disturb her. Kyla clutched her hands tightly, with guilt on her beautiful face. This is not only important to me, but also to my clan and even the world. Please, I can't reveal the future of other people without permission. Unable to hold back in front of the girl's pleading, the kind old woman put down the spoon, shook her head, and suggested, but I look at your own future. My future. Kyla thought about it with a struggling face, thinking that this was also a way. If Numun really appears in this generation as predicted. According to the prophecy, she is bound to have entanglements with Numun, who came into the world with a rain of fire in the sky and was destined to become his woman. Then she may, through the future, be able to determine which of the two brothers is the savior Numun, and who is the evil Sajif, so as to help Numun defeat his brother. 12. I'm sorry to trouble you, ma'am. This world is so beautiful, it's good for me to take a look before I leave. With only some time left on the clock, Cassandra lay back on the bed with the girl's support and grabbed hold of the girl's hand to look at her future. She opened her eyes weakly and turned her head to the nervous girl in front of her with an expression of pity. No don't get close to those brothers, or your fate will fall into misfortune. Misfortune. And, your tribe. 1. After speaking intermittently till here, it was as if an hour had passed in a few minutes, Cassandra could only speak halfway, no longer having the strength to close her eyes, and weakly dropped her hands down. Ma'am. Kyla's expression changed drastically. Creator's thoughts. The board rider 69. Creation is hard, cheer me up, like it, add to library, don't forget to give power stones and review 5 stars, comment, 12 comments, chapter 35, aliens are human, David was merciless and turned Sean, who wanted to attack him and even clamored to kill him, into a vegetable, 4, in anger for his older brother, David rushed up to beat Sean into the air and save himself, Clark felt a little warm in his heart, besides, he couldn't help being a little angry, looking at the unconscious Sean at the bottom of the pit, his voice was heavy and hesitant, this time is different from the past, maybe Sean hasn't committed a crime yet, but you still beat him into a vegetable, 1, the previous few times, the ability users, Jeremy who can induce an electric current, Greg who turned into an insect body, and the shapeshifter Tina, who has deformed and strengthened bones, have been confirmed to have committed a felony of murder. But Sean is different, maybe he just came to David for revenge just after he got the ability. 1. Isn't it a crime for him to attack you and me? Hearing these words, David looked surprised. His ability is so dangerous, aside from other things, would I be sentenced for self-defense in this matter in court? He patted the stunt clerk on the shoulder, turned, and left. 
Don't feel inferior, my brother, aliens are human too. 8. David was not surprised, it is the same in the comics, Superman classically does not regard himself as a human, maybe he thinks it was like a person stabbing him was like a straw trying to stab him and does not constitute an intent to kill. If he thinks he hadn't committed any other crimes and only attacked him alone, he wouldn't pay much attention to it. But now Clark still wants to apply this concept of crime to him. Is it a crime to be strong, and a person with ability is not a human being? At this point, Clark thought for a while, gritted his teeth, and turned around to clean up the surrounding traces at super speed, then sent Sean to the hospital gate, and followed his brother. The first time he saw David do this, he was shocked and unbelievable, but by now, he was horribly used to it and even cleaned up the traces. 1. Back home, Clark was no longer so angry, because, at the dinner table, he heard from the radio that the thermal power station in the town was attacked by an unknown criminal suspected of using liquid nitrogen as a weapon, and more than a dozen people were frozen to death. What's more, he knew the cause of the incident. David helped Chloe drive away the flirtatious Sean yesterday, and today's incident happened. At the dinner table, Jonathan and Martha worriedly told them to be careful. This may also be a person with abilities. They didn't know if the police could catch the murderer and bring him to justice. The couple didn't know that the murderer who committed the crime had become a vegetative state and was lying in the hospital. 2. Looking back and thinking about Sean and others who immediately put themselves above life and the law as soon as they gained power, Clark felt that his younger brother's mentality was not so dangerous in comparison. It's just that he still thinks his brother needs to be corrected. It would be best if David didn't beat people into vegetative state without any hassle. 10. But Clark didn't try to persuade his younger brother, as he realized that his younger brother had his own way of life. 1. Most of the time, the younger brother is smarter and more mature than him, the elder brother. In David's mind, his elder brother's words may not carry much weight. Similar things have been said enough, and it is useless. Sometimes words are powerless, and it is difficult to change a person by words alone. Regardless of whether Ms. Cassandra's prediction of the future is wrong, he can't let David go astray. 3. This is his duty as an older brother. This time I was careless. Clark secretly made up his mind, next time, next time, he must take action to stop David. It's impossible that the next time, he would still be in trouble and needs his younger brother to solve it in embarrassment. 5. The Metropolitan Museum. At a unique antique fair. Many tourists in suits and leather shoes and long skirts walked leisurely around the exhibition hall with free champagne in their hands, admiring these precious collections from all over the world that had just arrived at the museum. In front of an ancient Greek armor in the glass cabinet, Clark looked at the glass, with a trace of sadness on his face, sighing about the afternoon. Only two hours passed, and we went to the nursing home again, and Miss Cassandra had passed away. He was very grateful to the old lady for helping him predict the future. He originally wanted to go to the nursing home in the afternoon to spend more time with the elderly, but when he went again, what greeted him was an empty room. Ms. Cassandra's personal belongings were all put away. He learned from a passing nurse that had red eyes that the old woman went to heaven at noon. Many people in the nursing home have been helped by her, given life advice, solved troubles, and grieved for the death of Cassandra. The only consolation is that she didn't die in pain. David shook his head lightly. That kind of old lady may have predicted her own death and passed away peacefully. There is no need to be too sad for the lady who sees through life. Afternoon, when the two went to the nursing home, they happened to meet Lana. She came back from Metropolis, and her aunt had given her some tickets to the exhibition. Lana thought of the trouble she caused two days ago, and Clark's comfort to her, and gave them each a ticket. Clark was delighted to have the opportunity to get in touch with Lana, but he didn't want something to happen like in the afternoon. I know. Clark nodded slightly silently, and took a deep breath, thinking that the day must go on. He looked up and noticed the jewel-encrusted, dazzling armor in the showcase, and stared curiously. This inner armor was inlaid with large gemstones, blue and red, looking very gorgeous and priceless, he don't know if it is real or fake. I heard that some precious artifacts in museums are exhibited with high-quality imitations due to accidents in the past. Clark grew up on a farm and was not used to such occasions. He asked his younger brother in a slightly reserved voice. You can take a deep look with your own eyes. Template merged, 95%. David replied casually, and he is not an expert in ancient Greek artifact identification. The Thanos template will soon be integrated. In the past few days, he hasn't looked at the reminders of emotional points and has hidden the information reminders. The resentment and hatred from several vegetative people kept coming, which was very annoying and disturbed him doing things. Anyway, he knew that his emotional points were increasing all the time. Resolution plus 38 from Clark. Clark's strength seems to have grown rapidly recently. David flipped through the previous information and was reminded that the ability points provided to him by Clark had almost doubled in recent days. Even if the emotions are not intense, the emotional points provided are considerable. Tension from Kyla plus 0.07. Glancing at a noteworthy name, doubts flashed across his eyes. When and why did this Kyla get nervous because of him? Did they meet each other during the day? Clark, David, I actually met you here. Wearing a black suit, Luther walked slowly over with glasses of champagne with lemons hanging on the wall, with a smile on his face, need me to introduce you to the collection. Luther. Clark greeted with a smile. Genuine ancient Greek cultural relics that once belonged to Alexander the Great. Clark looked at the display cabinet curiously before, and Luthor pointed to the python-like pattern on the chest of the armor. I heard that this pattern represents courage and strength. 2. Courage and strength. David raised his eyes and saw that the coiled shape of the snake-like pattern looked like an S, so he let out a chuckle. Alexander's soldiers probably wouldn't agree with this, and it's unimaginable that someone would wear it on the battlefield. The whole body is inlaid with bright gems, which can be seen from several miles away. This was definitely not a set of armor. Don't you think it's ridiculous to talk about strength and courage if you don't know how to wear proper armor on the battlefield? Sometimes, the enemy is not on the battlefield full of blood and death. Luther laughed. This set of armor was used to help Alexander the Great make him look sacred and inviolable on certain occasions. Lex, are you a history buff? Clark was amazed that a child of an entrepreneur was so proficient in history. I'm only interested in those who rule the world before the age of 30. Luthor spoke calmly with a sense of ambition and arrogance that couldn't be concealed. David rolled his eyes. If I remember correctly, Alexander died at 32. 11. Creator's Thoughts. The Board Rider 69. Creation is hard. Cheer me up. Like it? Add to library. Don't forget to give Power Stones and review 5 stars. Comment. 6 comments. 
Chapter 36, Tactile Telekinesis. The smile on Lithor's face became slightly stiff, and Clark patted him on the shoulder to ease his embarrassment and smiled. Lex, you don't have to dominate the world to be meaningful. Looking at a slender figure in the distance, Clark caught a glimpse of Lana's figure, which formed a smile on his face unconsciously, and he was about to step forward to say hello. Another familiar figure appeared which was Whitney, who was following Lana. The evening football training was over, and Whitney heard that Lana had a ticket here, and continued to follow Lana, trying to reconcile with his ex-girlfriend. Seeing that the relationship between the two seems to have eased a bit, and they chatted from time to time, Clark's face darkened. It's better to have momentum in life, what do you think, Clark? Lithor patted him on the shoulder back. Only warriors who dare to take the initiative to charge can be liked by ladies. He smiled and made a suggestion, hoping to get closer to Clark by giving advice on chasing girls. For Clark's life-saving grace, apart from other things, he did feel a little grateful. I'm going out to get some air. Not far away, Lana was wearing a pale pink dress, with a beautiful green stone necklace on her chest, which was very conspicuously hanging on her fair neck, Clark said, feeling a bit depressed. 1. David shook his head secretly, this is what he did. Regardless of Clark, he continued to browse the museum casually, and there were still a few Egyptian artifacts inside that were not as vulgar and dazzling as the armor, full of unique ancient charm. You still want to run. In a grassy park, Sam Felon had a fierce face and knocked a person to the ground with his fist. I can't find it. I don't know where the company's confidential customer files are. Please let me go. The man with blood in his mouth begged. Since you don't want to do things for me, prepare to go in and stay for a few years. Turning the person over, he took out his handcuffs and threatened fiercely. Everyone has dark secrets. Sam Felon is just a police detective who walks between black and white, digs out other people's secrets, and controls people to do things for him. 1. However, being a detective is just his job, and what he really likes are those green banknotes. As long as it is profitable, he can do whatever it takes. Call, out of the museum, down the steps. Clark took a few deep breaths of fresh air and looked up at the surrounding developed and tall buildings. Compared to Smallville, this bustling place is like another world. Turning his eyes, the streets at night were quiet and deserted. Not far away, under the bus stop sign, a homeless ragged tramp and his puppy were curled up and sleeping on a recliner. Well, it seems that there is not much difference. Helplessness flashed across his eyes. Chi, a public bus was coming nearby, and it was almost under the stop sign. Suddenly, the driver seemed to have a heart attack. His face turned pale, and he fainted. He bent the steering wheel and slammed into the bus stop sign. He was about to smash the stop sign and crush the homeless man on the seat. Not good. At that very moment, Clark's eyes widened, and he quickly rushed tens of meters to the middle of the bus and the stop sign. He stretched out his hand to block the bus, thinking of protecting the homeless man. 1. Sometimes the body reacts faster than the brain. Clark forgot a little, and his face changed dramatically. It stands to reason that under the huge inertia, the bus with more than 10 tons will hit him heavily and smash the front of the car, which can save the homeless man, but the driver cannot survive. No, at the critical moment, at the time of the collision that was too late, a strange and hidden force field was born and enveloped the entire bus. 1. Boom, the speeding bus seemed to hit a thick iron wall and stopped abruptly, but the front of the bus was only slightly dented where Clark touched it. The homeless man avoided being crushed, and the driver was fine. This. Clark breathed a sigh of relief, staring blankly at his palm. How did he do it yourself? This is not scientific at all. How about it? Have you changed your mind? In the park in the distance, after punching and kicking fiercely, Felon took a breath, like a night owl torturing prey, and continued to ask with a sinister face. I, I, boom, before the man could answer, he heard a loud noise. He looked up and saw an incredible scene. After being dazed, hearing the driver moan in pain brought him back to reality. Clark hurriedly tore open the door, entered the bus, and picked up the driver who had a heart attack. His body disappeared in a flash, and he rushed to the Metropolitan Hospital. 2. Seeing Clark disappear in place, Felon showed astonishment on his face. He dropped the beating man and quickly came to the front of the bus, looked at the clear dent, and then at the driver who had disappeared. He looked left and right at the empty streets. He was quite sure that he hadn't seen a ghost, and he couldn't control his heartbeat. Everyone has secrets. But this time, he seems to have discovered a big secret. 4. How about it, you two? Did the bustling metropolis make you feel sad? In the morning, at the dining table, everyone was eating breakfast, and Martha smiled and asked. The museum is great, but... Walking down the stairs, Clark hesitated to speak. What? Jonathan stopped the spoon. Sitting in his seat, David handed out a newspaper and said softly, just a small episode happened. The title of the news is, The Runaway Late Night Bus That Nearly Killed a Homeless Man. I stopped it. Clark described what happened at the bizarre scene last night, still being unclear. Are you all right, Clark? Martha asked hastily. This was a mother's concern, and Clark, the man of steel, would naturally be fine. He scratched his head. I'm fine, ma. Clark, you saved a life, and I'm very proud of you. After reading the newspaper, Jonathan frowned, but, did anyone see you? That was Metropolis, which had a lot of hustle bustle. It was late at night, and there was no one on the avenue. Everyone was in the museum, and the noise didn't disturb them. There was no witness in the newspaper, so it should be fine. Martha reassured. That's good. Jonathan smiled. Let's eat and go to school. Children, we should miss the school bus later. David had heard what happened from Clark last night and knew that the biological force field, tactile telekinesis, should have played a role. It is not surprising that Superman can fly by relying on tactile telekinesis. It's just that Clark was a little panicked, and a strange new ability emerged, so he didn't pay much attention to the class all morning. After school was over, Clark and David were going to go to the woods on the outskirts of the town to explore new abilities to prevent him from losing control. When the two passed by an alley in the town, Clark Kent, David Kent, right. A middle-aged figure came out slowly, showing his police badge, with a playful smile on his face, like a hyena that found his prey, and stopped the two of them. I'm a Metropolis police detective, Sam Felon, there was a traffic accident case, and I need your assistance in the investigation. 1. Traffic accident. Looking at the policeman from the Metropolitan, Clark's heart tightened. Is it because of the accident last night? But why did they find him? Seeing the other party's proud expression as if he had caught someone else's tail, David narrowed his eyes. 4. Creator's thoughts. The board rider 69. Creation is hard. Cheer me up. Have some idea about my story? 
Comment it and let me know. Don't forget to give Power Stones and review 5 stars. Comment. 7 comments. Chapter 37. Are you interested in making a bet with me? In the alley, Felon took out two photos. It was the museum's camera picture of Clark and David talking to Luthor. It's really hard to find you, Clark. He shook the photo and smiled. It's a good thing you went to the museum's exhibition that night. Felon only remembered Clark's clothes, hairstyle, and half of his profile. It was even more difficult to find someone based on only these clues. It was late at night, and there was no one around, except for the Metropolitan Museum's exhibition party. He just tried his luck and found it. With the photos, it will not be difficult for me as a police detective to find you. Officer, what do you want us to cooperate with you in investigating? Clark swallowed secretly, staring at the person in front of him. Inexplicably, a policeman came to him alone and said that it was related to the traffic accident. He had some faint doubts. David stood aside, folded his arms, and watched coldly, trying to see what the man was planning. I really don't know what your adoptive parents fed you. 1. Felon's eyes lit up as if looking at a rare animal in a zoo, and he reached out and squeezed Clark's strong arm, causing Clark to slap his hand away unhappily. He raised his hands as if frightened, but had a smug smile on his face. Take it easy, I can't resist your blow. Officer, I don't know what you're talking about. Stop pretending, I saw it last night. He lowered his voice and leaned his head over and got closer as if meeting a familiar friend, clapping his hands. Wonderful performance, stopping an out-of-control bus with one hand. A look of unnaturalness appeared on Clark's face, and he was about to open his mouth. Clark, are you still trying to play dumb at this point? Seeing that he wanted to say something, Felon shook his head, chatting as if he knew him well. You can't really be so naive, can you? The other party didn't seem to be bluffing, and his secret was really exposed. Hearing this sentence, Clark felt nervous and glared at him angrily. No matter how good-tempered an elephant is, David said coldly, it's not something people can just tease casually. He is really a bold guy who dares to provoke a person who can easily crush himself to death. Elephant, it seems that you also know your brother's secret. Felon turned his head to look, his target was Clark, and stopping Clark's brother was just a matter of convenience. He paid no heed to David's implied threats. I know what you and your parents want. He pointed to Clark and David, talking freely. Clark, you have such strength and talent, but you have never participated in any school sports since you were a child, and you don't dare to fight back even when you are beaten. Your adoptive parents have a son like you, but they still chose to work hard on a farm for a whole year only earning a pitiful amount of tens of thousands of dollars. 7. Walking between black and white, threatening people with other people's deadly secrets to do things for themselves, it is very easy to be caught by some daring people if you don't pay attention. Only those timid prey are the best targets for hunters. Felon had investigated Clark's situation in detail earlier, and he is more than 80% sure to capture this rare prey in the world, otherwise, he would not appear here. You want a stable and peaceful life, don't you? Thinking about such power makes people tremble with excitement, no matter what they do, they can easily obtain a large amount of wealth. But this family did not and was even careful enough not to allow their children to participate in any school sports. It's really easy for your brother Clark to kill me, but as long as I don't go back within a certain time, there will be emails that will automatically send information about your family to major media. As soon as the voice changed, a sneer appeared on the corner of Felon's mouth. What will happen then? I promise that your family will immediately become the hottest, most famous family in the metropolis and even in the world? Your family cannot withstand careful investigation. That's enough? What do you want? Clark grabbed Felon's shirt and couldn't help shouting angrily. Don't involve my younger brother and parents. If it wasn't for his parents, he, as an alien, wouldn't be able to know where he would have gone, or whether he would still be alive now. Without him, his younger brother could have enjoyed all the love of his parents. Clark didn't want to cause any trouble for his family because of him. 1. Hush, keep your voice down, Clark, don't let others hear your secret. A creature more terrifying than an elephant was angry in front of his eyes, but Felon smiled instead, with a confident look, and put his finger on his lips lightly. This immature young man in front of him was anxious and afraid, which was why he was angry. I don't want much. It's a pity that you have such a talent wasted on the farm. I'm a righteous police detective. I just want you to help me deal with a few gangsters who are doing all kinds of crimes and I can't catch them without evidence. Seeing the information about Clark, Felon knows the character of the young man in front of him. With the wealth he'll earn after wiping out some of the biggest gangsters in the metropolis, he'll be able to do whatever he wants for a long time. I won't help you kill. Being threatened, Clark was anxious and angry. He didn't know what to do. He felt extremely regretful. 1. Why was he careless when saving someone last night? He forgot to check in advance to see if there was anyone around. The main reason was that the incident happened too suddenly, and Clark was not given a chance to react. Even if it's a gangster with a murder case in hand. Not bad. Well, this guy in front of him is more naive than he thought. It doesn't matter if you don't kill people. If you can subdue them, I don't care. Felon shrugged. All he wanted was money anyway. I. There seems to be no other way if it's just to fight and subdue the gang. Just when Clark hesitated to say yes. Clap, clap. Bold yet cautious. In the alley, David applauded, his tone unheard as if sincerely applauding. This is a must-have trait for a gambler. His heart was jumping out of his throat, pounding with fear, but his face was as if nothing had happened. This policeman named Felon can be said to be a talent. A trace of the unnaturalness flashed across Felon's eyes because of his thoughts being exposed, but the smile on his face remained unchanged. He is indeed betting, with more than 80% certainty. It does not mean that he will win, but this gamble is worth it. If he wins the bet this time, he will have no worries for the rest of his life. He can eat on this secret for a lifetime? Are you interested in betting with me? David took out a 50-cent coin from his pocket. What do you want to bet? Seeing the coin in his hand, Felon smiled. There was a trace of uneasiness in his heart, and he felt things were going beyond his expectations. He didn't pay attention to this kid named David Kent before, so what if he can beat several football players of the same age by himself? It's just children fighting. But now he saw that from the beginning to the present, Felon didn't see a trace of anxiety and panic on David's face. He watched him talking with Clark coldly from beginning to end as if he was watching a small bug jumping around recklessly, with a mature, calm, and weird face, he doesn't know what kind of confidence he had. Was he thinking of relying on his monster brother? 2. Creator's Thoughts The Board Rider 69 Creation is hard, cheer me up, like it, add to library. Don't forget to send your power stones and review 5 stars. Comment. 17 comments. 
Chapter 38, Our Gamble Has Begun I heard that since ancient times, there have been some legends and fighters among human beings who have endured all kinds of torture and never reveal any information the enemy wants to know. David held the 50 cents between his fingers, said with warnings and danger in his eyes with a smile that made people feel uneasy. I bet you 50 cents you're not that kind of person. If you don't kneel on the ground and cry like a bitch within half an hour, and tell me everything I want to know, such as your email account number and password, I'll give you 50 cents. A 17-year-old high school student, did you learn about torture on TV, suppressing his trembling heart, felon exaggerated as if he heard a joke, and laughed. For some reason, after David finished saying about the bet with that smile, he had a dangerous feeling as if he was being targeted by a predator that was a hundred times more terrifying than a lion. David, what do you want to do? Clark's expression changed, and he stopped David who was about to step forward. The ferocious words that came out of David's mouth frightened him, too. Inhumane torture and trampling on human dignity, he couldn't believe his brother would do such a thing. The most frightening thing is that he looks very skillful and comfortable as if he is talking about treating guests to dinner. Clark, you still want to show off your kindness at this time. David sneered at Felon as if looking at a dead person. He had never tortured anyone before, but he believed that this kind of thing was not difficult to learn, and he was not afraid of making mistakes anyway. Absolutely not, what if you couldn't make him talk? Clark struggled and gritted his teeth. Several times of experience let him know that it is useless to reason with his brother, especially for such an urgent matter, there is no time for him to reason. He talked directly about the consequences in case of this incident. If he doesn't return on time, the mailbox will send an email. Maybe you don't have time for interrogation. Maybe it won't take half an hour, but ten minutes should be enough. David said as he was about to push Clark away, I don't think this corrupt and sinister guy will be a tough guy with a strong heart. No. Clark grabbed David's hand firmly. David, I can't let you risk our parents. He lowered his voice and tried to dissuade his brother. Give him whatever he wants. Anyway, they are some gangsters who do bad things. David raised his eyebrows, as if he was meeting him for the first time, and looked at Clark in surprise. I didn't expect that your bottom line is still flexible. This is an in and out crime. I promise. To prevent further complications, while holding David's hand tightly, Clark turned his head to Felon and said anxiously, Go, I'll find you later. I'll wait for you, Clark. Glancing at David, Felon turned and left quickly. David wanted to step forward, but if he tried hard to break free, a Thanos-like appearance would appear, and Felon may also get to know about him, David thought while frowning. I don't understand why you stopped me because of a few gangsters. It's not your style, David. Seeing the guy walk away, Clark let David go. He believed it was too late to catch up to him at David's speed with him at guard. A person's desire is like a rolling stone on a high mountain. Once it starts, it will never stop. David straightened his sleeves and put away the 50 cents, said coldly. Let me try it, David. If Fran is a qualified gambler, Clark is a failed gambler. He is always indecisive and takes chances. But sometimes giving in and compromising is tantamount to admitting defeat directly. I'll say you back the same. David stared at each other, and the two looked at each other. I can't let you take our parents to have some risks. This is a matter of no thought. Only a fool would not use a big weapon that allows him to do whatever he wants. It's impossible to feed the hyena once. When it's hungry, it will come to you again, never ending. That guy's appetite will get bigger and bigger, and this matter will sooner or later implicate Jonathan and Martha. David, you know that you are not as fast as I am. I want to protect someone, you can't find them and catch up with me. Both of them insisted on their own opinions, Clark didn't want to fight his brother, he gritted his teeth. Just let me try it once. While talking, he couldn't help feeling a little angry, thinking that he was the elder brother, but the younger brother refused to listen to him even once. I know. Taking a step back, David looked at him, not to mention anything else, your speed is at least ten times or even dozens of times faster than mine. Even with a person, if you want to escape, I might not even be able to touch your clothes. David. Clark's eyes brightened when he heard these words. Thought David was going to let go of his promise. I didn't want to do that. David shook his head and sighed, took out a small box from his pocket, and opened it. Snapped. A green crystal about the size of a thumb appears, emitting radiation unique to kryptonite. He took out the kryptonite and pointed it at Clark like an exorcist holds a crucifix to a vampire. Meteorite. Clark's feet went limp, and his body felt as if he had been hollowed out immediately. Under the glowing green light, he retreated uncomfortably, barely supporting the wall to prevent himself from falling. He stared wide-eyed and looked incredulously, his voice was forced out through his teeth. Die, David, you actually used meteorites to deal with me. He suffered from meteorites more than once but didn't expect to see meteorites in his younger brother's hands one day to deal with him. This, is this the meteorite on Greg's body? He remembered that his younger brother had put away a meteorite. You forced me, Clark. David stepped forward, hitting him sharply on the face with a hammer-like fist. Boom. Clark was knocked to the ground on the spot and passed out. Bang. Looking at Clark sleeping like a baby, David casually threw the kryptonite beside him. Keep applying weakness in case the Clark basks in the sun and wakes up halfway through. He turned and left the deserted alley. At the end of the street in the town, Sam Felon leaned leisurely against the street lamp, waiting for his mobile check for the rest of his life to come to him. Although Clark said he would come to him, he didn't dare to go too far for fear that the other party would not be able to find him. Who are you waiting for? A cold voice suddenly sounded from behind. Felon turned his head and saw David and said with doubts in his eyes, Why are you? Where's Clark? Did he go back on his word? He thought of something, with a hint of sternness on his face, and said sharply, No, he won't be here for the time being. David punched down, grabbed the fainted Felon by the neck, and disappeared in place. An abandoned factory. When Felon woke up, he found that he was tightly tied to the chair with a rope and couldn't move even after struggling. Are you awake? A voice came. There was a laptop on a wooden table. David sat leisurely behind the table on a chair, pushed forward a 50-cent coin, put on surgical rubber gloves under his horrified gaze, and slowly got up with a smile. Our gamble has begun. Creator's thoughts. The board rider 69. Creation is hard. Cheer me up. Like it? Add to the library. Don't forget to send your power stones and review 5 stars. Comment. 11 comments. Chapter 39, The Best Way to Prevent Secret Leaks. When Felon saw David approaching, he tried to escape but couldn't even move. Help, help. 
He tried to shout, but his voice was not heard far away, and no one would come to this abandoned suburban factory. David approached step by step, and the footsteps struck his heart like the devil of hell, making him unable to bear the fear. Listen, imprisoning and injuring a police detective is a federal felony. Felon swallowed and said. A 17-year-old high school student may just be impulsive. He wants to persuade and intimidate David to give up his irrational behavior. Snapped. David unhurriedly straightened up Felon who was tied to the chair, adjusted his head with force, and spread a wet towel over his face. Since the birth of waterboarding in the Middle Ages, it has been known as one of the most brutal and inhumane torture techniques in human history. The flat and stable voice contained a faint coldness that made people feel cold. 1. I like this type of torture. It's simple, efficient, and bloodless. No, no. Felon yelled in panic, realizing what was about to happen. The head tried to struggle, but the body was like being held by iron clamps, motionless, unable to struggle. Crash. David held a bucket of tens of kilograms steadily with one hand, and poured the water slowly and steadily, rushing into the mouth and nose of the flange under the towel. Save, save. Felon's words of begging for mercy were drowned by the water current, and he was unable to speak as he coughed. He tried to breathe but the soaked towel clung to his face, blocking oxygen. In less than 30 seconds, with the rapid consumption of oxygen in the blood, the pain of suffocation as if he was about to drown began. The veins on his neck were bulging, and his legs were like strangled rabbits, twitching every second. Take a deep breath, dizziness is normal. At the moment the interrogation really started, David reminded him kindly. The lack of oxygen made him breathe and swallow uncontrollably, causing a large amount of water to choke into Felon's stomach, lung lobes, and bronchi, making him suffocate even more painfully. He screamed in despair and was submerged in water before he could spit out a full word. Sam's screams came from the abandoned factory. From the Spanish Inquisition to modern intelligence organizations, 80% of those who have been subjected to waterboarding have succumbed. I hope you are not the 20%, Sam Felon. There was hope in his tone. Because the rest are all victims who were accidentally tortured to death by the executioner. 3. Uh, um. Intense pain and fear swept through Felon's body and mind, destroying his not-so-strong will. As soon as he felt the pain of suffocation 30 seconds later, he began to try various methods to convey the meaning of confession. But he couldn't speak, his hands and feet were tied, and he, who clearly wanted to confess, was still being tortured to make him confess. In the darkness and suffocation, two painfully long minutes were spent. Felon's consciousness gradually became blurred, and his hands and feet began to twitch up normally. It's almost there, and the scene won't look good if it continues. David put down the bucket. People who suffer from waterboarding will become incoherent over time. Vomit. The towel on his face was removed, and the tearful felon regained his sight. Like a drowned person landing on the shore, he instinctively breathed in the air greedily. It took more than ten seconds for his pupils to focus, and he seemed to turn around from the gate of hell. His face was pale and his body was shaking with fear. Oh, that's right. Seeing his expression, David raised his eyebrows with a smile on his face, as if he just remembered something. I forgot to tell you in advance if you want to confess, how to notify me. Felon could not see any traces of sudden memory on David's face. He seemed to see a devil, speaking with wide eyes, fear written on his face, and teeth chattering. Devil, devil, you've wasted a lot of my time, it's time to tell me what I want to know. Lifting up his chair, David suppressed his smile and said slowly, Still I think you want to have a second round. I, I confess. Like an electric shock, Felon hurriedly begged for mercy. If he hadn't been bound by a chair, David believed he would have knelt on the ground and cowed out, willing to give everything in order not to suffer from the pain just now. Snapped. Pressing the button, the scheduled emails were cancelled and deleted. David looked up at the terrified Felon and closed his laptop. Thank you for your cooperation. You, you are not an ordinary person. Felon, who shrank and hugged his body, said while trembling. What did you say? David didn't seem to hear clearly. Your hands were like iron tongs just now, with abnormal strength. When you pinched my face, no matter how hard I struggled, I couldn't shake it a little bit. Recalling the severe pain that made him feel cheekbones were about to be crushed just now, Felon understood everything at this moment and looked at David as if looking at a terrifying monster, widening his eyes. There was only one explanation for why Clark would be so against his younger brother's actions when Clark clearly agreed to him but then disappeared. You are a monster stronger than your brother. 1. I don't like the word monster. David walked up to him, condescending, and a shadow shrouded him. I just have some tricks to deal with Clark. You, what do you want to do? Sitting on the chair, Felons felt that his heart was gripped by a big hand, that turned into fear, and he was so uneasy that he felt remorse in his heart. He shouldn't have provoked this guy. Let me go, please. Sorry, the best way for people to keep a secret is dead people. 13. David flicked his fingers, and the 50 cent coin was like a bullet, easily piercing through his head, and embedded in the brick wall behind with blood. 1. Felon stared at his eyes with his eyes open, not knowing when he died, and fell backward with the chair, stirring up a cloud of dust. Even if you lose, the 50 cents will still go to you. 2. You killed him, David. After school in the afternoon, in the attic of the warehouse. After waking up at noon, he kicked the kryptonite into the sewer. Clark searched for two or three laps outside the town at noon and after school but couldn't find Felon, so he asked him angrily. David looked calmly at the clouds outside, that's right. He's a police detective. Unexpectedly, his younger brother would admit it so easily, and Clark froze for a moment. I dealt with it very cleanly. He didn't have any principle of not killing. He didn't kill those capable people before, just to maximize his emotional points, and this felon is an ordinary person, so it's useless to keep him. 2. The body was buried under the concrete floor of the abandoned factory building, and no one will find it. I mean he may not have committed any felony at all. 4. Clark said in a deep voice, It's unlikely that the detective who's so good at threatening people will be a good cop. But he may not have violated the law seriously, otherwise, he may have been found and thrown into prison while working in the police station. Your innocence makes people laugh, my brother. David had expected him to think so and shook his head. He turned the laptop around on the loft table and pressed play. Creator's thoughts. The board rider 69. Creation is hard, cheer me up, like it, add to the library. Don't forget to send your power stones and review 5 stars. Comment. 18 comments. Chapter 39, the best way to prevent secret leaks. When Felon saw David approaching, he tried to escape but couldn't even move. Help, help. 
He tried to shout, but his voice was not heard far away, and no one would come to this abandoned suburban factory. David approached step by step, and the footsteps struck his heart like the devil of hell, making him unable to bear the fear. Listen, imprisoning and injuring a police detective is a federal felony. Felon swallowed and said. A 17-year-old high school student may just be impulsive. He wants to persuade and intimidate David to give up his irrational behavior. Snapped. David unhurriedly straightened up Felon who was tied to the chair, adjusted his head with force, and spread a wet towel over his face. Since the birth of waterboarding in the Middle Ages, it has been known as one of the most brutal and inhumane torture techniques in human history. The flat and stable voice contained a faint coldness that made people feel cold. 1. I like this type of torture. It's simple, efficient, and bloodless. No, no. Felon yelled in panic, realizing what was about to happen. The head tried to struggle, but the body was like being held by iron clamps, motionless, unable to struggle. Crash. David held a bucket of tens of kilograms steadily with one hand, and poured the water slowly and steadily, rushing into the mouth and nose of the flange under the towel. Save, save. Felon's words of begging for mercy were drowned by the water current, and he was unable to speak as he coughed. He tried to breathe but the soaked towel clung to his face, blocking oxygen. In less than 30 seconds, with the rapid consumption of oxygen in the blood, the pain of suffocation as if he was about to drown began. The veins on his neck were bulging, and his legs were like strangled rabbits, twitching every second. Take a deep breath, dizziness is normal. At the moment the interrogation really started, David reminded him kindly. The lack of oxygen made him breathe and swallow uncontrollably, causing a large amount of water to choke into Felon's stomach, lung lobes, and bronchi, making him suffocate even more painfully. He screamed in despair and was submerged in water before he could spit out a full word. Sam's screams came from the abandoned factory. From the Spanish Inquisition to modern intelligence organizations, 80% of those who have been subjected to waterboarding have succumbed. I hope you are not the 20%, Sam Felon. There was hope in his tone. Because the rest are all victims who were accidentally tortured to death by the executioner. 3. Uh, um. Intense pain and fear swept through Felon's body and mind, destroying his not-so-strong will. As soon as he felt the pain of suffocation 30 seconds later, he began to try various methods to convey the meaning of confession. But he couldn't speak, his hands and feet were tied, and he, who clearly wanted to confess, was still being tortured to make him confess. In the darkness and suffocation, two painfully long minutes were spent. Felon's consciousness gradually became blurred, and his hands and feet began to twitch abnormally. It's almost there, and the scene won't look good if it continues. David put down the bucket. People who suffer from waterboarding will become incoherent over time. Vomit. The towel on his face was removed, and the tearful felon regained his sight. Like a drowned person landing on the shore, he instinctively breathed in the air greedily. It took more than ten seconds for his pupils to focus, and he seemed to turn around from the gate of hell. His face was pale and his body was shaking with fear. Oh, that's right. Seeing his expression, David raised his eyebrows with a smile on his face, as if he just remembered something. I forgot to tell you in advance if you want to confess, how to notify me. Felon could not see any traces of sudden memory on David's face. He seemed to see a devil, speaking with wide eyes, fear written on his face, and teeth chattering. Devil, devil, you've wasted a lot of my time, it's time to tell me what I want to know. Lifting up his chair, David suppressed his smile and said slowly, Still I think you want to have a second round. I, I confess. Like an electric shock, Felon hurriedly begged for mercy. If he hadn't been bound by a chair, David believed he would have knelt on the ground and kowtowed, willing to give everything in order not to suffer from the pain just now. Snapped. Pressing the button, the scheduled emails were cancelled and deleted. David looked up at the terrified Felon and closed his laptop. Thank you for your cooperation. You, you are not an ordinary person. Felon, who shrank and hugged his body, said while trembling. What did you say? David didn't seem to hear clearly. Your hands were like iron tongs just now, with abnormal strength. When you pinched my face, no matter how hard I struggled, I couldn't shake it a little bit. Recalling the severe pain that made him feel cheekbones were about to be crushed just now, Felon understood everything at this moment and looked at David as if looking at a terrifying monster, widening his eyes. There was only one explanation for why Clark would be so against his younger brother's actions when Clark clearly agreed to him but then disappeared. You are a monster stronger than your brother. 1. I don't like the word monster. David walked up to him, condescending, and a shadow shrouded him. I just have some tricks to deal with Clark. You, what do you want to do? Sitting on the chair, Felons felt that his heart was gripped by a big hand, that turned into fear, and he was so uneasy that he felt remorse in his heart. He shouldn't have provoked this guy. Let me go, please. Sorry, the best way for people to keep a secret is dead people. 13. David flipped his fingers, and the 50 cent coin was like a bullet, easily piercing through his head, and embedded in the brick wall behind with blood. 1. Felon stared at his eyes with his eyes open, not knowing when he died, and fell backward with the chair, stirring up a cloud of dust. Even if you lose, the 50 cents will still go to you. 2. You killed him, David. After school in the afternoon, in the attic of the warehouse. After waking up at noon, he kicked the kryptonite into the sewer. Clark searched for two or three laps outside the town at noon and after school but couldn't find Felon, so he asked him angrily. David looked calmly at the clouds outside, that's right. He's a police detective. Unexpectedly, his younger brother would admit it so easily, and Clark froze for a moment. I dealt with it very cleanly. He didn't have any principle of not killing. He didn't kill those capable people before, just to maximize his emotional points, and this felon is an ordinary person, so it's useless to keep him. 2. The body was buried under the concrete floor of the abandoned factory building, and no one will find it. I mean he may not have committed any felony at all. 4. Clark said in a deep voice, It's unlikely that the detective who's so good at threatening people will be a good cop. But he may not have violated the law seriously, otherwise, he may have been found and thrown into prison while working in the police station. Your innocence makes people laugh, my brother. David had expected him to think so and shook his head. He turned the laptop around on the loft table and pressed play. Creator's thoughts. The board rider 69. Creation is hard, cheer me up, like it, add to the library. Don't forget to send your power stones and review 5 stars. Comment. 18 comments. Chapter 40, Dad, did you really sell our farm and house? 
In the video, Felon, who was tied to a chair, confessed the crimes he had committed in the past. Frequently helping gangsters to sell whistleblower information, assassinating colleagues who have conflicts with themselves, planting obstacles to promotion in the police station, threatening people to steal various business secrets. The crimes he committed are enough for him to be shot five or six times. Finally, the video also showed Felon's desire to control Clark. If Clark is disobedient, I will give him a little incentive like taking a corpse and an unregistered gun, planting it on your father to frame him for murder, arresting him, and then I will have the rest of your family be a warning. There was a trembling voice in the video, although Felon explained it with an expression full of fear, but Clark could still hear the sinister calculation that sent chills down the spine. Perhaps his brother was right, he was naive enough to take a chance. I was wrong, too. After the video was played, Clark's face was slightly ugly, and he admitted his mistake to his brother. He looked into David's eyes carefully, his face full of concern. But you shouldn't kill people, brother. Before you have finished high school, you can beat people into vegetative states, torture confessions, kill people, and dispose of corpses without blinking an eye. I'm really a little scared. Strictly speaking, his younger brother David is still underage, but many things he has done are enough to make many adults shudder. Clark who is the future Superman, right now is more worried about David's future than someone being killed. Worries from Clark plus 35. The template has been fused 96%. What do you think of the soldiers who killed people in the defensive battles? 1. David said, are they uncontrolled murderers with perverted and evil minds? Of course not. Clark said, thinking how it could be a crime to defend the country. Then leave me alone. Throwing down a sentence, David turned and left. I'm protecting this family from any external troubles and damage. Looking at his brother's leaving back, Clark opened his mouth and was speechless. If his younger brother keeps like this and did not change much, he would not be worried, but he is still afraid that when some things develop, he would have a different mentality in the future. When the outcome of things was already doomed and he want to change it, he would be powerless to do it in time if he stops keeping David in check. 1. David crossed the line of murder today, and he didn't seem to have any psychological burden, kind of like crushing a bug and doing a trivial thing. 12. Clark couldn't help but feel worried, which reminded him of Ms. Cassandra's predictive vision of the future. If those pictures were true, the future David obviously didn't just limit using his strength to protecting this home. 1. The sky was covered with dark clouds, and cold raindrops fell on the glass. Metropolitan Environmental Protection Center, the top floor of a building. A meticulously groomed man in a suit and tie with his hair combed back, with a fighting spirit hidden in his temperament, looked solemnly at the crowd coming and going with umbrellas outside. The scenery here is really nice. A kind voice came, and a brown-haired man in a black coat walked into the office and took off his leather gloves. There was a smile on his face that made people feel comfortable. Good morning, Mr. Rickman, you are very welcome. Paul turned around slowly as if he was preparing to face a tough battle, his voice was serious and polite. Director Paul, you called me here, is it because I can contribute something to the Environmental Protection Center? 1. Sitting down leisurely on the chair across the table, twisting his body, he seemed a little disgusted that the chair was not comfortable enough. Rickman looked up and smiled. I heard that your company is doing some research in the town of Smallville and plans to acquire a few farms. Does your company have any plans? He also sat down in his own seat, looked directly at the other party's eyes, and got straight to the point. My plan is to build a large factory and create some workers and taxes for Metropolis. Rickman spread his hands. Without saying a word, Paul took out a bottle of water sample from the cabinet, put it on the table, and stared at him. What is this? The groundwater samples taken from the site of a factory you built recently have more parameters than the factory under your name. He said sharply. The relationship between Rickman Enterprise and the Environmental Protection Center has been maintained very well, Paul. Rickman didn't even look at it and pointed to the corner of the room with a smile. Did you know? The water dispenser in your room is sponsored by my company. I just had dinner with some of your colleagues two days ago. Not everyone will be bought by money. Tomorrow I will have a meeting with you. My people have issued a restraining order to prevent your company from approaching that town. He stood up, with a look of resignation in his eyes, and put his hands on the table. Listen to me, everyone is good, otherwise. Rickman also stood up, with a smile on his face and cold eyes. I have studied the pesticide factory under your company's name. It seems that there are a lot of cases of employee poisoning suing you, although you have suppressed them all. Paul took out a thick folder and confronted him fearlessly. I have contacted several people and decided to sue you again. Next, Mr. Rickman may be very busy and have no time to do other things. His eyes suddenly became more gloomy, and after a few seconds, Rickman suddenly smiled, shaking his head helplessly. You really hit me, Paul. He put his hand on Paul's shoulder, and his palm seemed to touch the back of his neck inadvertently, making physical contact with him. Paul's eyes and pupils became slack for a while and then returned to normal. When he looked at the business elite in front of him again, he felt extremely close and admiring, and suddenly felt extremely regretful. How could he be so rude to Mr. Rickman who keeps donating things to the environmental center? I'm sorry, sir, just now I... It's okay, Director Paul. Rickman had a gentle smile on his face, and put his arms around him to the window as if treating an old friend. I admire your fighting spirit very much, but I have never used money to bribe anyone. You are right, sir, I should not doubt your character. Look at the buildings outside, you have contributed so much to the work with a passion to ensure people's safe and environmentally friendly life, but do you own any place? No, sir, my wife and children are still renting an apartment for the time being. Thinking of his sad living conditions, Paul's eyebrows twitched and he said feeling a bit sad. Shaking his head, Rickman seemed to have sincere pity on his face. What's the point of living in such a condition? 2. Think about it, Mr. Paul. Patting the confused Paul on the shoulder, he turned and left. After a while, at the first floor lobby of the Metropolitan Environmental Protection Center, Rickman, who looked like he had a successful meeting, walked to the door. Boom, a figure leaped down from upstairs, smashed the taxi parked at the door, and fell into a puddle of flesh. Taylor, I heard that there are a few stubborn farmers who refuse to sell their land. He withdrew his cold gaze and took out his mobile phone from his pocket. Get the car ready, go to the town, I'll talk to them. The golden sunlight at noon shone through the glass into the room. 
David and Clark reached home after school, opening the door and not smelling any lunch. The atmosphere in the house was dull and depressing. Dad, Mom, what's the matter with you? David was surprised when he entered the room. In the living room, his father, Jonathan, sat at the dining table sadly, and his mother, Martha, stood aside angrily as if they had been fighting just now, and not paying attention to each other. This kind of situation was rarely been seen in this warm little home in the past ten years. What is this, Dad? Seeing his parents quarreling, Clark was puzzled and worried and pointed to the few documents Jonathan was looking at over and over in his hand. It's your father's contract to sell our farm and house. When Martha mentioned this matter, she couldn't help being angry, her eyes turned red and she accused her husband. How could you not discuss with me first, when you told me that this piece of land is our family heirloom where we will live together forever? What? The two brothers were stunned. Everything was fine in the morning, but when they just came back from school at noon, their house and land disappeared in a blink of an eye. David frowned, took a step closer, and confirmed it in disbelief. Father, did you really sell our farm and house? Creator's thoughts. The board rider 69. Creation is hard. Cheer me up. Like it? Add to the library. Don't forget to send your power stones and review 5 stars. Comment. 5 comments. Chapter 41. Template fusion. Impossible. His father, Jonathan, did not discuss it with anyone in the family and just quietly sold the farm he had been running for half his life. Dad, who did you sell the farm and house to? Clark couldn't help but ask. Sold to Bob Rickman of Rickman Enterprises, and he plans to build a chemical plant here. Martha couldn't figure out why her husband would do this. He obviously hates those factories that discharge pollution indiscriminately. I don't know what's going on. On the typewritten contract, his name was clearly signed, and Jonathan rubbed the contract in his hand. Jonathan's eyes were a little confused, with a feeling of being in a dream, and he told the bizarre story. I was working in the barn. He came in with someone and offered to buy my farm again. At the time, I sternly rejected him. He had a regretful expression and shook my hand before leaving. After that, Jonathan tried to recall, but the memory seems to have disappeared, and the brain was blank. I somehow seem to have signed this name. Somehow, David grasped the point keenly. I don't have that part of the memory anymore, but this is indeed my signature. The handwriting was exactly the same, and Jonathan shook his head in distress. What shall we say in court? My husband was possessed by an evil spirit. Mother Martha was very angry, her chest heaved violently, and she turned her head and said sadly to her two sons. I sent the original contract to a lawyer and consulted him. He said that there are no loopholes in the contract. There is almost no possibility of winning the lawsuit. We can only move out of here within three days. But this is our home. We have always lived here, on this land. Clark's eyes widened, unable to imagine leaving the home and farm where he grew up. Not anymore we will not. Jonathan said with a trace of regret. I inherited this land from your grandfather, and I sold it for only a hundred thousand dollars, I don't understand. He didn't know why he signed this contract, he was sure no one threatened him with his wife and children, forcing him to sign this contract. The farm and land where the Kent family has lived for generations will be moved within three days. The family was caught off guard by the sudden bad news. At this time, the atmosphere was extremely dull, and no one cared about lunch. Maybe I can ask someone for help and see if he can do anything. Thinking of something, Clark's eyes lightened slightly, and he looked at his parents. I saved Lex's life. Although you guys taught me not to ask for rewards just because I helped others, I don't think this is the time to be reserved. After finishing speaking, he glanced at David who was frowning and thinking about something seriously. This time, he wants to prove to his younger brother that not only he can protect the family, but also he can solve this matter without using forceful means. No one will suffer undue harm from it. I don't want to associate with the Luther family. Jonathan instinctively resisted. Do you have any other way now, Jonathan? Martha asked slightly angrily. Jonathan, the head of the family, opened his mouth and was speechless. He's a powered person. After thinking for a while, David suddenly said. He couldn't think of a second possibility for such a bizarre thing. Rickman is an ability user. Hearing the word powered person, Clark's expression changed, and he thought about it carefully. He and his younger brother have already encountered several strange abilities. Some can discharge electricity, some are like insects, and some can deform and absorb heat. It doesn't seem too surprising to have someone with the ability to confuse people and mess with their minds now. Like the person who attacked the school and Tina. The couple looked at each other, thinking of the ability user who their son said could discharge electricity and Tina, with surprise on their faces. Is there anything else that could make dad sell the farm he loves without even discussing it with us? Facing his parents, David shrugged. But, how to solve this matter now? He deliberately made a relaxed gesture so as not to make them more tense and had a relaxed tone. The couple was frowning. Even if they know the root of the problem, can they really tell the judge in court that Rickman has superpowers, and has confused and messed with their family, so they should nullify the legal effect of the contract? Mom and Dad, don't worry, let me talk to him. David narrowed his eyes and smiled softly. With some conversation, Mr. Rickman may change his mind. His tone was gentle, as if he really wanted to reason with the other party, and turned to leave. Clark's expression changed. Judging from the previous examples of turning people into a vegetable, he believed that David's expression was not just about conversation. I'll go to. Clark, David, you have to be careful. With Clark accompanying him, Jonathan and Martha instantly felt relieved and stopped their two sons to give them several instructions. If it doesn't work, our family can find another place to live in the town, and it won't delay your schooling. The integrity of a family doesn't depend on which land you live on. David nodded, reassuring his parents not to worry, and turned to leave through the door. Not far away, Clark, who followed, looked back at the farm and walked along. Mom and Dad don't know that you don't need my protection at all. On the contrary, I want to protect other people from under your hands. Mom and Dad don't know the true powers of David which gives him a headache at all, but he can't tell them the truth yet. Just help David cover up. Protect what? Protect the person who cheated our farm and house away with his ability. Feeling that he was implying something, David glanced at him. David, you don't have to be so rough and ruthless every time you do something. Hearing the unkindness in David's tone aimed at Rickman, Clark reached out to stop him and lowered his voice seriously. Rickman has a lot of money, and if something happens to him, the major newspapers will pay attention to it. Unlike Smallville, a small town, even if something happens, it won't be published in the newspapers. If you turn people into vegetates again this time, afraid that he still won't be able to convince his assertive brother, he gritted his teeth. I will never take the blame in front of my parents again. What do you want me to do? 
Clark actually threatened himself with this incident, and David raised his eyebrows as if he was meeting him for the first time. After he crossed the line of killing someone, Clark really began to worry completely, and his behavior was no longer so meek when facing him. But thinking about it, what Clark said is indeed a problem. Rickman's reputation is not low. The companies and factories under his name have almost monopolized the pesticide production business in Metropolis and several surrounding cities. He suddenly was found to be in a vegetative state. Metropolis newspapers will not miss this piece of news. Template has been integrated to 99%. It was already 99% two days ago, and he hoped this new template is a template that can show the character's ability at will without affecting his body. Obviously, he has the strength to protect himself, but he still has caused worry his parents, so David had a headache. Let's discuss who will solve this matter safely and properly first. Hearing what his younger brother said, Clark quietly heaved a sigh of relief and said in a deep voice without saying anything about the plan he had in mind. Last time he almost brought trouble to the family and implicated his father, this time he will use this matter to suppress his younger brother and let his younger brother realize that he is not as good as him so that he can speak with some weight in his younger brother's heart in the future. Your proposal is very good, but I... David was expressionless, feeling that the proposal was boring. Don't refuse. The tall Clark guessed what he wanted to say, and said toughly to his younger brother. His hard body stood tall, his eyes were firm and powerful, and there was a trace of strength and force in his eyes. Your change is astonishing, Clark. Looking up and down at Clark's new look, David raised his eyebrows, from now on, you plan to establish the majesty of being the big brother, and strictly discipline your brother who is in danger of going bad. Hearing David tell what he was thinking in his mind, Clark secretly clenched his fists, did not avoid looking at David, and said sincerely, I'm doing it for your own good. Hearing this sentence, David, who was a little stressed, was considering whether to take out a piece of kryptonite from his pocket and beat the tough Clark back to his original form. Suddenly, his face changed slightly and he felt a sudden change in the template. Okay, you agreed. Clark, who was secretly ready to face an enemy, was a little surprised when he frowned and was about to retreat a few hundred meters immediately in case his brother took out the meteor rock again. Creator's thoughts. The board rider 69. Creation is hard. Cheer me up. Like it? Add to the library. Don't forget to send your power stones and review 5 stars. Comment. 11 comments. Chapter 42. The Black King Template 18. Knock knock. Clark was knocking on the door of Chloe's house. Chloe, who was taking an afternoon nap after lunch, went downstairs with pillow marks on her sleepy face. When she saw Clark outside the door, she rubbed her sleepy eyes, feeling a little puzzled. Clark, you came over without calling, is there some emergency matter? Chloe, is uncle at home? Clark, who had changed back to his normal look, looked inside, not looking like the tough look he had put on with David earlier. 1. He didn't come back from the factory, and I have to cook by myself again at noon, Chloe complained. Chloe's father worked as a department manager in the fertilizer factory managed by Luthor, and he was usually busy with work. Our family has encountered some troubles, Chloe, can you help me? Clark asked. Trouble? Come in. Facing a friend's request for help, although Chloe was puzzled, she didn't refuse and welcomed him into the house. Our family's farm. On the sofa in the living room, Clark quickly told what happened. I need information about this Mr. Rickman. With a handshake, how can someone sell their farmland which was maintained with so much hard working? Chloe, who likes to explore such strange things the most, suddenly became energetic. Wait a minute, I'll go upstairs to get the computer. She quickly ran upstairs. Clark touched the blue hood hidden in his trouser pocket. 3. He plans to first find out whether Rickman is an ability user, then get the other party's address from Chloe, and then go to his door to settle the matter. After a while, Chloe excitedly ran down with her laptop and was about to search for various information about Rickman when she turned on the computer. She suddenly remembered something and looked outside the door suspiciously. By the way, why don't I see David? His farm and house were going to be taken away. How could David not follow with such a big event? David. Clark scratched his head and didn't know what to say. As soon as he heard his brother's promise to not interfere, he immediately launched with super speed and came to Chloe's house, for fear of wasting a little time and losing to his brother again. As for what David is doing now, he doesn't know either. On the outskirts of the town, in the vast and silent forest, whoosh, a figure approaching the speed of sound appeared and stopped suddenly, and a gust of wind swept the fallen leaves in front of it. Thanos' template has been fused 100%. 2. Loading new template. New template loading. 1%. 3%. After stopping his body and confirming no one was around, David looked at the information in front of him. Just now he wanted to reject Clark's proposal of doing things in his own way, but suddenly the integration of Thanos' template was completed. After Clark ran away, he immediately came to this uninhabited forest, ready to meet the fusion of the second template. It's the first time the two templates are going to be fused, so better be careful. David didn't want to make some noise in front of the farm and worry his parents. What will the new template be? His eyes lit up, full of anticipation. Suddenly, the body became hot and continued to heat up. It was as if hot magma was rushing inside the blood vessels, and the cosmic energy contained in every cell was surging. Bones crackled. Deep in the body, it seemed that something was merging. His heartbeat accelerated uncontrollably, and David looked at his hands, the skin that had turned purple due to the use of strength beyond ordinary people was fading slightly. He touched his chin, and the original ravine-like lines that Thanos had were decreasing. 1. Crackle, a purple energy ripple like electric current sprang out from his hand. A big tree in the distance was hit, and immediately seemed to be swept by a laser, and there was a hideous wound more than 10 centimeters deep with sparks on the tree. Swish swish swish, ripples of energy shot out, and the surrounding trees were swept down. The cosmic energy contained in the body was roaring, and David felt that as the new template is loaded and integrated, the previously unusable hidden energy in the body was breaking through some obstacles. Like a raging tide about to break through the dam, there seemed to be something stuffed in his chest, and there was a feeling that it was about to come out after being suppressed, and he punched out with a low growl. Hum, David's fist released a purple high concentration cosmic energy light wave, which roared away, instantly piercing through the tall trees in front of him, and blasting straight through hundreds of meters of distance. There was a fist-sized hole in the body of all the big trees directly in front, and the bark and wood were burned to ashes. In the blink of an eye, it spread to a range of nearly one mile, and he hurriedly gathered back his energy. Bob Rickman, 42 years old this year, studied at Smallville Township High School in high school, graduated from Kansas Western University, and worked in farm equipment sales after graduation. 
Chloe read out the computer and searched for information about Rickman. She is proficient in computer technology and once developed a program that can centralize and summarize the searched information so that it was more convenient for her to write articles in the school newspaper. Unexpectedly, Mr. Rickman, who is going to open a chemical plant in our town, is not only a local but also our senior. She curled her lips while browsing the latest business plan released by Rickman Enterprise. Is this how he gives back to his hometown? Is there anything strange about him? Clark was more concerned about other aspects. Let me see. After graduating, he was engaged in the sales industry, and his performance was at the bottom. He was almost fired, but in his second year, he made rapid progress and occupied the top sales list for three consecutive years. He later founded his own company with huge bonuses and started to struggle in the business world. Thinking of Clark's strange words before, about him persuading Uncle Jonathan to sell the land and house, Chloe found this suspicious. Even though he is often criticized for the chaotic management of the company, he still lives smoothly. He has successfully negotiated with big businesses one after another and earned hundreds of millions of dollars. Does that count? Was his second year when he began to make progress, 1991? Yes, it was 1991. 1. The year that the meteor shower came. Clark took a deep breath, thinking that David was correct in his guess. Chloe affirmed that no one in this town would forget the year of the meteorite shower even without looking through the news to compare the year. Where does he live now, Chloe? Now there was only one question left, and Clark stood up excitedly. Number 146, Monty Street, Metropolis. Chloe was a little puzzled by Clark's reaction but answered anyway. Thank you, Chloe, I'll treat you to your favorite cream brulee next time. I have to leave right now. Hearing the address, Clark thanked her and left happily. Not only is he far faster than David, but with the help of Chloe, he saved the time of inquiring about Rickman, so he will definitely win this time. Wait a minute. Chloe saw a piece of news on the webpage, her face changed, and she ran out to greet Clark. But it was discovered that Clark's figure had disappeared in the open space in front of the door. During extreme running, unlike David's speed, where people can still see the trajectory of movement, Clark is so fast that people can't see him, running in a flash. He quickly took out the blue hood from his pocket and put it on his head with piercing eyes. He will definitely be one step ahead of his brother this time. But Clark didn't know that David hadn't set off yet, and he even planned to leave this matter to him alone first. Boom, smoke and dust rose everywhere in the forest, and the dull sound startled the birds. The energy on the purple skin disappeared, David clenched his fists excitedly, and the majestic power in his body surged like waves. In the past, he could only feel the cosmic energy that could not be mobilized, but now he just raised his palm and sent it out like from a finger. The beam of energy light hit a dead and fallen old tree in the distance. Under the huge condensed energy, the entire piece of wood was annihilated, and not even a single residue remained. The new template has been loaded, the Black King template has been fused by 30%. 7. Mutant Black King. 18. David's eyes were filled with unexpected joy. Now he knows why, the energy that could not be released before can now be released. Not only that but there are also other abilities. The fusion of the two templates and my body seems to be more than just one plus one. 3. He clenched his fists, and dazzling purple rays burst out from his eyes. Creator's thoughts. The Board Rider 69. Creation is hard, cheer me up, like it, add to the library. Don't forget to send your power stones and review 5 stars. Comment. 22 Comments. Chapter 43, The New Ability to Manipulate Energy. A villa whose cold and simple Nordic style revealed the indifference of elites. After easily solving a few stubborn farmers, Rickman returned home, threw the car keys on the coffee table, and went to the underground wine cellar to get a bottle of red wine and taste it leisurely. Suddenly, a figure was reflected behind the glass surface of the coffee table, standing behind him silently. He jumped back in shock, the hairs on his body standing on end. Who are you? The tall man was dressed in a blue overall like a lumberjack, with a pair of sturdy brown logging boots on his feet, and a blue hood with only two holes on his head, said the strange man in a low voice. Mr. Rickman, don't be afraid. 2. What do you want to do? Seeing that the other party didn't have a gun in his hand, Rickman, who was startled, was relieved, and showed annoyance. You used abnormal means to control the farmers to sell their farms and homes without knowing it. It's not fair. Control? I don't know what you're talking about. Hearing the guy's words, Rickman's eyes flashed unnaturally. If you want money, you don't have to play tricks like this. I don't want your money, as long as you terminate the contracts that are based on falsehoods and bring trouble to the farmers. Clark took a step forward, his tall and strong body presenting out a strong oppressive force. Rickman pretended to be afraid to take a step back, and rushed forward in the next second, trying to touch Clark's neck with his hand. Swish, in a blink of an eye, Rickman looked to have rushed to nothing, and Clark came behind him. I know your ability. I think, without any physical contact with the target, you can't activate this ability. His father, Jonathan, was still awake at the beginning of the discussion and rejected the other party forcefully. He lost his memory and signed the signature only after shaking hands with the person in front of him. If he could control other people with just a thought, it would not be so complicated. Most of the ability users must have physical contact to activate their abilities, just like Sean who could only absorb body heat through touch. If you don't want your ability to be leaked, you'd better do as I said, Mr. Rickman. You, you. Turning his head to look at the strange man in blue who looked to have teleported behind him, Rickman opened his eyes wide his voice revealing his shocked emotions. You also have powers. Are you going to terminate the contract, or let would you wait for me to send news about your ability to major newspapers? Regardless of the astonishment of the situation, Clark learned and used the method that Felon once threatened him with. You choose the option yourself, Mr. Rickman. I, I promise you. Thinking for a while and feeling aggrieved, Rickman struggled, and said. In fact, there is no need to think too much. On the one hand, my biggest secret has been exposed, and the reputation of the company of hundreds of millions under my name will be ruined and investigated, and I would be overwhelmed by the strange and defensive eyes of others. A wise choice. I will keep an eye on you, Mr. Rickman. If you haven't terminated the contract before the sun, tomorrow the headlines of the city's newspapers will be vacated for you. With that, Clark dodged and brought a gust of wind to blow the curtains, and his tall figure disappeared from the room like a ghost. The surprised Rickman stood alone in the room, his face was gloomy, and he clenched his fists tightly. Suddenly, he caught a glimpse of the place where the man in blue was standing. On the black-gray shiny marble floor, there were a few small pieces of soil with grass slag. 1. Rickman's eyes lit up, he stepped forward and squatted down, carefully picking it up. Fair, you know who I am, but I don't know who you are. 
It's not fair, is it? Hi, is that the Metropolis Geological Survey? He took out his mobile phone, made a call, and sneered. I want to send a few pieces of soil for inspection. 5. In the forest, David looked at his hands and felt the majestic power in his body. He punched a big tree surrounded by the forest in front of him. Click. Several tons of trees were broken by a terrible force. With the sound of branches breaking, they fell between the two trees and fell to the ground, stirring up a cloud of dust. David turned and hit another tree. 1. In the two punches consecutively, I actually used the same strength. The difference is that the second punch comes with the kinetic energy he absorbed when he hit the first punch. This is the ability of Sebastian Shaw, the Black King, to absorb various forms of energy and release it at will, or to temporarily strengthen his strength, speed, and endurance through energy. The ability to absorb energy includes but is not limited to kinetic energy, thermal energy, electrical energy, and even magical energy. It provides an extremely powerful defense. The upper limit of the Black Emperor's ability can easily drain a small nuclear reactor, which can be regarded as a very powerful template. 3. The majestic energy in David's body is surging like a sea, and after merging of this ability with the body of Thanos, the upper limit of energy absorption has been greatly increased. 3. Thanos is a variant of the eternal race. Every drop of blood and every cell contains cosmic energy. His body is a huge energy container. 1. However, it seems that I can only absorb kinetic energy now. David tested the newly acquired ability. Absorbing kinetic energy is as easy as breathing the air and drinking water. The energy rays emitted from his hand ignited the broken wood on the ground. He put his hand into the fire and found that it was much more difficult to absorb. It's like I haven't drank water for a few days, my throat is dry and uncomfortable, and I'm forced to swallow uncooked grains. It's not smooth at all. He shook his head. It should be because the degree of template fusion is not enough. 1. Withdrawing his palm from the fire, David looked thoughtful, took a deep breath, and blew it out. A violent gust of wind blew out the fire, otherwise, a forest fire may rise up and consume the forest. When the degree of fusion increases in the future, I estimate that I can absorb the electrical energy, thermal energy, and other energies on the physical section of the energies. 2. At the end of the fusion, I should be able to absorb the magical energy from the magic side. At that time, my magic resistance will reach a terrible level. The abilities of most superheroes or supervillains have no special resistance to magic. For example, Clark, his magic resistance is very average compared to his physical resistance, so people joke that the magic resistance is negative. 3. Originally, the Black King's ability is strong, but it is not without shortcomings and flaws. After merging with the Thanos template, these flaws have disappeared. 1. David felt the spontaneous recovery of the cosmic energy in his body, and his eyes flickered with excitement. For example, if the energy in Shaw's body is not replenished, it will result in a disadvantage. He is just an ordinary person without energy. If he wants to replenish his energy by using enough kinetic energy, he must be beaten by others, or he has to keep hitting the wall to recharge himself. Idiotic behavior. It was undoubtedly troublesome, but he had this problem. David has the eternal physique, and can spontaneously restore cosmic energy, which can fill his entire body with cosmic energy. The other thing is that when the absorbed energy is close to the upper limit, which is extremely dangerous for the Black King, if the upper limit is accidentally exceeded, the energy in the body will be out of control, and the body will be torn apart and injured in the lightest cases and will be wiped out at worst. David can easily overload his energy in the body in comparison. He relied on the physique of the eternal race, and the loss of energy control was at most a minor injury. And with the help of Thanos template, I don't need to use my hands to assist in absorbing energy. When the Black King absorbs energy, it is like other mutants when they display their abilities, such as Magneto and Professor X, they need to use hand gestures to concentrate on launching their abilities. 3. But since his every cell can store energy, it doesn't need to be so troublesome under normal circumstances. The fusion of two templates is much better than just getting the power of a single individual template. Creator's Thoughts. The Board Rider 69. Creation is hard, cheer me up. Like it? Add to library. Don't forget to send your power stones and review 5 stars. Comment. 11 comments. Chapter 44, I will wholeheartedly assist you in defeating your evil brother Clark. 2. There should be nothing that can threaten me with normal technology on the earth now, even ordinary nuclear bombs. David's strength increased greatly, and a smile appeared on the corner of his mouth. Only the kind of super large impacting nuclear bomb that can spread to the whole world and may cause a nuclear apocalypse will harm him. As for why using the term normal technology, the science in the DC world is actually not that scientific. There are always talents on earth who create some top-notch black technology in the entire universe from time to time by mistake or otherwise. For example, Cyborg, who is the result of the fusion of a man and a mother box, the red tornado that can fight against the Kryptonians, and even the Amazo that could replicate all superpowers seen and also defeated the Justice League. 5. The latter is almost comparable to Doomsday, the ultimate weapon of destruction created by Kryptonian biotechnology. 2. Taking back his flying thoughts, David prepared to leave after the final test of the use of the new ability. Release energy rays with both eyes. Thanos has biological transformation and high-tech battle suits, and he has the ability to absorb and manipulate energy. I've tried releasing energy from my palm just now, and the eyes should work too. David mobilized the energy in his body, gathered his eyes, and after heating up slightly, two purple energy rays emitting a high temperature and destructive aura suddenly shot out. Two scorched black deep grooves cut across the ground and landed at one point. Seeing that it was possible, he smiled excitedly and increased his energy output. Zizi, the ground was melted into magma by the terrifyingly high temperature, boiling and evaporating. The terrifying high temperature evaporated the water around the ground, the ground cracked, and the leaves withered and curled up. If it continues, the surrounding trees may burn. David, who didn't want to create a wildfire, cut off his energy, and the purple energy in his eyes radiated light as if an attractive god standing on the ground, and he blinked his slightly hot eyes. 3. No big problem. There is no difference in the releaseability of the eyes and hands, and there is no need to cause any more damage. 1. After testing all abilities, David calmed down and was about to turn around and leave. He didn't care about the so-called competition and winning or losing that Clark said. Although it shouldn't be difficult to solve this matter with Clark's ability, I'm just a little bit uneasy. The fully powerful Superman rolls over from time to time, let alone the youth version. Click. Suddenly, there was a faint sound of dead branches being crushed in the distance. Come out. 1. 
David frowned immediately, his eyes quickly turned to a bush in the distance, and he whispered. Got too excited by getting a new template and forgot about other things, not realizing that someone peeked aside. Speaking of it, I mainly don't have Clark's super hearing and supervision after all, although Clark's two abilities are useless most of the time. 2. Behind the bushes, a tall and beautiful female figure came out, with shock remaining on her face, looking at the magma on the ground, and muttering in her mouth. Eyes that can burn everything. It's you. David was a little surprised when he saw that figure. He didn't expect that the people who discovered his ability were not some stranger but a classmate. There is nothing wrong with the legend. Kyla looked at David, she had excited eyes as if she had seen a person who was only in mythology come to reality, and she murmured excitedly. 3. What legend? After seeing that someone saw his abilities, David kept a neutral face, not feeling too flustered. Because the person in front of him was not an ordinary person. When did you come here? David can't, don't worry, I already know your ability, and I won't expose your ability to outsiders. Kyla, who was attracted here by the ability cannon that penetrated nearly a mile earlier, raised her hand, indicating that there was no malice, and said excitedly. No. David frowned deeper, his eyes full of doubt. You and your brother Clark can't, when you were fighting with that bug guy on the edge of the forest, I saw everything in the depths of the forest. Kyla told everything without reservation. Now she has identified which of the two brothers is Naman. After listening to her story, David's eyes flashed, connecting everything together. She saw that he and Clark showed extraordinary abilities while dealing with Greg, so Kyla secretly paid attention to him and Clark. Ever since the party that day, he had sensed that someone was secretly watching him and Clark on campus from time to time. Since you have been able to keep your mouth shut for so many days, I hope you can do the same right now. David said with a cold voice, danger flashing across his eyes, and he did not conceal the warning in his tone, before turning around and leaving. If you don't want to be visited by me, you can't talk about this anymore. Wait a minute, Naman. 1. Seeing that David was about to leave, Kira hurriedly said, You have to be careful of your brother. My name is not Naman. Faced with a strange address, David paused and turned his head slightly. Also, why should I be careful about Clark? This Kyla was weird from head to toe, and looked at him abnormally, with a burning passion in her eyes, looking as if a loyal believer who wanted to follow behind him. In the legend of our tribe, your name is Naman, and your brother is called Sajith. Naman, Sajith. 2. David turned his head in doubt, not understanding what she was talking about. What tribal legend? Our Kawach tribe has a long history and has a history of 500 years. 500 years ago, a man from another planet fell in love with the mother of our tribe. Because of this forbidden affair, our tribe was born. Facing David, Kyla slowly told the secret history of the tribe, with long suppressed excitement on her face. The day he left, he flew into the sky and left a prophecy that 500 years later, his people would descend into the world with the fire of the sky, named Naman, to prevent his brother Seiji from destroying the Kawach tribe and the world. 4. Except for the part about the alien planet, it's just a legend with some original flavor. But it has nothing to do with me. David raised his eyebrows and lifted his foot to leave. He was sure that he was not some kind of Naman, and Sajith, whom Kyla said would destroy the world, could not be Clark. I'm a native of Earth. According to the legend, Naman's characteristic is not only that he came into the world with the fire from the sky, Kyla caught up and said hastily. He also has more strength than ten men put together, and the sight from his eyes can burn everything. You fit all of these, David. 5. The tribe has always speculated that the meteorite shower accompanied by flames on that day 17 years ago coincided with the prophesied time, and it could be the legendary sky fire. That day in the forest, after seeing that both brothers David and Clark had super strength, Kayla made a guess amidst doubts. A pair of brothers with extraordinary strength, one of them has purple skin that doesn't look like a human on earth, is it the pair of brothers in the prophecy? I've been watching you since I saw you in the forest, trying to make sure which one of you is Naman and which one is Sajith. As she spoke, she showed her ability to tell David that she was not some lunatic. Kyla's palms turned into white wolf claws. Until just now, I saw light from your eyes melting the earth into magma. I confirmed your identity. You are the prophesied savior Naman. Wolf? There have been rumors in the town that there are giant white wolves in the forest at night. Could it be you? Seeing her wolf claws, David stopped in his tracks, a little surprised. As for the legend Kira told, he still listened to it as a casual story, without much fluctuation in his heart. Maybe the aliens, the descendant tribes of the aliens, and even the prediction that the aliens will come to the earth again are all true, but it definitely has nothing to do with him. This is a meeting of fate, Naman. I am the daughter of the chief of the Kawach tribe. I have the bracelet left by the mother of the tribe. I also discovered you. The tribe waited for the prophecy for 500 years to appear, and Kyla, with a heroic temperament, also confirmed in her heart that David was Naman. Her voice was full of excitement, and she raised her hand. On her wrist was a beautiful silver bracelet studded with turquoise. I will wholeheartedly and unreservedly assist you in defeating your evil brother Clark, and help you prevent him from destroying the world. 17. Creator's Thoughts. The Board Rider 69. Creation is hard. Cheer me up. Like it. Add to library. Have some idea about my story? Comment it and let me know. Comment. 14 Comments. Chapter 45. A Warm Meal. Evil Clark? David had a strange expression, feeling quite novel after hearing this kind of statement for the first time from someone. Clark should really be here to hear these words and feel the feeling of being guarded against like a murderer. The legends in your tribe have nothing to do with me. I don't have the ability to turn into a wolf like you. No longer intending to give Kyla a chance to speak more, David's body flashed away at a speed close to the speed of sound, leaving behind a few leaves that fell due to the strong wind. Clutching the withered yellow leaves falling in front of her eyes, Kyla looked in the direction of David's departure with hope in her eyes while her face was filled with countless complex emotions. The kind and gentle old lady in the nursing home had predicted the future for her before she died. Do not go near David and his brother, or her fate will fall into misfortune. If misfortune is her fate, she will not escape, and she has already made mental preparations, as long as she can help Naman defeat Sajith. David now knows why the transfer student was giving emotions of closeness to and wariness towards him. Under that fiery gaze that seemed to pursue him as her faith, he was made uncomfortable by Kyla. It took him a lot of time after obtaining new abilities in the forest and going through the experiments. Seeing that the afternoon was approaching, David went home. David, are you back? The previous dull atmosphere in the house was swept away. 
Clark couldn't hide the trace of satisfaction at the corner of his mouth. Just now, Rickman has sent someone to terminate the contract. Not only for us but also for the contracts of several other farms. He had never realized that helping people made him so happy. And the most important thing is that he was better than his brother, and he solves this matter quickly and without murdering or hurting someone. This time, my younger brother should realize that one doesn't have to be so brutal and cruel to solve the problem. Son, we don't have to move. Jonathan and Martha nodded with a smile, the farm and the house are back to our names. Clark had just told his parents how he did it. He only said that he left his younger brother because of impatience, ran to Chloe's house first, and hid his identity to force Rickman, who got the farm by cheating with his ability, to revoke the contract. Jonathan and Martha also told it again, and David also learned what happened. Although the two were a little worried about their son's use of his abilities, they were relieved to some extent when they thought that the meteorite might have created many powered people. You must be hungry. I'll make lunch right now. There should be some time before you go to school. After the matter was settled, the big stone in her heart was removed, Martha remembered that her two sons hadn't eaten yet, so she ran into the kitchen happily to make something to eat. Without your intelligent and quick analysis, Clark wouldn't have been able to resolve this matter so quickly. Son, you've done a good job. Jonathan patted his youngest son on the shoulder in relief and walked into the kitchen to work with his wife as if they had never had a fight. The clouds cleared, and the home regained its former atmosphere of ease and warmth. David knew that his father took care of his emotions just now, and hoped that he would not be annoyed and depressed because Clark had his superhuman ability to solve this matter while he was left behind. David, why aren't you particularly happy? Standing beside his younger brother, Clark crossed his arms and asked in confusion. Because I solved this matter before you. Could it be that David is so competitive? What's there to be happy about? Looking away from his parents, David looked at him, frowning. Don't you think your parents are too kind? The house and the farm belong to us. When this happened, they would be satisfied as long as the farm and the house that was taken away came back to them. Although I have seen the kindness of my parents, sometimes I can't help but feel that it is true that kindness is easy to be bullied. I feel that mom and dad are not very happy. Clark pulled David aside and whispered. He just heard his parents talking about reporting Rickman so that he can no longer use his ability to do evil and take away things that others value. But first, some learned Rickman's secret and then threatened him, and then someone later reported that he was abnormal. Will Rickman suspect whether the man in blue is Clark? Jonathan and Martha hesitated thinking about this matter, thinking about keeping this news to themselves. You can report it together with several farmers. David said, looking at his parents who were making lunch in the kitchen. Will the target be too obvious? Several farmers who wondered why they suddenly sold their farm and house suspected that Rickman had used some drug or potion to get them to sign the contract, and reported it to the police for investigation, which was very reasonable. It's a way. Clark's eyes lit up and he nodded. Based on my understanding of our parents, if this matter is not resolved, they will always be depressed in their hearts and it might become a knot in their hearts. T slash N, not equals trauma. He looked at David, who had just made a plan, with some doubts. David actually wanted to solve this matter so gently this time, which was completely out of his character. Is the power of my example this time so strong? Could it be that I misunderstood David all the time, and it was because the two of them exposed their abilities and identities before, and David had to do that. As long as I cover up my identity in the future, the incident of David beating people into vegetative states will not happen again. Thinking of this, Clark couldn't help but be delighted. He didn't know that although David had just proposed a method, he didn't think that method would work. Reporting for no reason without any evidence, the police may not take it seriously. Moreover, it is not so easy to sanction him as a billionaire with a wide network and energy like Rickman. Combined with his ability, it's almost a 100% failure. David thought, shaking his head secretly. He brought it up just to let his parents stop worrying about it until tomorrow. As for after tomorrow, this matter will no longer be a problem. Clark, David, it's time to eat. The lunch was quickly finished, and Martha said to her two sons gently, finish it quickly, so you can go to school. David sat at the dining table with Clark with a smile, and after eating two mouthfuls, he looked up and praised his mother's apple pie for being even better. Watching his two sons devouring their food, Jonathan gently held his wife in his arms in the kitchen. The afternoon sun shone on the two of them, making them feel warm. Taking care of a farm can be tiring at times, and perhaps, as the saying goes, some things are only cherished when they are lost. They didn't get any rest at noon today, but the two of them had a faint sense of peace and happiness. It is the greatest happiness for our family to be like this all the time. Mother Martha sighed, I'm afraid it will be difficult. Jonathan shook his head and smiled, your two dear sons will go to college sooner or later, get into a relationship, and marry a wife. I don't know what kind of wife Clark and David will find. Hearing this, Martha couldn't help but think about it. Ahem. David and Clark, both of whom had better hearing than ordinary people, looked at each other and were choked unnaturally. Eat slowly, look at both of you. Hastily stepping forward, Martha poured a glass of water for her sons while caring slightly with complaints, and the room was filled with a warm atmosphere. Creator's Thoughts. The Board Rider 69. Creation is hard. Cheer me up. Like it? Add to library. Have some idea about my story? Comment it and let me know. Comment. 11 Comments. Chapter 46. David, did you kill someone again? 12. As night fell, stars hung high in the sky, and dark clouds floated silently, quietly covering half of the visible moon. Rickman had just returned home after taking care of the company's business all afternoon. There was a fire lit in the fireplace, and under the light of the fire, he was sitting on the sofa chair with an uncertain expression, like a wild beast threatened after being comfortable in his territory for a long time. Since gaining his ability in the meteorite shower more than a decade ago, Rickman's life has been going smoothly, no longer limited to being the small salesman who always drank around and was almost going to be fired, and until now he has achieved great success. The feeling of being threatened, the feeling of embarrassment, I haven't experienced it for a long time, the man in blue. Several small soil samples fallen from shoe soles found on the living room floor have been sent for testing, and the results will be available tomorrow. With me sending the soil from these farms to the Geological Survey Bureau for comparison, it's not difficult to confirm which farmer you are related to. 4. Rickman's eyes were stern, and he was fiddling with several sealed test tubes. These are the soil samples that he quietly took from those farms he bought in the afternoon. Soil testing is a very complicated thing. 
The organic and inorganic substances contained in the soil in different places, as well as bacteria and viruses, will present different data. Especially the soil of the farms. Some farms raise cattle and sheep, and the manure is mixed into the soil. Some farms grow corn, some grow wheat fields, and some grow fruits and vegetables. The fertilizers and brands used are also different. From this point, it's not hard to find you out, man in blue. From the time the land purchase contract was signed, to the time when the man in blue suddenly appeared at home threatening him at noon, it was just a few hours, and it was another small town in the countryside. He wouldn't believe that guy was a masked vigilante who just coincidentally heard about it and came to administer justice. It definitely has something to do with those farmers. A gust of wind blew in the room, the curtains were blown, and the moonlight shone into the room like silver gauze. On the sofa in the room, there was an extra figure at some point. You are careful, a deep voice said from beside him. Who? Rickman hurriedly jumped up from the table and chair near the fireplace like a frightened bird, took out a silver pistol from under the seat, and pointed at the figure on the sofa. The man in blue broke into his house and threatened him. After being threatened once, he hid guns in many places in the house in the afternoon, just in case of emergency. Everyone who walks will leave traces. On the sofa, the figure sitting on the sofa murmured as if he pay attention to the pistol in Rickman's hand. It seems that someone was happy to be one step ahead of me and forgot about the rest. David heard that Rickman was going to send the soil to the geological survey for comparison, so it was not difficult to guess what happened. A certain Kryptonian may have been a little carried away, maybe he was a little nervous about doing this kind of thing for the first time, not knowing that he has left behind a little clue. 2. It's almost time to catch the little snake. He stood up slowly, revealing his cold and indifferent face from the shadows. Who are you? The purple skin made Rickman's eyes widen, and the gun in his hand did not bring any sense of security. After merging the second template, the vertical lines on David's chin disappeared, but his skin still inevitably turned purple when he makes use of the powerful physique of the eternal race. 13. He just came in at a speed close to the speed of sound, T slash N, to pretend, so the skin color appeared. David moved and came to Rickman. Before Rickman could react, he was grabbed by his neck and left the area of the villa. Rickman was out of breath, his vision was blurry, and a few seconds later, he was thrown on the cold concrete floor with a gust of wind. A dark, deserted alley. Where is this? He stood up in a panic, vaguely making out that this seemed to be some street in the metropolis. Your burial place. Who the hell are you? Rickman's heart stopped beating when he saw the figure which was exuding a terrifying aura. His body was full of goosebumps, and he was both frightened and angry at the same time. Creek, you don't need to know who I am. David's eyes fired purple rays, and Rickman saw that the gun in his hand fell into the monster's hands at some point. With a low-pitched sound, he effortlessly kneaded it into scrap iron and melted it into a ball of dazzling molten iron, which flowed down from between his fingers. You, you. Rickman, who was a little angry because of fear just now, seemed to be choked, unable to speak, and couldn't believe what he saw. You just need to know that you caused a couple who were living happily to be anxious and worried causing them to argue all morning. You just need to know that the house and land that you targeted shouldn't have been your target, David said with a cold voice. David thought that this matter should not end with simply getting back the land and house, and just ending it casually and easily. 2. If you do something wrong, you have to pay the price. 1. I have a lot of money, I can give it all to you, please spare my life. Looking at the figure who had purple light flashing in his eyes that made people tremble, Rickman's voice wavered and he was still thinking why he just used his ability to acquire the land of a few countryside farmers would cause such a big disaster. Obviously, when he did whatever he wanted in Metropolis before, he had never encountered this situation. First came the extremely fast man in blue, and now came a purple-skinned man who was as strong as a monster. 30 million? No, 80 million. Before he could finish speaking, there was no change on David's face, and the two rays in his eyes tore through the darkness of the alley, burning the begging Rickman into a pile of ashes, which fell on the cold, damp, and dirty alley floor. He turned and left, disappearing in place. David, you know what's going on, don't you? The next day, when they had just left home and were going toward the school gate, Clark stopped David with a worried face. This morning, our parents and a few farmers went to the police station to report, and they found out that Rickman was missing. Did you kill someone again? He didn't want to speculate on that, but not long ago, a police detective disappeared under David's hands. It's hard not to think about it. 2. He just wondered why David was so calm yesterday, which was completely out of his character. In the end, thinking about this, Clark couldn't help feeling a little angry. Isn't it normal for some billionaire whose secret was exposed by you, to be afraid of being threatened by someone again and fled Metropolis to live in hiding? David spread his hands and told without any change in his voice. Anyway, with his ability, he can get extremely comfortable wherever he goes. No. Clark wanted to say something else. Walking into the campus, David took out a pitted fist-sized kryptonite from his pocket, forcing him to retreat weakly. David, I just asked you a few words, but you actually used the meteorite to deal with me. Under the radiation of the meteorite, Clark backed up in pain, looking at his brother in disbelief. Don't get me wrong, you just forgot about the geography teacher Summers' homework. David weighed the meteorite in his hand. He asked us to collect all kinds of rocks according to the method he taught us to identify. What I have been asked to arrange is to collect meteorites and rose quartz. It would be ridiculous for geography teachers elsewhere to tell students to collect meteorites for homework, but in Smallville, a town that calls itself the meteorite capital of the world, meteorites are everywhere. Clark, who was afraid of meteorites, could only watch his brother leave and planned to ask after school in the afternoon. After school in the afternoon, after leaving the classroom, the sky outside had gathered dark clouds and drooped, and it seemed that there would be a downpour. Clark looked up in the sky, feeling depressed. When school was over, Chloe asked him to help her proofread and revise the school newspaper, during which David had long since disappeared. He had missed the school bus and had to walk back home. Most of the time, he doesn't like his abilities that are different from ordinary people. Clark plans to go home normally and take a look around, and wait until it really rains to use his ability to hurry home. By the way, I can think about how to ask David about that matter on the way. Ten minutes later, while walking onto the bridge, Clark involuntarily lifted his head and his expression dramatically changed as he saw the sight in front of him. Eric, what are you doing? The cold wind was blowing, and a rebellious figure stood on the railing of the bridge, wearing headphones on his head, looking down at the dam under the bridge, and throwing the stones in his bag down while fidgeting. 
Clark recognized his classmate, Eric Summers, the son of their geography teacher. But Summers, the geography teacher, always told Eric not to call him dad at school, but to refer to him by teacher. This afternoon, in geography class, and in front of a class of classmates, he mercilessly reprimanded Eric who had finished only half of his homework. 4. Come down, it's danger. Clark tried yelling at him, but Eric, with headphones on and blasting rock music in his ears, stood there with a gloomy face and a rebellious brow, not hearing it at all. Rumble, a bolt of lightning streaked across the sky, rumbling. Seeing the figure of Eric dangerously standing in the wind, Clark rushed forward and hugged his waist, trying to pull him off the bridge to prevent him from falling or being struck by lightning. Wearing electronic equipment on the head, it was easy to cause lightning when standing at a high place. Crackle, unexpectedly, a thunderbolt struck and hit the two of them. The meteorite in Avery's school bag, which was used as his geography homework, shone brightly, and the lightning connecting the two turned green. 7. Sit size it? Ah. After a short reaction of being shocked by an electric shock, feeling that his whole body was stiff, Clark let out a painful cry and fell to the ground. Eric also fell to the ground, his clothes were burnt by lightning and some sparks of fire remained. Are you alright, Eric? There was only a slight numbness in his body, and Clark felt that his body was fine. He just wanted to help Eric who fell on his back to see if he was not injured. Unexpectedly, the sparks on the clothes of Avery, who was dizzy, burned him. Ah. Uh, without any expectation of getting hurt, Clark screamed in pain, retracted his hand like an electric shock, and stared at his painful and blistered hand with wide eyes in astonishment. It's just a little spark, why am I hurt? Looking up again, Avery saw sparks of fire burning on his chest, and he felt that he was fine as if he had just woken up with a sleepy head. 1. Clark. Creator's Thoughts. The Board Rider 69. Creation is hard, cheer me up, like it, add to library, have some idea about my story? Comment it and let me know. Don't forget to send your power stones and rate 5 stars. Comment. 13 Comments. Chapter 47, Incapacitated Clark. Crackle, dark clouds covered the sky, heavy rain fell, and the green grass on the farm was full of mud. Jonathan, Martha, and David sat in the living room, drinking hot tea in a warm atmosphere. Heavy bean-like raindrops slammed on the windows, causing them to shake. Why hasn't Clark come back yet? Holding the steaming cup of black tea in her hand, Martha looked outside worriedly. I saw him being called away by Chloe, David said, taking a sip of hot tea, maybe proofreading for Chloe. Jonathan was not much worried about the safety of his eldest son. It's just a heavy rain, not a flood. Clark will be fine, he said with a smile. Boom, suddenly, a hand slammed the door weakly. A tall figure opened the door, the broken clothes were covered with muddy water, and a few strands of drenched hair stuck to his face, and he staggered and fell into the room in embarrassment. Snapped, dazzling thunder and lightning flashed outside, illuminating Clark's pale face that fell to the ground, with a few bloodstains on the side of his face. Clark, what's the matter with you? Jonathan and Martha were taken aback by the scene. They had never seen their son look like this before and rushed forward to help the eldest son up. Martha touched her son's forehead, which was hot, and she turned pale with surprise and worry. Ah, why is your forehead so hot? Are you okay? David's expression changed, his brows tightly frowned, and he quickly took the heavy Clark from his parents' hands. Clark was in such a mess, the only impression he had was that he met Kryptonite. You and Lana went home together under the rain and were caught by Whitney. No, no. Clark, who was drenched and weak, was supported by David and sat on the chair. He looked up at his younger brother weakly, with panic in his eyes. David, I, my abilities are gone. The family looked stunned. What do you mean? David was taken aback. He didn't quite understand Clark's words, did he lose his superhuman ability? Although it was cloudy and rainy outside, it wasn't the red sun that would deprive the Kryptonians of their strength. I don't understand either. I was struck by lightning while coming home, and then my abilities disappeared. Clark looked at his burned hands, and suddenly a drop of blood dripped on them. Touching his nose, he found that his nose was bleeding, his eyes darkened, and he lay down on the table. Clark. David was about to ask if Clark accidentally inhaled some powdered kryptonite. This will also make his ability invalid for a certain period of time, but before that Clark passed out. David, we're going to take your brother to the hospital. Panicked, Martha wanted to drive to the hospital in the rain immediately, but Jonathan grabbed her arm. Wait a minute, Martha. If Clark went to the hospital and was tested by the doctor, this would definitely cause trouble. He didn't want to lose his eldest son due to some investigations. Maybe this is a normal situation for Clark. Let's wait and see. Clark is not from Earth, and no one knows if there will be any special period when he develops. Now it may be like a bear hibernating in winter and a butterfly larva cocooning. No, Mom. Listening to Clark's heartbeat, David frowned. Clark's heartbeat is still strong and powerful, and he passed out as if he was overexerted and had a fever. Just give him two doses of medicine and some rest will be enough. Really? Looking at the serious young son, Martha was dubious. Clark's body right now is normal and a bit sick. Compared with ordinary people, he is still too strong, but compared with Kryptonians, he is very abnormal. However, for the time being, it is definitely not life-threatening. I'll take him upstairs first. What happened to Clark doubts flashed in David's eyes, and he carried Clark upstairs with his father Jonathan helping. Heavy rain was dropping coming, and Eric is running home with blonde hair and torn clothes. Suddenly, his speed increased without any indication which caused him to flow over the ground like an out-of-control plane, causing a sonic boom, exploding the raindrops, and finally slamming into a big tree surrounded by several people by the side of the road. Boom, as if bombarded by some rockets, the tree exploded and sawdust flew. Eric pulled the body out of the tree and looked in shock at the unscathed body. What's the matter? I didn't get hurt at all. Even if the speeding truck hit the tree like this, the front of the truck should have been crushed. And he's fine. Did I just have that kind of speed just now? I'm just like the angel warrior in the comics. Unbelievably, Eric was shocked and ecstatic by the miraculous scene in front of him. This power, Angel Warrior was a popular comic that has been serialized for more than 10 years. It accompanied many children through their childhood. It tells about the superhero Angel Warrior who has a body that surpasses the speed of sound and has infinite strength. 
He tried throwing a punch in the air ahead of him. Boom, the air exploded like a compressed boiling pressure cooker, and the sound of the sonic boom roared for several miles, and the sound even faintly overwhelmed the thunder in the sky. Suddenly, the raindrops and the accumulated water on the ground within a few meters were emptied, and the airwave shockwave visible to the naked eye was bombarded away. The front ten meters seemed to be swept by a typhoon, smashing trees in an instant, forming a fan-shaped area like being hit by a missile. After a few seconds of being stunned, a crazy smile that seemed to have been suppressed for a long time appeared on Eric's face. He covered his forehead and laughed wildly, only showing endless rebellion and unruliness in his eyes. With such power, what in the world can stop him? I can do whatever I want. T slash N, bro became budget homelander. The strap of his school bag was torn off when it hit a big tree by the side of the road, and the school bag fell to the ground, spilling the books and homework inside. In the past, he would have been trying to pick it up in a hurry to avoid being reprimanded by his parents when he got home. But now, Eric's mouth curled up with strong disdain. Now that I have the power of a god, do I still need to go to school? Parents, especially that old-fashioned father, can't control him anymore. He stepped to leave. The fist-sized meteorite that had just fallen out of the school bag started emitting green light. Passing the school bag, Eric's feet went limp, and he fell to the ground, feeling the pain of being burned all over the surface of his body. My strength is gone again. Falling into the muddy water, he looked weakly at the randomly glowing meteorite with an ugly expression, feeling a bit startled and suspicious. What is this? The next morning, after the heavy rain, the sun shone brightly into the house. On a warm and comfortable bed, with a cold towel on his forehead, Clark opened his eyes and felt much better. His parents and younger brother were gathered around his bed. He lifted the blanket and sat up. Clark, how are you? I'm fine, Clark answered with a smile, feeling the care of his parents. Clark looked at his younger brother again. Although his younger brother stood there without speaking, his brows were tightly furrowed, and there was concern and inquiry in his eyes. What happened to you? Not only David, but the couple also wanted to know why the eldest son became like this. Yesterday after school. Pressing his forehead, Clark thought about it, thinking that it should have something to do with lightning. The damn bridge, Eric, saving people, being struck by lightning, green lightning. After listening to his story, the couple looked at each other, unable to think of anything. It really is a meteorite. David shook his head. Was it some lightning that reacted through the kryptonite, giving Clark a similar effect to inhaling powdered kryptonite? Creator's thoughts. The board rider 69. Creation is hard. Cheer me up. Like it? Add to library. Have some idea about my story? Comment it and let me know. Don't forget to send your power stones and review 5 stars. Comment. 8 comments. Chapter 48. It's not bad for me to be an ordinary person. Meteorite? What's wrong with the meteorite? Jonathan was puzzled when he heard the younger son's words. Actually, Clark's strength is not invincible. When he gets close to the meteorite, he will feel weak and uncomfortable, like having an acute allergy. He turned his head and said to his parents, Is this true? Clark, why didn't you and David tell us about this? Jonathan's eyes widened. The two brothers actually kept such an important thing a secret from them. You are usually busy enough taking care of the farm. Clark smiled reluctantly and explained. His abnormality is enough to make his parents worry, but fortunately, sometimes his supernatural ability can also make his parents not worry about him sometimes. If you knew that I was allergic to meteorites, I'm afraid you would be more worried about me. Clark. Martha sighed, holding her eldest son in her arms, feeling distressed. Perhaps, it's not bad for me to be an ordinary person. Clark hesitated. In fact, when he was powerful before, he was different from ordinary people and often felt lonely. After his younger brother also showed his ability, he rarely felt that emotion of loneliness again. It's just. Clark wasn't devastated because of losing his ability, but if he loses his abilities permanently, won't his younger brother completely lose his morals in the future, and he can no longer stop him from doing anything wrong? When David saw Clark looking at him with implied concern, he knew what he was thinking and rolled his eyes. Son, as long as you're healthy. The couple reassured Clark that it's okay to lose his ability and become an ordinary person. Whether you can lift the pickup truck or not, you are our son. Jonathan thought for a while and said, at least you don't have to hide it anymore. Clark also thought of a few benefits of becoming an ordinary person. He didn't have to dodge and make a fool of himself because of Lana's necklace. Lana. Thinking that he could join the rugby team and get along with Lana freely, his eyes lit up slightly. Maybe it's not such a bad thing after all. You may not be the only one who lost your ability yesterday. David shook his head when he saw that the Kryptonian was starting to daydream and forget about other things. What? Clark coughed, put away his thoughts, and put on a serious listening expression on his face. Lightning struck from the sky, hitting you and Eric. Facing the puzzled parents and Clark, he analyzed, forget about you. Why didn't Eric turn into charcoal? He has powers. After being passed through the body by the powerful lightning that turned green due to kryptonite, and being unscathed and healthy, David did not believe that Eric would not have any mutations. This. Clark's expression changed. David, we have to go to Eric's house to take a look. Eric, where did you go yesterday? At the dinner table, Eric's mother was full of worries and couldn't help asking. I went to your room to pack some things. Why is your school bag gone, and your clothes are tattered, as if they were burned? I'm fine, he replied with an ugly expression on his face. An incredible thing happened to him yesterday. After being struck by lightning, he gained godlike power. But at the same time, he later discovered that there is something that can restrain him who should be invincible on this planet the meteorite. As soon as I get close to the meteorite, I will feel weak, uncomfortable, and even painful. I become inferior to ordinary people and can't even stand up. Because his father is a geography teacher by profession, there are many rock specimens including meteorites in the garage at home. Eric did several experiments after returning home to confirm this. Why do I have such a fatal flaw when I have obtained such power? His eyes were fierce, and he couldn't help clenching his fists, which made it difficult for many of his beautiful ideas to come true. Eric really couldn't tolerate that he, who was supposed to be able to do whatever he wanted on this planet had such a fatal weakness. School was over early tomorrow, why don't you go home? Seeing his son's gloomy expression of not taking anything seriously, Mr. Summers asked with anger all over his face. Is it because you don't come out without eating? You are always so disobedient, do you know how much you embarrassed me at school yesterday? The son of a geography teacher who is known for his strictness could not finish his geography homework became an office joke. Calm down. At the dinner table, his wife, Beth, patted the angry husband's arm. Enough. 
But Eric, who was full of resentment, broke out suddenly, stood up abruptly, twisted the knife and fork in his hand, and glared at his father. I'm already 18 years old, you don't have to start caring about me now. He remembered the embarrassment of being reprimanded in public in class yesterday. I don't care about you, I can't even say whether your current grades can be admitted to university. Being contradicted by his son, Summer stood up abruptly despite his wife's dissuasion, staring at his son angrily. Do you want to live on relief money in the future? Hehe, <laughs> go to college. Eric's face was full of disdain and mockery. That's all you can see. You don't even know what kind of power I have now. He squeezed his palms, feeling the terrifying power that even tanks and planes couldn't match, and there was fascination and greed in his eyes. My future is beyond what you, a geography teacher in a high school in a small town, can imagine. He threw the deformed knife and fork on the ground, thinking of something, with a ferocious smile, and wiped his hands. I want to leave this place that has restrained me for 18 years and now makes me extremely uncomfortable. Smallville is full of meteorites, and there are things that can restrain him everywhere. But as long as he leaves this town, he is free to do whatever he wants, and the world is his playground. Consoling his parents that he will be fine, he went out with his younger brother. Walking on the muddy and watery road, Clark was worried. If Eric has the ability, he shouldn't use his ability to do anything wrong. When he said this, he thought of Eric's rebellious appearance standing on the railing of the bridge while listening to rock music in the strong wind. He suddenly had no confidence in himself. Clark, sometimes you have to respect the fate of others. Thinking of the cause of this series of events, David couldn't help saying coldly, What do you mean? Put down your nature of always helping others. Standing on the railing of the bridge on a windy day like a thunderstorm, Eric thought he was handsome and listened to music with headphones, he really couldn't blame others for his death. People should bear the consequences for what they do. Even if something happens to such a person, he can't feel any sympathy. There were parents in the house before, so David didn't directly tell Clark to not be nosy. You like being someone else's babysitter so much. He's just a teenager, don't be so harsh on him, David. Clark couldn't not do anything and felt that his younger brother didn't like Eric at all, thinking of advising him to be more lenient. Since we may see Eric in a few moments, don't have conflicts. Did you forget how old you are? David replied. Because of his own special situation, Clark encountered many troubles and troubles that children have never encountered since he was a child. He is generally more mature than his peers, but he was only 18. Call? The two were walking on the road. Suddenly, David stopped and squinted his eyes. On the road a hundred meters away, a figure galloped away heavily at dozens of times the speed of sound and disappeared into the distance like lightning. With his eyesight, he could barely see a blurred trajectory, and he couldn't see the figure clearly. This scene was so familiar, but... Clark, who had become an ordinary person, wondered why David stopped and looked over there, but saw nothing. What's the matter, David? Creator's thoughts. The Board Rider 69. Creation is hard. Cheer me up. Like it? Add to library. Have some idea about my story? Comment it and let me know. Don't forget to send Power Stones and review 5 stars. Comment. 6 Comments. Chapter 49, Eric went to Gotham. Huh. David stared at the disappearing direction of the figure for a few seconds, wondering in his heart, how could there be a person in Smallville who could be as fast as Clark? The direction that guy came from is Eric's house. His face changed rapidly several times, and he suddenly thought of a strange possibility that Clark's ability might not have disappeared temporarily. Come on, Clark. David pulled the confused Clark to the front of Eric's house quickly. The door was shattered as if hit by a rocket, and the fragments fell to pieces on the grass in front of the house. A woman's sad cries were heard in the Eric family's house. Not good. Clark hurried into the room with worries on his face. Their geography teacher, Summers, was supported to sit on the sofa with a broken forehead, and he looked very weak. Eric's mother, Beth, was crying and was hugging her husband, looking heartbroken, like a mother who lost her child. Seeing that the two of them were fine, Clark heaved a sigh of relief. Aunt Beth, what's the matter? David asked, frowning after glancing at the broken wooden door in front of the door. Eric has been behaving like a different person since he came back from school yesterday. Aunt Beth's eyes were red with tears. Just now he wanted to run away from home. His father tried to hold him back, but he was thrown away. Eric flicked him casually, and Summers flew directly over the dining table, slamming seven or eight meters away and falling on the sofa. If it wasn't for the sofa, he might have broken bones and muscles, been seriously injured, and in the hospital. Afterward, their son Eric lifted his foot and smashed the door of the house, and a gust of wind was set off amidst a burst of explosions, and he disappeared in the blink of an eye. Mr. Summers was full of puzzlement. How could his son have such great strength? Run away from home? Where did he go? Clark beside him hurriedly asked. He wanted to find the obviously emotionally unstable Eric before he does something irreparably wrong. Wait a minute, Clark. After listening to Beth's narration, David was more sure of the guess in his heart and pulled him back to the door. Don't you think Aunt Beth's description is very familiar? He frowned and whispered thoughtfully, with a defense that keeps him safe from being struck by lightning. He is so powerful and so fast that human eyes can't catch him. Eric may not have acquired the ability through mutation. Isn't it a mutation? Clark didn't understand what his brother meant. Some of these abilities from mutations are amazing and last time Greg also fit this description. Just now a figure left the town from this direction at dozens of times the speed of sound. David's eyes flickered, and he said in a deep voice what he had just seen. I'm afraid it's not that coincidental. He paused and asked back. You lost your ability, and Eric happened to mutate to have an ability comparable to yours. What? Clark opened his mouth wide in surprise. You, you mean, my abilities were transferred to Eric by lightning and meteorites. David nodded before hastily running back to the couple and asked where Eric had gone. Aunt Beth, Eric is in a very dangerous condition now. Where is he? I don't know. Beth wiped her tears, her voice still choking with shock from her son's sudden change. Eric said he's uncomfortable here and going to a paradise for the powerful. There's no law there, and a large number of people are waiting to be conquered. It should not be far, because he said he'll come back and to wait for him. He said, when I come back, I will go around this small town and erase everything that makes him uncomfortable. Dot. She cried and told what her son left before he left. At that point, he can do whatever he wants, and nothing in the world can stop him. Do whatever he wants. David sneered. Last time, Greg felt that he had started to evolve, and thought he was a Superman ahead of anyone in the world. This time, Eric got the ability of a Kryptonian and wanted to be a budget homelander? A paradise for the powerful? There is no law. A series of words made people confused, and Clark couldn't think of where it was for a while. Where is that? 
A war zone? David turned his head and looked into the distance, the direction in which the extremely fast figure disappeared. His eyes were dim. The answer to the question is simple Gotham. Gotham. Clark's expression changed. It is very close to the metropolis, the law is just a decoration for the powerful, and people live their lives numbly. Where else can it be except for Gotham? After hastily comforting the Summers couple, David and Clark hurried home to tell their parents they had seen and what David suspected. You mean that Clark's ability was transferred to Eric by thunder? Jonathan frowned after hearing the news brought back by his two sons. If this is the case, it would not be good for his son to lose his ability. Gotham, that place. Martha was a little uneasy. If Eric learns something bad after running away from home, and uses this ability to do bad things. She and Jonathan knew how powerful Clark was, and had been patiently teaching her son so that he would not abuse his talent. This part of the force is used to help the farm save a few people. Eric suddenly acquired that kind of ability, so he may not be able to maintain his mentality, especially when he went to Gotham, a place where crimes are rampant and have one of the highest crime rates in the United States. That's the problem. David nodded. Eric obviously doesn't intend to use this energy to repair fences or plow the land. He has quite great plans for his future. A joking expression flashed across his eyes. Eric said that he would come back and lead someone to erase everything that made him uncomfortable, and then nothing could stop him. It has to be suspected that that guy may have discovered that meteorites are his weakness. Eric must be brought back before he uses my ability to cause huge damage, Clark said, clenching his fists with an ugly face. He couldn't accept that someone was injured or even died because of his ability. But, Martha hesitated to speak, how to stop it. I might be going on a long trip, mom and dad. After pondering for a few seconds, David raised his head to look at Jonathan and Martha, coughed twice, and said seriously, help Clark clean up this mess and bring Eric back. He didn't believe that Clark, the future Superman, would permanently lose his abilities. Since abilities can be transferred away by accident, they can also be transferred back. David. Hearing David's different tone than before, Clark looked at his younger brother, opened his eyes slightly, and vaguely guessed what he wanted to do. But now that you're showing them, when seeing his strange purple appearance, are you sure the parents won't be more worried? Surprise from Clark, plus 1.5, worry plus 1.6. In fact, not only to help Clark regain his abilities, David's eyes moved slightly towards the system panel. Since Clark lost his ability, the emotional points provided have shrunk by more than 20 times. The main source of emotional points, a gold mine, disappeared, and the ability fusion speed dropped by more than 10 times. If the fusion speed used to be a bicycle, but now it is a turtle crawling, he only got a few new abilities. But what are you going to do, son? It's a good thing that his son is not afraid of danger, and Jonathan looked at him with worry and concern. Use a meteorite. David took out a thumb-sized meteorite from his pocket. Don't. Seeing the fatal meteorite, Clark instinctively raised his hands to block the light, but the meteorite did not emit green light, only a faint green fluorescence that cannot be seen during the day. Without feeling powerless or uncomfortable, he touched his body in surprise. I, I'm okay. Clark didn't have the reaction he should have, and David wasn't surprised. Because on the way back, he tried using kryptonite right behind Clark without his knowledge. Eric not only has a physique similar to Clark's but also has the same weakness as him. But, but, it's still very dangerous. Martha couldn't see her youngest son taking risks like this. She was worried about her youngest son traveling alone to Gotham, a place full of criminals, let alone subduing Eric, who has super strength and super speed. Don't worry, son. Jonathan patted David on the shoulder, trying to persuade him. Let's sit down and figure out a way first. It was too reckless for the youngest son to go to Gotham with a meteorite like this. Actually, mom dad, you don't have to worry about me. Facing his parents' worried eyes, David opened his mouth. Creator's thoughts. The board rider 69. Creation is hard. Cheer me up. Like it? Add to library. Have some idea about my story? Comment it and let me know. Don't forget to send power stones and Reva 5 stars. Comment. 18 comments. Chapter 50. David in Gotham. Bruce Wayne robs the bank. Actually, mom dad, you don't have to worry about me. With the new ability, David is no longer going to hide his specialness. Although the physique of the deviant syndrome of the Eternals cannot be revealed, just in case the weird appearance may cause the parents to worry, the ability to manipulate energy can be revealed. What do you mean? Seeing that their son was about to reveal something, the couple looked at each other suspiciously and with some worry. Hum, a smile flashed across his eyes, David raised his hand, and the highly condensed purple energy light cluster remained silent. I also have some special abilities, self-protection is not a problem. Purple light illuminated the room. Son, what, what's going on here? Jonathan and Martha lost their voices in surprise as they saw the light emerging from the hands of their youngest son, which looked like a small purple sun. Clark's eyes widened, unable to believe what he was seeing. This is different from the scene he imagined when he thought his younger brother would show off his abilities. In the living room, the ticking of the clock could be heard. After letting his surprised parents digest the sudden news, manipulate energy, David went upstairs to make preparations before leaving. Clark followed up and asked in disbelief, you actually hid part of your abilities and didn't tell me. He will tell David about any abilities he has but the concealment by his brother, which made him think that he hid them out of defense, made him a little sad. It's an ability that has been awakened recently. In his room, David pulled out a box from under the bed and moved the hundred pound box onto the table without any effort. The box is roughly the size of a baby's cradle. Really, you can choose to believe it or not. You, seeing that David didn't seem to be lying, Clark calmed down a little and was about to ask him when he had this ability. Click, David opened the box. Large and small meteorites emitting green fluorescence lie quietly in the wooden box, and there are 70 or 80 pieces at a single rough glance. This, is this a box full of meteorites? Clark was stunned halfway through his speech, how come there are so many meteorites? If he hadn't lost his ability, he might have fallen to the ground as the box was opened and passed out. You, he stared at his younger brother with wide eyes. What are you collecting so many meteorites for? Collection. David raised his eyebrows, can't I have a collection? Looking at his younger brother who didn't change his face, Clark was so angry that he almost fainted. Do you think I believe it? He couldn't believe that he had only exposed his weakness of meteorites for just a few days, and his brother had already collected such a large box of meteorites. Looks enough to build a cremation casket for him. In fact, this is the inventory that David had dug up a long time ago in childhood, and he thought it was almost enough, so he didn't look for it again in the past few years. Hum, David took out a slightly larger meteorite. 
His eyes emitted energy rays, and the rays were manipulated to cut like lasers. Under precise manipulation, pieces of hard meteorite skin were quickly cut off like a hot knife cutting butter. You can actually use your eyes to emit energy rays. Clark was surprised, looking at his brother's actions, he was a little puzzled. What are you doing? It's silly to carry a rock with yourself all the time, he said, quickly finishing what he had done. And the radiation emitted by the rough meteorite is not strong enough. After blowing away the stone chips like green snow, the light in David's eyes disappeared. On the palm, a ring cut from the innermost spar of the meteorite, like a green and flawless emerald, is emitting strong radiation. Under the daytime light, it can actually see a faint fluorescence. Clark looked at the emerald ring, his face turned green, and he had the illusion of being poisoned, so he backed away unconsciously. Even though he will not be powerless and suffering now, there is still a psychological trauma left. David, when you manage to bring Eric back, you will destroy it, right? Putting the box back to where it was. Facing Clark's temptation, David put on a kryptonite ring on his right index finger, smiled, and said nothing. It will be destroyed, right? Clark swallowed his saliva with an extremely foreboding feeling, and there was no trace of confidence in his words. Clark wanted to go with his younger brother, but Jonathan and Martha didn't allow it. He was powerless now, so it was better to stay at home and not cause trouble to his younger brother. Downstairs, when David was about to leave, no need to bring any luggage, a kryptonite ring is enough. Son, are you sure you have the confidence to bring Eric back and not let yourself get hurt? At the door of the house, Jonathan and Martha were nervous and concerned. Seeing that David was leaving, they couldn't help worrying. How can a parent rest assured that his son is going to travel far away to another city, which may also be accompanied by danger? It won't be a problem. David let out a breath and smiled. After talking to his parents about his abilities, he was much more relaxed. My ability to manipulate energy is best at defense, and Clark's attack can't break through my defense. Really? Jonathan and Martha looked at Clark. Yes. Clark nodded firmly. In fact, he hasn't tried it, but he must not make his parents worry at this time. David, be careful. Clark stepped forward and hugged David with concern on his face. He secretly clenched his fists. Logically the incident happened because of him. David should not have done this. He couldn't help but feel a little guilty. Son. David also hugged his parents, turned and left, and waved. Gotham is not far away. I'll be back soon in a few days. Jonathan held his wife Martha in his arms and looked at the back of his son leaving with worry in his eyes. I hope God blesses our David to return safely. David felt a little helpless because he knew the expressions of his parents without looking back. Before when he hid his abilities, his parents were worried about his safety, but after showing his abilities, his parents still couldn't let go of their worries. He left an afterimage in place and accelerated away. Gotham is not far from the metropolis, just across the river. The two cities facing each other across the sea have close cultural and economic exchanges. Like the metropolis, Gotham is a bustling and advanced modern city. High-rise buildings can be seen everywhere. There is even a high-speed rail system that does not exist in the metropolis. The traffic and buildings are like blood vessels of the human body running through the city, as the heart of Gotham Wayne building delivers nourishment. But unlike metropolis, Gotham is flashy on the surface but hides its filth in the dark. The high crime rate is a label that Gotham can't erase. Tip. Lead gray clouds covered the sky, cold raindrops fell down, and birds were unable to fly due to wet feathers, and they stood on the heads of gargoyle statues protruding from the walls of tall buildings, combing their feathers. The bird's hair trembled and it looked downwards. Reflected in the bird's eyes, a black umbrella slowly crossed the street. Tip tip tip. Gotham seems to have dark clouds that never go away and endless rain. Watching the long railroad cars drive with noise along the elevated tracks of concrete piers, David was wearing a gray windbreaker and put his hands on the he raised a corner of his umbrella, glanced at the gloomy sky, and sighed softly. This is his impression of Gotham. At least when he came to Gotham a few times before, he never encountered a sunny day. How can such a dark and humid place not breed some mold and dirt? In a dark alley not far away, someone with a pale face, sniffling snot, and trembling body took out a roll of money, looking left and right like a thief, urging others to hurry up and take out the things to complete the transaction, and there were still a few people queuing up behind. Clinging to the wall of the alley, an old homeless man with his dirty beard and untidy skinny body, with a gloomy gray sky reflected in his eyes, lay numbly on the cold ground. A few vicious young tramps, wearing ragged clothes, gathered around the burning trash can and stretched out their hands in torn gloves to keep warm, shivering and shivering. Seeing someone looking over, it looked like a few wild dogs with dirty fur were guarding their territory, and they gave him a vicious look. This is the busiest city center in Gotham. David shook his head, climbed up the steps to put away his umbrella, and walked into the Gotham National Bank which had an ancient historical facade that looked like an ancient castle. Without the supervision and super hearing like Clark, it is not easy to find a person in a city with tens of millions of people. First, he needs some money. The outside looks like ancient bricks with a long history, but the inside of the bank is spacious and tidy, with thick marble pillars, soft brown sofas, and bright display windows. The decoration is classical and elegant, without any lack of a modern humanistic atmosphere. Old things will have a new look. The lobby manager in a suit and leather shoes talked to some customers who were holding free coffee. Do you still remember that the old coffee machine could not filter out the coffee beans, which made the customer's teeth always occupied by the beans? I don't know how many customers complained about it. Look at our Gotham National Bank now. The environment is fresh, the equipment is modern, and the high-tech security system. We promise to provide you with better services and protect your wealth more safely. Walking through the shiny marble floor, he said proudly, ignoring the lobby manager's open arms, David walked slowly to the counter, ready to handle business. I believe who doesn't like the current Gotham National Bank. At this time, a robber wearing a red hood broke in, and the leader joked, pointing a gun at the manager. I prefer the banks of 60 years ago. The vault doors of the banks at that time must not be as thick as they are now, which can't be opened by bombing them with tanks. Loud screams sounded in the bank instantly, and before the frightened people fled away like birds and beasts, a gunshot exploded in the head of the frozen bank manager. Continue to the old, it's not harmful to people. The corpse fell down, the man smiled gracefully, put his index finger on his mouth, and the words that spewed out of his mouth were like a cold gust of wind blowing through the hall, making people tremble all over. For example, you should all lie on the ground now and be as silent as a mouse on a church beam, or we will use you to decorate the walls. Robbing the National Bank during the day is a daring crime. 
Less than an hour after arriving in Gotham, I will taste the characteristics of Gotham again. David glanced over. Is this city so impatient to worsen my impression of it? Each of them wore red hoods, black suits, and even a red rose pinned to their chests, looking as if coming to attend a banquet. How classy, but then Gotham has no shortage of classy criminals. Oh, there's another kid here who didn't follow suit. Can't he understand the words? The people in the hall fell down trembling all over, and only one person was still standing there, looking around with a normal expression and even a little curiosity, as if there was nothing wrong. Seeing that this was a bank robbery where someone could die at any moment was daring. Seeing David, the leader of the robbers smiled and waved his hand as if sending a boy to a banquet to bring him a glass of champagne. Red Hood number 5, teach this disobedient gentleman a lifelong lesson. A young man walked out of the robbers behind him, ran up to David viciously, and pointed his gun neatly at his head. The voice was low and ferocious, making people frightened. Kneel down, I tell you to kneel down. As he said, he kicked his leg hard, but it was as if he had kicked a steel pillar, and he remained motionless. With a dull pain in his feet, Red Hood number 5 frowned under the hood, astonishment flashed across his eyes. I heard that people in Gotham have a difficult life. David raised his eyebrows, and faced the unremarkable Red Hood number 5 in front of him. David smiled lightly. But I didn't expect Bruce Wayne, the owner of the Wayne Enterprises, has also been reduced to robbing banks. Creator's Thoughts. The Board Rider 69. Creation is hard. Cheer me up. Like it? Add to library. Have some idea about my story? Comment it and let me know. Don't forget to send your power stones and review 5 stars. Comment. Six comments. Vote.